Hello and welcome guys to Necromancer of the Shadows, one of the top novels I read in last months. Hope you enjoy the audiobook and of course, go support original author, Zero Underscore Writer. Make yourselves comfortable, this is Necromancer of the Shadows. Chapter 1 So that's how I am going to die in this life Evan said while lying on the floor of a dark hall, blood continued to flow out from his back, there was a claw mark on his back and his flesh was completely torn. Whoever caused this injury was very powerful because even his bones were visible from the wound. His head was also bleeding. From the injury of his head it was clear that something very hard hit his head as even the bone of his skull was fractured. Since the day I opened my eyes in this world I knew that my life will be pathetic. I thought I will die at the hands of some powerful beast or hunter. I even thought I will just kill myself for not being able to improve my own power, but I never thought I will die from blood lose. Evan mumbled as his voice started to fade away and darkness started to engulf his entire vision. I hope in my next life I will be able to enjoy a normal life and I absolutely don't want to be born with a unique physique. Evan said before the darkness engulfed him completely. But just as darkness engulfed him completely he heard a cold voice, what do you want to sacrifice? Evan whose vision was engulfed by darkness heard the cold voice and his eyes opened a little gaining a little clarity, but he still can't move his head much less look around himself to search for the person who just spoke to him. Who are you? Evan asked in a weak voice. What do you want to sacrifice? But no one answered his question and he heard the same voice again. Is this the voice of a devil who is here to collect my soul as a sacrifice after I die? Evan thought when he heard the word sacrifice. What do you want to sacrifice? Evan heard the same voice again asking him what he wants to sacrifice. Evan was barely able to think what is going on since he lost too much blood and his mind was not working properly after the recent events. What will I get after sacrificing something? Evan asked a different question this time and to his surprise, he received an answer this time. You can get anything as long as the thing you sacrifice holds enough value. The voice replied in the same cold tone. I can get anything this is the same line every devil says before he asks someone to sacrifice their soul Evan thought after hearing that he can ask for anything. There is no way I am going to sacrifice my soul to a devil even though my life is full of shit I still don't want to become a slave of a devil by sacrificing my soul. But then what should I sacrifice although he is a devil since it is asking me to sacrifice something it means it can't do anything to me if I don't sacrifice my soul Evan thought while his vision started to turn dark again. The effects of blood loose started to show again and Evan knew that if he closed his eyes he will not be able to open them again so he started to think what he can sacrifice to heal himself and get out from here alive. Then Evan remembered why he is in this situation all of this is happening because he possessed something that restricted him from improving his power although I don't know if this thing has enough value to heal my injuries I am not going to lose anything. By sacrificing this shit on the other hand, it will just benefit me since even if I die after sacrificing it, I will be assured that this thing will not come with me to next life Evan thought and finally decided what he is going to. Sacrifice I want to sacrifice my shadow physique. Evan said in a weak voice but he didn't receive any reply instead a black smoke came near him and covered his entire body. After 10 seconds the black smoke disappeared and he heard the cold voice again. What do you want in exchange for your physique? Heal all of my injuries and give me some cores. Although Evan just wanted to heal his injuries he still asked for some cores if the voice refused to give him cores he will back away but if the voice agreed to give him cores he will be able to improve his power because the physique that was restricting him to increase his power will be gone by this sacrifice and he will be able to use cores to improve his power. Evan waited for some time and the cold voice finally replied your physique holds enough value for this exchange, beginning sacrificing ritual. Suddenly the entire hall glowed in dark red color and Evan who was almost about to pass out heard the cold voice again you can't sacrifice your physique in your current condition. You will die if you sacrifice your physique without healing your body so I am going to heal you first to complete the sacrifice but because I am healing you first without getting anything you will receive only 50% cores that I was going to give you before. Evan agreed without hesitation since he never expected to receive any cores from the beginning. Suddenly the black smoke engulfed his body again and he found his body started to heal rapidly and in just 5 minutes he was completely healed. Evan checked his back and found that it was completely healed even his fractured head was completely healed there were no more injuries on his body. 
now sacrificing your physique. Evan heard the cold voice again and the black smoke engulfed him again. But this time instead of feeling refreshed like last time, Evan felt pain like never before. Arg. A pain-filled scream came from Evan's mouth as he felt his body as being torn apart by something. But unknown to Evan by sacrificing his physique, he finally awakened something inside him that was being surpassed by his physique for years. Even the person who made the exchange with Evan didn't know that by taking Evan's physique he awakened something that was almost forgotten in history. Asterisk. Twelve hours ago. Ring ring asterisk. Inside a small room, a boy was sleeping when suddenly he heard his phone ring, he picked up the phone and heard the voice of another boy. Evan, what are you doing today? Our group is going for a raid inside a dungeon, do you want to come with us? Mike, one of Evan's classmates, asked him. I have to go somewhere today you guys can go by yourselves. Evan replied and cut the call without waiting for Mike's reply. After cutting the call, Evan gritted his teeth and said this bastard always trying to humiliate me by asking if want to go into the dungeon with them, he knew that I can't increase my power with the help of those cores. Evan tried to calm down his mind and stood up, Evan looked around 18 years old. His hair and eyes are completely dark black and his skin is pale white completely opposite to his hair and eye color. He is around 180 centimeters tall and looks really handsome while considering his power level. Evan tried to forget about the call he just received and focused on the thing that he is going to do today. Evan prepared a simple breakfast for himself and while eating looked at his status panel. Name, Evan. Rank, F. Strength, F. Agility, F. Mana, F. Stamina, F+. Plus. Intelligence, F. Luck, E+. Plus. Charm, D. Skill, Shadow Walk. Physique, Shadow Physique. Title? Job, None. Evan shook his head while looking at his status panel only his charm and luck are above the rank F. I should just do what I can do and wait for an opportunity to get some Shadow Cores to improve my rank. After all I can only use Shadow Cores to improve my rank, unlike others who can improve their rank by using any type of cores. Evan said with a bitter tone and looked at his status panel that was showing his details, his gaze stopped on the shadow physique for a second then he closed the status panel. After eating breakfast Evan packed his backpack and after confirming that he didn't forget anything he started to walk towards the door of the room. I hope everything will be fine and I will be able to get at least one shadow core today. Evan said and left the room. Chapter 2 Damn How can I oversleep on the first day of my job? I got this job after so many hardships I really don't want to arrive late on my first day. Ray a young man said while running like his life depends on it. While running Ray bumped into a man sorry. Ray apologized without stopping. Young people doesn't have any manners these days. The man said when he saw Ray didn't apologize properly but Ray couldn't care less about it when he is already late on the first day of his job. But Ray stopped when he arrived at the main road because the traffic signal was red why the hell whenever I come here I found this signal red Evan shouted in his mind. After one minute the signal turned green and Ray once again started to run. Horn asterisk. But when Ray reached at the middle of the road he heard the sound of a car horn and when he looked towards the sound he saw a car coming towards him at high speed and before he can think anything else the high speed car hit him. Ray didn't feel anything when the car hit him. He found himself lying on the ground and saw how the car didn't stop even after hitting him and soon his vision started to turn red. Hmm, Ray tried to lift his hand but he didn't feel anything what is going on why I can't feel my body Ray thought while his vision turned completely red. Everything happened too fast that Ray didn't understand just what is going on but he started to panic when he wasn't able to feel his body. Someone called the ambulance fast. Ray heard the voice of a man. Ambulance will arrive in five minutes, don't close your eyes. Ray heard the voice of the same man again, but for some reason, his vision started to turn blurry. When Ray's vision turned blurry, he started to understand what happened, I know my luck is shit, but seriously, I am going to die just after getting a job, Ray thought, while his vision turned completely dark. Damn. I should have stayed home and played games, this was Ray's last thought before darkness engulfed him. Hmm. Ray opened his eyes and saw a familiar but at the same time unfamiliar sail in of a room. 
Ray was lying on a bed in a small room. Is this is a hospital, Ray thought, while looking around the room. But for some reason, Ray found this room familiar, but he was sure he never saw this room before. Ray tried to lift his hand and was surprised because he didn't feel any pain. He tried to stand up and was able to stood up very easily. How the hell my body is completely fine after that accident? Ray shouted when he saw his body was completely fine. But soon he felt something is wrong. He looked around the room and saw a mirror not so far away from him. Ray came before the mirror and his eyes opened wide when he saw his reflection inside the mirror. What the hell is going on? Ray said while looking at himself in the mirror. Suddenly Ray felt a splitting headache and he dropped to the ground while clutch, ing his head soon strange memories started to appear inside his head. Arg. Ray screamed because of the pain. He continued to feel the pain for the next five minutes and he gained many foreign memories. Evan. Ray said after the pain disappeared. He was drenched in sweat and was lying on the ground. Ray stood up after he finally understood what happened. He looked at the mirror once again. I still can't believe I transmigrated to a different world and a world where you can even use magic. Evan said when he finally understood that he has transmigrated to another world where people can use various skills by the help of mana. Can I also use magic? Ray who transmigrated inside the body of Evan Wonder as he checked the memories that he just received, but his face turned ugly when he fully checked the memories of Evan. The world Ray transmigrated is called Aurora World and there are many people who awaken special powers. Most of the people awaken their power before turning 16 years old. Evan also awakened his power when he was 14 years old and joined Hunter Academy to train himself and learn more about superpowers. Evan was an orphan who used to live in an orphanage, but whoever awakened their power can join the Hunter Academy for free so Evan was able to join the Hunter Academy even though he was an orphan. Evan was very happy when he awakened his power because not only he awakened his power he also had a physique called Shadow Physique. He awakened a skill called Shadow Walk that allows him to turn himself into a shadow and walk freely unhindered by anything as long as he can provide mana he can keep his shadow form activated. When Evan joined the academy he learned how to improve his power. To improve your power you have to use cores of the monsters. You can get cored by killing monsters inside the dungeons. Cores are very rare and very few monsters drop a core after you defeat it. If you defeat a fire type monster you will receive a fire type core and if you defeat a water type monster you can get a water type core. But it didn't matter much which type of core you get because you can improve your power by absorbing any type of core usually you can absorb only 30% energy of a core and the rest of the energy disappears in the surrounding environment while absorbing the core. But if you have a fire type skill and you absorb a fire type core you can absorb around 50% of its entire energy. But when Evan tried to absorb the energy from a core for the first time he wasn't able to absorb it. For some reason his body rejected all energy that he absorbed from the core. At first Evan just thought maybe the core was damaged or something but soon he found out for some reason his body rejects all energy from the cores. At first Evan didn't understand why he can't absorb the energy from the core but then he remembered his physique since the name of his physique was Shadow Physique he used his all saved money to buy a shadow core and tried to absorb it and to his surprise his body didn't reject the energy this time and absorbed it greedily. After finding this Evan thought about hunting shadow type monsters to get some cores and improve his power. But the lowest rank dungeon where you can find shadow type monsters are at least rank D and Evan is only an F rank hunter so even if he wanted he can't get shadow type core. He was an orphan so he can't purchase shadow cores by using money so even after joining the hunter academy Evan wasn't able to improve his power. My new life is already ended even before it started. Ray said after digesting every memory of Evan. Chapter 3 Evan came out of his room and started walking outside the boys' dorm room. It has been two years since Ray transmigrated in the Aurora world. During these two years, he completely replaced Evan and took his position in the academy. No one suspected anything because Evan had no friends in the academy. Everyone looks down on Evan because it has been three years since he joined the academy, but he is still an F rank hunter. No one knows about Evan's strange physique except the teachers of the academy. But Ray wasn't bothered by this, on the contrary, he was happy that he will not have to act like Evan when he met someone because no one ever talked to him. During these two years, Evan learned how to use a sword although he is not an expert in using a sword after these two years he was still able to master basic swordmanship after working hard these two years. 
Evan exit the boys' dormitory and started walking towards the exit of the Hunter Academy. Evan lives inside the Hunter Academy since all students who join the Academy can live there for free, but you can only stay inside the Academy for four years, and this is Evan's last year. When Evan was walking towards the exit of the Academy, many students looked at him with eyes filled with disgust, although Evan's charm is quite high and he looked really handsome people think of him as a useless man who is afraid of the dungeon and can't enter inside it. Evan didn't care about the looks he was receiving and continued to go towards the exit of the academy. After coming out from the academy, Evan walked for five minutes and took a taxi. City Plaza, please. Evan said to the taxi driver after sitting inside the taxi, the driver nodded and started to drive towards the city plaza. Evan closed his eyes and started to think about what he is going to do today. Currently, Evan is going to the city plaza to buy a potion called Invisibility Potion. It's a rank 2 potion that can make you invisible for 3 hours. If you use this potion, no one below rank C will be able to detect you. Evan is going to buy this potion because he is going to enter inside a D-rank dungeon shadow kingdom alone. Evan did many jobs during these 2 years to save enough money to buy this potion so he can enter a D-rank dungeon. Even before Ray transmigrated here, previous Evan was also saving money to buy this potion so he can kill some D-Rank shadow monsters after entering the D-Rank dungeon. During these two years, Evan wasn't able to increase his power even a little because he wasn't able to get any shadow core that he can use to increase his power in the end he decided to buy an invisibility potion so when he will enter inside D-Rank dungeon monster, won't be able to see him and he will be able to kill them. After 15 minutes Evan arrived in the market area he paid the taxi bill and walked towards a large building, he entered the building and took the elevator to arrive at the 7th floor of the building where they sell potions and other herbs. Evan came before the reception of the floor where a young man was standing with a smile when he saw Evan he asked politely how can I help you sir? Do you guys have an invisibility potion? Evan asked after coming in front of the receptionist. Give me a minute to check our stock, the receptionist said, and looked at the details on his computer. After 20 seconds, he said, we have rank 1 and rank 2 invisibility potions. Evan nodded and asked for a rank 2 invisibility potion. Rank 1 invisibility potion will make you invisible for one hour and it can't hide you from D-rank monsters. When the receptionist heard this, he made a call and soon a lady brought a small box. After giving the box to the receptionist, she left. The receptionist opened the box and took out a bottle that was filled with a dark blue liquid. Evan touched the bottle and its details appeared on his status window. Invisibility Potion, Rank 2. After drinking this potion, the consumer will become invisible for three hours and no one below Rank C will be able to detect him. Evan nodded after seeing the details and asked how much is this? This potion is our best seller and there are many people who wanted to buy underscore. The receptionist wasn't able to finish his words before Evan interrupted him. Just tell me the price, I don't care if this is your best seller potion or worst seller potion. It's just 30,000 credits. The receptionist wasn't offended by Evan's words and said the price with the same smile. Evan's heart skipped a beat after hearing this. He knew invisibility potions are expensive, but he never expected them to be this expensive. Currently, he has around 32,000 credits that he saved in the past two years. Even the money previous Evan saved is included in it. Evan looked at the receptionist and asked, Can't you give me a little discount? Sorry, sir, this potion is our best seller, so we can't give you any discount on it. The receptionist said with the same smile. Evan sighed after hearing this, but he still paid for the potion and bought it. Thanks for your purchase, sir. The receptionist said with the same smile that started to irritate Evan for some reason. Evan took the bottle of potion and left the shop. His next destination is D-Rank Shadow Kingdom Dungeon. Chapter 4 After buying the potion, Evan came out from the plaza and sighed, I just have 2,000 credits left. If I don't get anything inside the dungeon, I will be doomed. Evan spent his two years of saving to buy this potion so he can enter inside D-Rank Dungeon and kill some D-Rank Shadow Monsters and get some Shadow Cores. There is around a 20% chance of getting a core by killing a monster. Evan is hoping that he will be able to kill around 15 monsters in 3 hours and will get around 3 shadow cores in that period. Evan is praying that his E plus luck will do some trick and he will be able to get at least 3 shadow cores. Evan wanted to get 3 shadow cores because 1 shadow core can be sold at 30,000 credits. If he gets 3 shadow cores he will be able to get his 30,000 credits back by selling 1 core and he can increase his power by absorbing the remaining two cores. 
After thinking about this, Evan started to walk away from the plaza. After walking for some time, Evan took another taxi and said, Shadow Kingdom, please. The driver nodded and started driving towards the north direction of the Estrate City where the Shadow Kingdom dungeon is located. The Hunter Academy Evan is currently studying is called the Straight Hunter Academy and it's located inside the Estrate City. Evan closed his eyes while thinking about the dungeon. The Shadow Kingdom dungeon is one of the most dangerous during dungeon, but Evan still decided to enter inside it because unlike other dungeons you can easily find monsters in the Shadow Kingdom dungeon. Since Evan just have 3 hours he wanted to use them properly, and after seeing the details of all rank D dungeons Evan find the Shadow Kingdom dungeon most suitable for him. Evan took a deep breath while sitting in the taxi truth to be told he was quite nervous because it will be his first time when he enters inside the dungeon. Although it has been 2 years since he came into this world he spent most of his time earning money to buy this potion and learn sword manship. There is no use thinking about it now I already purchased the potion and I will not be able to stay inside the academy from next year. If I want to survive in this world I have to take this risk Evan thought and a determined look appeared on his face. After 2 hours of driving the taxi finally stopped Evan exited the taxi and paid the bill. After paying the bill Evan looked in front of him where he can see a giant monolith structure. Evan came a little closer to the structure and was finally able to see it properly. It was a huge black monolith structure that was surrounded by high walls. There was security at the entrance and heavily armed soldiers on the walls. Evan took out his hunter card and started to walk toward the security guards who were standing at the entrance of the dungeon. The guards didn't pay much attention to Evan and just asked for his hunter card, but when the guards saw Evan is just an F rank hunter he looked at him strangely and asked do you know this is not an F or E rank dungeon but a D rank dungeon right? Evan anticipated this kind of reaction so he was not surprised and nodded calmly yes I know it's rank D dungeon Shadow Kingdom. Are you sure you want to enter inside the dungeon? There is a high possibility that you will die inside with your current power. The guard warned Evan, but Evan just nodded after hearing his warning. When the guard saw this he shrugged his shoulders and permitted Evan to enter the dungeon. His job is to keep eyes on the people who enter the dungeon and tell them about the danger of the dungeon, but even after his warning Evan wanted to enter the dungeon he could not care less about it. Evan came before the entrance of the dungeon which was a 5 meter high and 3 meters wide portal. Evan looked at the giant hole type portal seriously and after taking a deep breath he entered the portal. Upon entering the portal Evan was teleported to a hallway. Evan looked around him and he just saw dark walls all around him. Evan looked behind him and saw the same portal there. Evan sighed in relief when he saw the portal at least he is now sure that he can leave from here whenever he wanted. Evan took a deep breath and first took out a sword that he brought with him from the academy. Evan used a paralyzing poison to coat the sword so he can kill the monster more easily. After taking out the sword Evan looked at the hallway that was leading him deeper in the hall. Evan took out the invisibility potion and looked at it carefully. All novels that I read in my past life mentioned that the potions always taste like shit. I don't know how those authors know how shit tastes like but I hope I will not throw up after drinking it. Evan said and opened the lid of the bottle. Gulp asterisk gulp. It tastes like a chocolate smoothie. Evan said after drinking the potion. I think I can drink it every day in the morning Evan thought but when he remembered the price of this potion and his remaining bank account balance he forget about drinking this potion every morning. After drinking the potion Evan suddenly felt like his body started to turn illusionary and after 10 seconds he disappeared from the place he was standing. Evan tried to move here and there but didn't find anything odd after he confirmed that the potion was working Evan started to walk deeper into the hallway. Evan didn't want to waste even a second since the effect of the potion will wear off after 3 hours. And just like he read about Shadow Kingdom he soon saw a monster sleeping not so far away from him. Seeing the monster Evan took a deep breath and walked toward it. Chapter 5 Evan stopped 50 meters away from the monster and looked at it carefully. The monster in front of him was a 2 meters tall wolf. The wolf was lying on the ground apparently sleeping. The fur of the wolf was pitch. Black and Evan was sure that even with his sword it will be very difficult for him to pierce through that fur. Evan looked at the wolf and after hesitating a little he slowly started to walk towards it. Evans's heart was beating like a drum because this is the first time he used invisibility potion and he was not sure if it will hide his presence from this wolf. 
Although in the details of the potion it was written that if a monster is not a C rank or above it will not be able to detect his presence, Evan was still feeling nervous because if this potion didn't work his life will be in serious danger here. Evan slowly moved towards the wolf while holding his sword he was walking very slowly so that he will not make any sound. When he was just 10 meters away from the wolf Evan saw the wolf suddenly open its eyes and looked around it with confusion. When the wolf opened its eyes Evan stopped where he was standing and even stopped breathing. Cold sweat appeared on Evan's back when he saw how the wolf was looking here and there like searching for something. Luckily the wolf soon gave up and once again returned to sleep. Evan sighed in relief when he saw the wolf wasn't able to detect him even though he was just 10 meters away from it. Evan once again started to move towards the wolf with slow steps. When Evan was 5 meters away from it he stopped breathing and carefully came near it. When Evan was just two meters away from it, he held his sword tightly and just like he practiced for the past two years, slashed his sword in a swift motion. Evan targeted the eyes of the wolf so that it will become blind and it was the only place that was not covered by its thick black fur. Howl The wolf howled in pain when Evan destroyed the left eye of the wolf and after destroying the left eye, Evan didn't stop and immediately attacked the right eye. Since Evan was invisible and the wolf just lost its left eye, it wasn't able to sense the danger and its right eye was also destroyed. Howl. Black blood flow out from the destroyed eyes of the wolf and it fell to the ground because of the pain. Evan didn't miss this chance and thrust his sword at the heart of the wolf. But just as Evan expected his sword wasn't able to dig deeper into the skin of the wolf because of its metallic-like thick fur, but Evan didn't give up and continued to thrust his sword at the same place. When Evan was about to thrust his sword for the fifth time, he saw how the wolf suddenly lifted its right claw and slashed towards his direction. Evan quickly stopped his attack and backed away from the wolf. The claw of the wolf barely missed him. When Evan saw how even after becoming blind this wolf was still able to attack him, he became even more cautious and moved behind the wolf. The wolf slowly stood up and tried to sniff around it to find Evan, but because of the invisibility potion, it wasn't able to find anything. The wolf started to slash with its claw here and there, but after 30 seconds the wolf started to have difficulty moving its body. When Evan saw this he quickly understood that the paralyzing poison is finally working. Suddenly the wolf fell to the ground and wasn't able to move its body. When Evan saw this he quickly came near the wolf and thrust his sword near its heart. Because the wolf wasn't able to move Evan easily killed it. After killing the wolf Evan quickly looked for the core. Please give me a core. Evan said and looked near the area of the wolf's heart. The cores of monsters are located near their heart. Evan made a hole near the heart area of the wolf with the help of his sword and put his hand inside the hole to look for the core. Suddenly, Evans felt his hand touch something solid and his eyes lit up when he felt this. Evan quickly grabbed it and pulled out his hand. When Evan looked at his hand, he found a black round object that was around the size of a golf ball. Evan almost laughed out loud when he saw this although it is his first time seeing a shadow core in real life, he saw many pictures of these cores online. I can't believe this small thing is worth 30,000 credits, I worked more than two years to make this much money. Evan said after seeing how the shadow core just looks like a normal marble. Evan carefully put away the core inside his bag and after looking at the corpse of the wolf one last time he started to walk deeper into the hallway. Since the moment Evan entered the dungeon 15 minutes already passed away so he moved quickly into the hallway and just after 2 minutes of walking Evan once again saw something a little far away from him. When Evan looked carefully and saw two monsters one was a cat like monster and the other looked like a hyena, both cat and hyena were sleeping. Evan looked at them carefully and decided to kill the cat monster first because from the looks of it, the defense of the cat monster looks very weak and he should be able to kill it with a single move. With this thought in mind, Evan slowly started to walk towards the cat. When he was 20 meters away from the cat, the cat suddenly stood up and looked in his direction. When Evan saw this, he stopped moving and even stopped breathing. The cat didn't look away and continued to look in the direction where Evan was standing. Don't tell me it can see me, Evan thought, and his heart started to beat like crazy. Suddenly, the cat stood up and started to move in his direction. Slowly the cat started to close the distance between them when the hyena heard the sound of the cat's footsteps it also woke up and looked at the cat with a puzzled expression. When Evan saw even the hyena woke up he almost cursed the receptionist who sold him this potion. Chapter 6 The cat type monster slowly walked towards Evan the monster had the same height as a normal cat but its fur was pitch, black and its eyes were deep red. 
Even when Evan saw the cat was walking towards him, he didn't move because he can see the confusion on the face of the cat monster. It may have sensed something, but it still wasn't able to detect the presence of Evan. Soon the cat was just two meters away from Evan. The cat stopped after coming two meters away from Evan. When Evan saw how close the cat monster was standing, he started to sweat buckets. The cat monster sniffed the air after stopping near Evan and made a confused face like its senses were telling it there is something but for some reason it wasn't able to see or detect its presence. When Evan looked at the hyena, he saw the hyena was looking at the cat in confusion, which means the senses of the hyena didn't detect anything. When Evan saw the hyena wasn't able to detect his presence, he looked at the cat once again and saw it started to walk away from him when it didn't find anything. Evan sighed in relief when he saw this and once again confirmed that he should kill the cat monster first because it was the only one who was able to sense him. Grr. The hyena made a strange sound when it saw the cat monster coming back, but the cat monster didn't even look at it and once again went to sleep. Grr. The hyena made another strange sound like it was irritated by the behavior of the cat, but it also went to sleep once again. When Evan saw both monsters once again went to sleep, he sighed in relief and waited for five minutes before once again starting to move towards the cat monster with slow steps. Soon Evan was just five meters away from it. The nose of the cat monster twitched a, at a little when Evan was just five meters away from it. When Evan saw this, he stopped once again and his heart almost leaped out from his chest. When Evan stopped, the nose of the cat monster also stopped twitch a, ing. When Evan saw this, he once again started to walk towards it. When he was just two meters away from the cat, he slashed at the neck of the sleeping cat with his full power. Just as Evan slashed, the eyes of the cat opened abruptly and it tried to jump away from its position. Although the cat wasn't able to see anything for some reason it felt great danger and without hesitation, it jumped away from its position. But alas the cat realized the danger a little late even before the cat monster moved a little the sword of the Ethan reached near its neck and separated its head from the rest of its body. Just as Evan expected the defense of the cat monster was very weak and he was able to kill it with just a single attack. After killing the cat monster, when Evan looked at the hyena, it was already awake and was looking at the dead cat monster with its eyes wide open. When Evan saw this, he first backed away a little from the cat monster's body and looked at the hyena from a little distance away. He wanted to confirm that the hyena still can't sense his location. The hyena started to look here and there in the hallway. When Evan saw this, he sighed in relief. He was about to move towards the hyena when he confirmed that it still can't sense him when suddenly the hyena opened its mouth wide and shot a dark energy ball near the body of the cat monster. Evan who was already standing far away from the body of the cat monster stopped and looked at the hyena with serious eyes. Boom. The dark energy ball landed near the body of the cat monster and its body turned into bits of flesh because of the explosion but the hyena didn't stop and shot more energy balls at the different locations in the hallway. Evan who saw how the hyena was shooting dark energy balls here and there like a mad beast started to back away in the hallway. Suddenly by chance the hyena shot a dark energy ball in his direction when Evan saw this his eyes opened wide and he quickly crouched down to the ground. Just as Evan crouched down the dark energy ball flew past his head missing him just by a distance of a few centimeters. Boom asterisk. The energy ball landed 10 meters away from him and a 1 meter wide and 3 meter deep crater was formed because of the blast. When Evan saw the impact of the blast cold sweat appeared all over his body, he quickly stood up and made more distance between himself and the hyena. After 5 minutes the hyena stopped shooting the dark energy ball and was panting a little because of so many attacks that it just used to find Evan. When Evan saw the hyena finally stop using its dark energy ball and was panting because of using its skill so many times he quickly moved forward and started to walk towards the hyena. The hyena was still on full alert and was looking here and there in the hallway with cautious eyes. Evan slowly and carefully moved towards it and even when he was just 10 meters away from the hyena it still didn't react. Evan stopped breathing when he was just 10 meters away from the hyena and slowly came near it and instead of slashing at its eyes Evan thrust his sword inside the eye of the hyena. Surprisingly even when the sword was about to pierce through its eye the hyena wasn't able to detect Evan. A light blue aura appeared around the sword just before it pierced through the eye of the hyena and because of this light blue aura the power of Evan's attack increased greatly. Evan used the little mana he had to increase the power of his attack so his attack can destroy the brain of the hyena in just a single attack. He already wasted around 20 minutes fighting against the cat and hyena and can't waste any more time. 
The sword was easily able to bypass the little defense near the eye of the hyena and enter deep inside it. Howl A pain-filled howl was heard inside the hallway before the hyena dropped to the ground motionless when its brain was destroyed by Evan in just a single attack. Evan pulled back the sword and saw he used one-fifth of his mana in just this single attack. I will have to use mana more carefully since I don't have much mana, Evan thought and started to look for the core inside the body of the hyena. Chapter 7 Evan used his sword and made a cut near the heart of the hyena to look for the core, but he was disappointed when he did not find any core inside the hyena. Evan came near the body of the cat that was already blown away by the attack of the hyena earlier there were just chunks of flesh there, the entire body of the cat was destroyed because of the blast earlier. Evan tried to look for the core near the destroyed body of the cat monster, but when he didn't find anything even after five minutes he stopped looking and sighed the chances of these monsters having a core. We're already low so I guess instead of wasting my time here I should move forward and kill other monsters. Forty minutes have passed since Evan entered the dungeon he now had only 140 minutes left before the effect of the invisibility potion ends so Evan moved quickly and started to walk deeper into the dungeon. After one and a half hours Evan was sitting on the ground while panting heavily there were three corpses of rabbit type monsters lying near him. During these one and a half hours Evan killed seven more monsters but he got only one core from these seven monsters. He now has only 40 minutes left before the effect of the invisibility potion ends and he still got only two cores. I can't go more deeper in the dungeon or I will not be able to leave the dungeon before the effect of the invisibility potion run out looks like I can only leave the dungeon with these two cores this time. Evan said with a bitter tone because even after doing everything he only got two cores and he can't absorb them because he has to sell them so he can get his 30,000 credits back and buy another potion so he can once again enter the dungeon safely. It will take Evan 30 minutes to return to the portal of the dungeon so Evan stood up with a bitter face and started to walk towards the portal. At least I got experience of fighting against these monsters when I came here next time I will be able to kill them more easily and maybe I will get more cores next time. Evan said and tried to console himself. Suddenly Evan stopped because he saw a monster sleeping in the hallway. Evan was confused after seeing the monster because he was sure that he killed all the monsters when he passed by here earlier. But Evan then remembered that monsters will once again appear inside the dungeon after some time when you killed them. The monster in front of Evan was a wolf type monster, the same type of monster that he killed when he first entered the dungeon. It will take me 25 minutes to reach the portal and I still have 35 minutes I should be able to kill this monster in 10 minutes maybe I will get a shadow core by killing it Evan thought after seeing the shadow wolf. Evan slowly started to walk towards it like last time and didn't make any sound soon Evan was just 10 meters away from it. The nose of the sleeping wolf twitcher, Ed when Evan was just 10 meters away from it, Evan stopped walking and held his breath so that the wolf won't detect him. Soon the nose of the wolf stopped twitcher, ing, and Evan once again started to walk towards it when Evan was just one meter away from it he slashed his sword at the eyes of the wolf. But just as Evan slashed his sword all hairs on the wolf's body stood up because of the danger and without even opening its eyes the wolf tried to roll away from its location. Although the wolf reacted super fast Evan was still able to slash at the left eye of the wolf. Howl. The wolf howled in pain when one of its eyes was destroyed. Evan tried to attack the wolf once again while it was still recovering from his earlier attack but just as Evan was about to attack it the fur of the wolf shined in ominous black light. When Evan saw this he quickly stopped his attack and backed away from the wolf just as Evan backed away from the wolf a cloud of black smoke came out from its body. When Evan saw the black cloud he felt a chill run down all over his body because when the black smoke touched the hard floor of the dungeon it started to melt, Evan can't even imagine what would have happened if he was a second late to back away from the wolf. The cloud of black smoke surrounded the area of around 2 meters near the wolf, Evan looked at the cloud from a little distance and hoped that the paralyzing poison will soon take the effect and the wolf will be paralyzed. After a minute the black cloud disappeared and the wolf monster once again appeared before Evan. One of its eyes was destroyed and black blood was coming out from it continuously. After the black cloud disappeared the wolf started to back away slowly and tried to retreat from there but because of the paralyzing poison its legs were shaking and it dropped to the ground. When Evan saw this he didn't wait and quickly charged towards it and after coming near the wolf Evan slashed his sword at the other eye of the wolf. Howl The wolf howled in pain and black blood flowed out from its destroyed eye. 
After making the wolf blind, Evan easily killed it. Evan wiped the invisible sweat from his forehead and looked for the core. Evan made a hole near the heart area of the wolf and started looking for the core, and when his hand touched something round and solid while searching his eyes lit up and he quickly pulled back his hand. When Evan pulled back his hand, there was a black marble size of a golf ball in his hand. When Evan saw this, a big smile appeared on his face because now even after selling two cores to get enough money to buy another invisibility potion, he can improve his power a little with the help of this core. Evan quickly put away the core and stood up to leave the dungeon, but just as he started walking towards the portal, black smoke came out from the black walls of the dungeon and started to gather at the same place. Soon the black smoke started to turn solid and took the shape of a flying type monster. When Evan saw the monster, he can feel that the monster was just D rank like others, but for some reason, his heart started to beat faster and faster. When the smoke completely solidified, a bat like monster appeared before him. When Evan saw the bat like monster, he almost cursed it out loud. Chapter 8 A two meter long and one meter tall bat like monster appeared before Evan after the black smoke solidified. The bat was pitch, black with crimson eyes, a one meter long tail was coming out from its back and the end of the tail was shaped in a strange way like a claw of a beast. After the bat appeared it looked in the direction of the dead wolf when it smelled blood, Evan was standing a little far away from the corpse of the wolf. After seeing the corpse of the wolf the bat opened its mouth and released sound waves from its mouth, when Evan saw this he knew that he will not be able to hide from the bat with the help of the invisibility potion. As you all know bats navigate and find insect prey using echolocation. They produce sound waves at frequencies above human hearing, called ultrasound. The sound waves emitted by bats bounce off objects in their environment. Then, the sounds return to the bats ears, which are finely tuned to recognize their own unique calls. So when Evan saw the bat using echolocation to find him he knew that he is doomed. Evan didn't wait for the bat and started to run toward the portal, but how can Evan run faster than the sound waves? Soon the sound waves returned back to the bat after bouncing off from Evan and the bat was able to find his location. The bat quickly flew towards Evan who was running towards the portal when the bat-like monster arrived at the location from where the sound was reflected it didn't find anyone so the bat used the echolocation location once again. The sound waves once again spread throughout the entire hallway and reflected back to Bat and it was once again able to find Evan's location who was 150 meters away from it. When the Bat looked in the direction from which it once again sensed Evan it didn't see anything and Bat finally understood that his enemy is using something to hide so it can't see him with its eyes. The Bat was a rank D monster so it was quite intelligent. This time the bat didn't use echolocation, instead it came near the location where it last sensed Evan and opened its mouth wide and screeched in high pitch, Ed voice. When the bat-like monster screeched Evan who was around 70 meters away from the bat felt a splitting headache and fell to the ground. Evan clutched, Ed his head and gritted his teeth to not make any sound, but because of the attack of the bat, the ears of Evan started to bleed. After five seconds the bat stopped its sound attack and this time even without using echolocation it was able to find Evan because of the blood that was flowing out from his ears. When the bat stopped its attack the headache of Evan also lessened quite a bit he stood up with trembling feet and looked in the direction of the bat which was also looking in his direction with its deep crimson eyes that were filled with murderous intentions. When Evan felt the blood dripping from his ears he knew that he can't hide from the bat now and it was more than clear that he can't outrun the bat and reach the portal before the bat attacked him again. I guess I spent all of my luck when I got three shadow cores just by killing 11 monsters. Evan said in a bitter tone when he saw the bat flying towards his direction. Even before I entered here I knew that the chances of my dying here are very high but I still took the risk because I don't want to live a useless life Evan held his sword tightly in his hand and a determined look appeared on his face I may die again today but it will be better than living like this every day. During these two years although Evan tried to live a normal life deep down he felt empty because every morning he woke up and go to hunting classes alone to learn more about this new world after the classes were ended he go to learn swordmanship. And after his sword manship class, he will have to earn money so he can buy invisibility potion that can help him improve his power a little. During these two years, instead of living, Evan was trying to survive in this world. He has no friends. Every person in the academy looked down on him. When the memories of these two years came into Evan's mind, he felt like even if he die here, it will change nothing. Thinking about this, all fear that Evan was feeling disappeared, and he looked at the bat who already arrived near him. 
The bat came flying towards him and opened its mouth to release sound shock waves. The sound shock waves traveled towards Evan who jumped sideways just in time to dodge the attack. The shock waves were like an unstoppable force that even destroyed the hard floor of the dungeon. Evan quickly looked at the bat once again after dodging the attack and tried to think of a way to attack the bat because while the bat is flying he can't attack it. Evan looked around him and saw many stones the size of a golf ball. These stones were broken from the floor of the dungeon after the attack of the bat. Evan quickly moved towards them and picked up two stones. Just as Evan picked up two stones he once again jumped sideways to dodge another attack of the bat. After dodging the attack Evan didn't wait and imbued a little mana in the stone. If he used a normal stone to attack the deer ink bat Evan knew that with his pitiful strength he won't even be able to scratch it let alone harm it. When Evan imbued a little mana into the stone a light blue layer appeared around the pitch, black stone. Evan didn't wait any longer because the mana of the stone started to disperse in the surrounding environment when he stopped putting more mana into it. With all of his strength, Evan threw the stone toward the bat which once again opened its mouth to attack Evan. The stone traveled like a meteorite and hit it at the center of its forehead. Shriek The bat shrieked in pain when the stone was able to pass through its defense and black blood flowed out from its forehead. Because of the sudden attack, the bat lost its balance and started to fall down from the sky. When Evan saw this he held his sword tightly and charged toward the falling bat. Chapter 9 while running towards the falling bat Evan imbued little mana to the second stone in his hand and just like before threw it towards the falling bat this time the stone hit the bat near the stomach area but wasn't able to pierce through its defense. But the pain of being hit by mana imbued stone still made the falling bat shriek in pain. Thump. With a loud thump the two meter long bat fell to the ground. Before the bat regained its senses after falling Evan came before it and slashed his sword at the eyes of the bat. When the bat sensed the danger it swung its one meter long tail that was shaped like a claw at the end towards the face of Evan. When Evan saw the tail that was approaching his face like a whip he stopped his attack but the tail was too fast so he wasn't able to dodge it and can only use his sword to defend against the impact. The power of the deer ink bat was too much for Evan who is still an F rank hunter so when its tail clashed with his sword Evan was thrown five meters away from it because of the impact. Because of the impact Evan's hands were shaking and he felt like the bones of his hand are almost fractured. Evan stood up with difficulty and found the bat once again flying up in the sky and was looking at him coldly with crimson eyes. Its forehead was still bleeding because of his earlier attack. The bat used his wings and dived towards Evan with high speed and came before him in an instant. Evan wasn't even able to follow the movement of the bat because its speed was too fast for him to see. When he realized the danger the bat already appeared in front of him. After coming before Evan the bat used its front claw and tried to cut off his neck with a single sweep. Evan tried to dodge the attack by jumping sideways and because of his fast reaction the claw of the bat missed his neck and wounded his left shoulder. Ah. Evan cried in pain when the bat ripped a large portion of his shoulder. The left side of his shoulder became completely red because of the blood. Evan fell to the ground after dodging the attack and even before he could stand up the bat once again flew toward him. Evan who fell down to the ground face first was trying to stand up when the bat reached near him in an instant and used his claw to dig it deeper into the back of Evan. Aorg. Evan cried in pain when the bat started to absorb his blood through its claw that he dug into his back. The bat attached itself to the back of Evan with the help of its claw and continued to absorb his blood. Damn you even if I die here I am going to take you with me. Evan shouted because of the pain and rage and used his shadow walk skill. Suddenly Evan disappeared and turned into a shadow the bat who was absorbing his blood with the help of its claw fell to the ground when Evan suddenly disappeared. Because Evan didn't have much mana he quickly came out from his shadow after freeing himself from the bat and used his sword to stab the eye of the bat there was a large wound at the back of Evan and even his bones were visible because of the wound. Blood continues to flow out from his wound. Because Evan suddenly appeared before the bat using his shadow walk skill the bat wasn't able to react in time and one of its eyes was stabbed by the sword. Shrink in. The bat shrieked in pain and black blood flow out from the destroyed eye of the bat. Evan didn't stop after destroying the eye of the bat and used the little mana he had a light blue layer of mana covered his sword and he slashed the sword at the neck of the bat. When the bat felt the danger of death it used its tail and tried to stop the sword. 
The tail and sword clashed and the hand of Evan shook because of the impact, but the tail of the bat was also severed in two because of the increased power of the sword by mana. A fountain of black blood erupted from the severed tail of the bat and it shrieked in pain. Evan's hands were trembling because of his earlier clash with the bat's tail, but he didn't stop and once again slashed his sword at the right eye of the bat. Because of the pain that Bat was feeling after its tail was cut off, it wasn't able to evade the attack and its right eye was also destroyed by Evan. Evan was feeling dizzy because he lost too much blood and was on the verge of passing out his all body was aching because of the injuries and he knew that there is very little hope for him to survive even if he killed the Bat. After destroying the eye of the Bat Evan was about to finish off the Bat when it suddenly opened its mouth to release a sound shock wave attack. Evan quickly reacted and thrust his sword inside the head of the bat he used all of his remaining mana in the attack. Although Evan reacted quickly and his sword even dug deeper into the head of the bat it was still able to release its attack. Evan was standing too close to the bat and his vision already started to turn blurry because of the blood loss so he wasn't able to dodge the attack of the bat. The sound shockwave hit Evan and he flew backward like a broken kite and crashed against the wall of the dungeon. The wall of the dungeon crumbled because of the impact and Evan found himself lying on the cold floor of another hall room that appeared after the wall of the dungeon crumbled. Chapter 10 When Evan crashed against the wall of the dungeon because of the attack of the bat the wall crumbled and a new hall room appeared behind the wall. Evan was lying face first on the ground of the floor room. This new hall room was completely dark there was no light inside this hall room but even if this room was as bright as day it would not matter to Evan because after taking the attack directly from the bat his consciousness started to fade away. Blood was flowing out from his wounds and a puddle of blood formed near him. Suddenly the blood started to move on its own like it was being attracted by something but Evan whose vision already started to turn black wasn't able to see anything. The blood moved deeper into the new hall room where a small platform was located, an octogram-shaped picture was engraved on the small platform and in front of the platform a strange statue that was pitch, black was located. The statue looked like a human but there was a long horn coming out from its forehead and from the features of the statue it was hard to determine whether it is statue of a male or a female. The statue was 5 meters tall and the horn that was coming out from its head was 1 meter long. Evan's blood moved towards the platform and came into the contact with the octogram engraving when the blood touched the engraving all eight points of the octogram lit up and started to absorb the blood of Evan. The color of the octogram started to change and soon it turned into light red after one minute. When the octogram turned light red the eyes of the statue also lit up into light red color and Evan who was just about to pass out from the blood loss and injuries heard a cold voice inside his mind what do you want to sacrifice? Present time. Aorg. A pain-filled scream came from Evan's mouth after he was engulfed by black smoke once again. Evan never felt pain like this before he felt like someone is slowly tearing him apart from the inside. Suddenly the black smoke that engulfed Evan started to enter his body through his eyes, nose, mouth, and ears. Gwiai. When black smoke entered his mouth and nose Evan started to have difficulty in breathing. The pain of sacrificing his physique was so intense that the pain he felt while fighting against the bat felt like a blessing. Tears started to flow out from his eyes that turned completely pitch, black because of the smoke that was covering his eyes entirely. After 30 seconds Evan was on verge of passing out from the pain and just as he was about to pass out because of the pain the black smoke that entered his body started to come out. Soon all the black smoke that entered his body came out and started to move back from his body. I have successfully extracted your shadow physique. Evan heard the same cold voice again while lying on the floor he was breathing heavily and his vision was blurry. Evan wanted to curse this bastard but he wasn't even able to move his fingers because of the exhaustion here are the cores that I promised to give you after taking your physique. Evan heard the cold voice again and something dropped near him but he wasn't even able to move his head to see what it was. But Evan wanted to check can he really absorb other cores now that his physique is gone so he mustered all of his strength and looked at the black smoke that was floating some distance away from him. For some reason Evan was able to see everything clearly even in the darkness. Evan didn't pay any attention to it and was about to ask can he absorb other cores now when he felt a sudden pain in his heart. Aorg. The pain was even more intense that he just experienced so Evan passed out in just one second. Just as Evan passed out a black aura erupted from his body and covered the entire hall room including the platform where the octogram and statue were located. 
As soon as the black aura touched the statue, the statue turned into dust and the black smoke that covered Evan previously also disappeared from the hall room. The eight sides of the octogram stopped shining in light red color and soon even the platform turned into dust. The hall room turned pitch black because of the black aura that was coming out from Evan. Thump! 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 Evan's heart started to beat faster and faster and in this silent hall room, it was like someone is beating a drum. An illusory black round ball size of rice grain started to form inside Evan's heart. The ball was pitch black and was like it will engulf anything that will come near it. Evan passed out the moment this illusionary black ball started to form inside his heart. The illusory ball started to turn solid as time passes and after 30 minutes it turned completely solid like a black marble but its size didn't change. Just as the black ball turned solid inside Evan's heart, his black hair turned completely dark just like the ball that formed inside his heart. The color of his hair was so dark that it felt like it will swallow even the light if it came near it. The black aura that was coming from Evan's body started to retreat inside his body and was swallowed by the strange black ball that formed inside his heart. Even after the black ball was completely formed inside Evan's heart, he didn't wake up and continued to sleep. Many changes appeared in his status window after Evan lost his shadow physique and the strange black ball formed inside his heart that he will find when he will woke up. Chapter 11 Evan slowly opened his eyes while lying face first on the cold floor of the hall room. He slowly tried to sit up but he felt completely exhausted like he just ran a marathon. Evan sat up with difficulty and was confused at first why he is feeling so exhausted. Soon memories of what happened before he passed out came into his mind and Evan looked in the hall for the black smoke, but he didn't find anything. Evan just saw a mountain of dust a little far away from him. That was formed after the statue and the platform turned into dust because of black aura that erupted from Evan's body. But suddenly Evan felt something is not right because for some reason he felt his vision is much better than before and he can see things much more clearly than before. Evan was confused at first, but then he remembered the cores that the person who took his physique away gave him. He looked to his right side where he remembered the black smoke dropped something. Evan saw a ring placed near him when he saw the ring Evan's heart skipped a beat. He slowly picked up the ring with trembling hands and looked at the ring closely. When he confirmed what it was he closed his eyes for a moment and took a deep breath. Ha ha ha, suddenly Evan burst into laughter, this is really a storage ring, I can't believe that devil gave me a storage ring, I can easily sell it for a hundred thousand credits. Storage rings are not rare in Aurora world, but only rich people can afford them, Evan who barely saved 30,000 credits to buy a potion after working for two years can never imagine to buy this ring, but here he got it for free. Evan quickly put a drop of blood on the storage ring to link it with himself. After linking the storage ring with himself, Evan quickly checked how many cores the devil gave him. This. Evan's jaw almost dropped to the ground when he checked the storage ring. There were nearly 50 cores inside the storage ring. Evan nearly died because he entered the dungeon to get three cores, but here he got a storage ring and 50 cores just by sacrificing that useless physique. Was that devil a moron he healed me then gave me a stronger ring and so many cores just for that useless physique? Evan said with a speechless expression. Did he really take away my physique? Evan said with a doubtful tone and opened his status window. Name, Evan. Rank, F. Monarch core rank, F. Strength, F. Agility, F. Mana, F. Stamina, F+. Plus. Intelligence, F. Luck, E+. Plus. Charm, D. Skill, Shadow Walk. Physique, Shadow Monarch Physique. Title, None. Job, None. What is this Monarch Core rank? Evan asked after seeing a new term in his status window, but he continued to look down till he saw his physique. What? Evan shouted with a shocked voice after seeing a new name in his physique details. Just as Evan looked at the Shadow Monarch Physique, some details appeared on his status window. Shadow Monarch Physique, one of the forbidden physiques that exists in the world. It allows you to form a Monarch Core inside your heart. The Monarch Core can absorb 100 power of a core. While absorbing the core, there is a 3% chance that you will receive a skill of the monster from which the core was extracted. Boom! Evan felt like an explosion happened in his mind when he read the details of his new physique because it is common knowledge that a person can only absorb a maximum of 50 power of a core and here, 
He is reading with the help of his new physique he can absorb 100 power of a core and there is even 3% chance that he will receive a skill from that core. It's just underscore. Evan was lost for words because previously because of his physique he wasn't able to improve his power but here now his new physique can improve his power at the fastest speed possible. But Evan quickly calmed down because there are many things that he didn't understand first how he got this physique, second what is a forbidden physique, third what is this monarch core inside his heart there were just too many questions and no answers his head started to ache just thinking about all of this. Wait why can I see the details of this physique? Evan said while looking at the details of his physique because in the past when he had shadow physique he was not able to see any details related to it. Whenever he tried to look at its details he was only able to see question marks and nothing else but now for some reason he can see the details of his new physique Evan didn't understand what happened after he lost his physique. Monarch core I remembered I felt like my heart is going to burst apart before I passed out was it because of this core. Evan said and tried to sense something strange with his heart. Evan closed his eyes and focused his mana on his heart suddenly the picture of his heart appeared in his mind and Evan was able to see a pitch, black ball size of a rice grain slowly rotating inside his heart. So this is a monarch core that can help me absorb 100% power of a core? Evan said doubtfully because this core was just the size of a rice grain how can it help him to absorb 100% power from a core? Evan looked at the storage ring that he received from the devil and took out a red core from this it was a fire core that must have been taken from a fire type monster. All cores inside the storage ring were D rank, Evan took a deep breath after taking out the core let's see can I now absorb cores that are not shadow type. Evan said and imbued his mana in the core to refine it. Just as Evan imbued his mana in the core orange fire like wisps started to appear around the core and moved toward Evan's body. Evan looked at this with nervous look because if his body absorbs these wisps it means he can now absorb other cores as well just like normal hunters but if he wasn't able to absorb these wisps it means that nothing changed for him. The wisps slowly came near his body and were absorbed by him, Evan's eyes sparkled when he saw this and in just one minute the core disappeared and Evan felt his power improved a little. I was just able to absorb 30% power of the core, Evan said when he wasn't able to absorb 100% power of the core. Is this physique also a scam? Evan said when he wasn't able to absorb 100% power of the core. Chapter 12 Shadow Monarch Physique, one of the forbidden physiques that exists in the world. It allows you to form a monarch core inside your heart. The monarch core can absorb 100 power of a core. While absorbing the core there is a 3% chance that you will receive a skill of the monster from which the core was extracted. Evan read the details of the physique once again to confirm that he didn't read the details wrong earlier. After reading the details Evan took out another core and once again tried to absorb it, Evan focused on the energy that was being absorbed by him from the core. After entering his body the energy moved near his heart but instead of being absorbed by the monarch core, Evan noticed that the energy was being absorbed by his prime core. Just like monsters humans also have a core inside their body which is located near their heart, unlike monsters who have cores depending on their type like fire monsters have a fire core inside their bodies humans have a white core that is called the prime core. To improve their rank humans have to refine this core and improve its rank. Currently, the rank of Evan's prime core is F which is why he is F rank hunter. When Evan absorbed the power of the core he noticed that instead of being absorbed by the monarch core the energy of the core was being absorbed by his prime core. How am I supposed to absorb energy by monarch core? Evan was puzzled after seeing this because he does not know how he can use his monarch core to absorb energy from the core. Evan took out another core and brought it near his chest area where his heart was located but nothing happens, Evan looked at the core carefully and suddenly got the urge to eat it. I don't have to eat it right? Evan said in disbelief when he suddenly got the urge to eat the core I will die if I eat a core. According to what Evan learned in two years you can't eat a core, if you eat a core the unrefined energy and it will destroy your body from inside. You have to use your mana to refine the energy of a core and then you can absorb it to increase the rank of your core there is a very high chance that you will die if you eat a core directly that is why Evan was perplexed when he suddenly got the urge to eat the core. Evan tried other methods to absorb the core using his monarch core but nothing worked do I really have to eat it? Evan hesitated to eat the core because if his monarch core did not absorb the energy there is a high chance that he will die because of the unrefined energy of the core. 
I will not swallow the core and will just put it in my mouth. Evan said, and with hesitation, he put a core in his mouth. Evan made sure to not swallow the core because he knew that if he swallow the core and his physique not work, he will die horribly. Just as Evan put the core inside his mouth and it touched his tongue, the monarch core inside his heart that was rotating slowly suddenly picked up speed like it sensed something and just as the monarch core started to rotate faster, the core that Evan put in his mouth started to melt. Evan was shocked by the sudden turn of events and even before he can do anything the core disappeared and turned into pure energy that started to move toward his heart. Evan can feel the energy of the core came near his heart but this time instead of going to the prime core the energy of the core entered inside his heart and was absorbed by his rotating monarch core. Just as the monarch core absorbed all energy Evan felt his body becoming more stronger and it was clear that the monarch core absorbed all energy of the core and did not waste energy like the prime core. So this physique can really help me to absorb 100% energy of a core. Evan said with a delighted voice after he was able to absorb 100% energy of the core. But suddenly Evan thought about something and his eyes opened wide from shock it can't be right. Evan said and took out another core and put it inside his mouth just like before the core turned into pure energy and was absorbed by his monarch core. Evan felt his body becoming stronger after he absorbed the core. Evan took out another core and this time used his mana to refine it the energy of the core was absorbed by his prime core this time and he felt his body becoming a little stronger although when he compared the progress with his monarch core it was not even half. I can really improve my power by increasing the rank of both cores. Evan said with an excited voice because unlike others who can only get stronger just by increasing the rank of their prime core Evan had two cores and he can increase his power by both cores which means. He will be far more powerful than a normal hunter who is in the same rank as him. I will have to use more cores than normal people since I have to improve the ranks of two cores instead of one but now that I can absorb any core just like others it won't be a problem for me besides Evan looked at the storage ring and a smile appeared on his face. I think these core are enough to increase the rank of my monarch core to D rank who can absorb 100% energy from a core. Evan decided to improve the rank of his monarch core first since it can absorb 100% energy from a core and there is even a 3% chance that he will receive a skill from a core that will increase his power even more. After deciding this Evan did not wait any longer and started putting cores inside his mouth one by one. When Evan absorbed the 12th core the 3% chance of getting a skill from the core was finally triggered and a notification appeared before him. Chapter 13 Evan continues to absorb the cores using his monarch core and when he absorbed his 12th core which came from a wind type monster a notification appeared before him. You have learned skill haste. I didn't expect to learn a skill this soon. Evan said with a delighted voice and looked at the details of his new skill. Haste, a skill that increases your agility by 20% for one minute. Cool down time, 30 seconds. A simple but excellent skill for improving his agility although Evan was hoping to get an attack type skill he wasn't disappointed with this skill because there were still many cores left for him to absorb. After learning the skill Evan continues to absorb more cores and just as he absorbed two more cores after getting haste skill Evan felt his monarch core start to rotate faster and faster suddenly the mana from the surrounding started to flow towards him and enter his body. A whirlpool of mana appeared above Evan's head when the surrounding mana moved toward him. After entering his body the mana moved toward his heart and was absorbed by his monarch core. Evan felt a slight pain in his heart but he was able to endure it easily. The mana whirlpool above Evan's head continues to gather mana near Evan's body and after a minute Evan felt his monarch core stop rotating. Suddenly the monarch core released a burst of energy and this energy started to refine his body. Evan felt his body being strengthened to another level and his mana capacity increasing greatly. Name, Evan. Rank, F. Monarch core rank, E. Strength, F. Agility, F. Mana, F. Stamina, F+. Plus. Intelligence, F. Luck, E+. Plus. Charm, D+. Plus. Skill, Shadow Walk, Haste. Physique, Shadow Monarch Physique. Title, None. Job, None. My Monarch Core directly advanced to the E rank instead of F plus rank Evan said when he saw his status window but why my states are still the same I can clearly feel my strength, agility, and other state improved greatly after my Monarch Core advanced to E rank. 
Evan was confused when he saw his state didn't change even after his Monarch Corps advanced to E rank. I think the state will only change when my Prime Corps will advance. After thinking about it, Evan thought it was logical that his state will not change because of his Monarch Corps, because even before his Monarch Corps was formed inside his heart, his status window was showing the level of his Prime Corps, and since it is still F, rank it was not surprising that his state did not change. Even if my status window is not showing I can clearly feel my body is far stronger than before and my mana capacity is also a lot higher than before. Evan didn't care about it much because this did not affect him in any negative way. Evan once again looked at the status window and his mouth twitched uh, at a little when he saw his charm was increased to D plus after his monarch core advanced. I wonder what those useless male students will do if they saw I become more handsome. Evan was often get bullied by both male and female students because of his handsome face for some reason his charm was too high even when he was just an F ranker his charm was at D rank so. Many male students were jealous of him and since he was too weak they often bullied him because of this. Well I don't think there will be anyone now who will able to do anything to me since I can also improve my power now Evan said and closed his status window and continued to absorb more cores to improve his monarch core to D rank. Suddenly when Evan finished absorbing a core a notification appeared before him, Evan's eyes lit up when he saw this because he got another skill from the core, this time Evan got a skill from a shadow core. You have learned the skill shadow bullet. Shadow bullet, you can shoot a bullet made of shadow by using mana the power of the bullet depends on how much mana you use to cast it, there is a 5% chance that the defender will become blind for 2 seconds after being hit by shadow bullet. Awesome. Evan said after reading the details of the skill he wanted to get a skill that can help him attack from a long distance and he just got a skill that he can use to attack from a long distance. N N. Evan did not stop after getting the skill and continued to absorb more cores. Suddenly when he had only 8 cores left he once again felt a slight pain in his heart and a mana whirlpool bigger than the previous one formed above his head. Mana once again started to move towards his body and was absorbed by his monarch core once again. The monarch core rotate faster and absorb the mana from the whirlpool that was formed above his head. After some time the monarch core stopped absorbing mana and released a burst of energy. Evan felt his body being strengthened to a new level and his mana capacity also increased greatly but this time it did not end there and just as his monarch core advanced to D rank a notification appeared before him. Monarch core advanced to D rank, you have received skill shadow storage. Shadow Storage, a special shadow space where you can keep anything that is not alive the space of shadow storage depends on the level of the user. I can even get skills by improving my Monarch Core level. Evan said in disbelief because getting a skill is very hard and only a few people have more than one skill and here he got three skills just by absorbing some cores. Evan looked at the remaining 8 cores and after thinking about it he decided to absorb them through his monarch core but when Evan tried to absorb the core he felt severe pain in his chest area the energy of the core came near his monarch core but this time the monarch core didn't absorb the energy when the monarch core did not absorb the energy it moved towards his prime core and was absorbed by it. But Evan felt severe pain in his chest area when the prime core absorbed the energy and to Evan's horror he noticed some cracks started to appear on his prime core. Chapter 14 Evan's Prime Core absorbed all energy that he wanted to refine through his Monarch Core. When his Prime Core absorbed all energy it was filled with many cracks and Evan was panting heavily because of the pain he was feeling in his chest area. What the hell was that? Evan said after some time when the pain in his chest area lessened a bit. Evan checked his Prime Core and was horrified when he saw many cracks all over it. Evan quickly took out another core from his storage ring and refined it using his mana and used the energy of the core to heal his prime core. When the refined energy came near his prime core it started to heal cracks on it and when he absorbed all energy of the core all cracks on the core disappeared and his prime core also advanced to F plus rank. Evan sighed in relief when the cracks of his core were healed and his prime core also advanced to F plus rank. His prime core was almost shattered because it was not able to handle the unrefined energy of the core that Evan absorbed directly. Unlike his monarch core which can absorb the energy without refining it his prime core can only absorb energy after Evan refines it by using his mana but just now for some reason his monarch core did not absorb the unrefined energy and it moved near his prime core that almost destroyed it. Why my monarch core stopped absorbing more energy? Evan was confused by this sudden turn of events, Evan opened his status window and looked at his progress. 
Name, Evan. Rank, F+. Monarch Corps Rank, D. Strength, F+. Agility, F+. Mana, F+. Stamina, F+. Intelligence, F+. Luck, E+. Charm, C. Skill, Shadow Walk. Haste, Shadow Bullet. Physique, Shadow Monarch Physique. Title, None. Job, none. After seeing his status window and how his Monarch Core directed the energy towards his Prime Core Evan concluded that to increase the rank of his Monarch Core Evan first have to increase the rank of his Prime Core. I still have seven cores left in my storage ring these cores should be enough to advance my Prime Core to E rank. Evan decided to improve the rank of his Prime Core after he was unable to absorb energy using his Monarch Core. At first, Evan thought that his Monarch Core will be advanced easily since it can absorb 100% energy of the core, but only when he started absorbing did he find out that even though his Monarch Core can absorb 100% of energy, from a core it still requires more cores than his Prime Core. But Evan was not bothered by this because he can feel that every time his Monarch Core advanced he received a great boost in his power that his Prime Core can never provide. Evan absorbed his remaining cores and just as he expected his prime core was advanced to E rank when he finished absorbing all the cores that he received after sacrificing his shadow physique. When his prime core advanced to E rank Evan felt his body being strengthened to another degree and he can't help but let out a sigh of satisfaction when he felt the boundless power that was running inside his body. Name, Evan. Rank, the Monarch core rank, D. Strength, the Agility, E. Mana, E. Stamina, E. Intelligence, E. Luck, D. Charm, C. Evan checked his states and was surprised when he noticed his charm did not increase after his prime core advanced to E rank. Evan closed his status window and finally stood up when he finished absorbing all cores. Evan felt a little odd when he stood up because his height, which was 180 centimeters previously, now increased to 185 centimeters, but he adjusted with it quickly and looked at the crumbled wall, from which he came into this odd hall room. Evan looked in the hall room, but he didn't find anything other than a small mountain of dust that was formed after the statue and the platform turned into dust because of the black aura that erupted from his monarch core when it washed formed. When Evan did not find any trace of the person who spoke to him, he started to walk outside the hall room. Evan came out from the hall room through the crumbled wall he saw the corpse of the bat that almost killed him with its last attack. But Evan had to close his eyes for some time because he felt the hallway was too bright and he is looking at the sun directly. After some time his eyes were able to adjust according to light and when he saw the hall room behind the crumbled wall he was surprised to find out that the entire hall room was completely dark but he can still see everything clearly I also got a night vision Evan thought when he finds out he can even see in complete darkness. After his eyes were adjusted to light Evan came near the bat his sword was stuck in its head and it was clear that the bat died because of the sword attack that Evan did to it at the last moment. Evan came near the corpse of the bat and pulled out his sword. After pulling out his sword he looked for the core, and to his surprise, he found a core inside the body of the bat. Evan happily put away the core inside his storage ring along with the other three cores that he got earlier by killing monsters. He did not absorb these cores because although he now have enough strength to enter the dungeon without the invisibility potion he still wanted to sell some cores to earn a little money his bank account almost got empty when he purchased the invisibility potion to enter the dungeon. I think my days of living on cub noodles are over now. Evan said with an emotional tone because for the past two years since he was saving money he was forced to eat cub noodles every day. After selling the cores I will definitely go to the most famous restaurant to eat something. Evan said and started walking towards the exit of the dungeon. When Evan was just 700 meters away from the exit portal he saw a lion-like monster who was two meters tall blocking his way but instead but feeling the fear that he felt when he saw the bat. This time Evan did not even flinch and continued to walk toward the lion with steady steps. For some reason when he saw Shadow Lion Monster he did not feel an ounce of threat from it. Evan also wanted to test his current power so he calmly walked towards the lion. When the lion felt the presence of Evan it looked towards his direction and when its deep yellow eyes met with Evan's pitch. Black eyes for some reason the lion felt the shadow power inside his body trembled because it looked in those deep black eyes. Chapter 15 
Evan stopped 50 meters away from the lion. The monster already noticed Evan, but it did not attack Evan immediately because it can feel a dangerous aura from Evan. Evan smiled when he saw how the lion was being careful when it saw him if it was before. The lion would have already attacked him without giving him a chance to even take a breath. Roar! The lion roared at Evan when it saw how Evan was smiling in front of it. Although it can feel the danger from Evan as a monster whose primary instinct is to kill it wasn't able to endure it much longer and charged towards Evan with its full speed. The lion was pretty fast for a deer ink monster, but when Evan saw it he felt like the lion was moving in slow motion. When the lion charged toward him Evan also moved. Haste Evan used his newly acquired skill haste and his agility increased sharply. Evan disappeared from his place and appeared 70 meters behind the charging lion. When Evan stopped, he felt like his head was spinning. Since he just advanced to D rank with his monarch core and his prime core also advanced to E rank, Evan's agility increased by many folds and since he was using it for the first time, he wasn't able to control it. And instead of appearing before the lion, he appeared 70 meters behind it. Damn. I will have to practice if I don't want to crash against something while running. Evan said when he saw how he wasn't able to control his new power. The lion who was charging towards Evan also stopped and quickly looked behind it when it felt Evan's presence behind it. Roerg. The lion roared once again and shot towards Evan once again. Evan also took a deep breath and dashed towards the lion, but he did not use haste skill this time to improve his agility because he first wanted to control his natural speed. Even without using haste skill, Evan was much faster than the lion, and when he came near the lion, the monster used its front claw like a hammer to smash Evan's body, but he easily dodged the claw of the lion with his agility and punched the lion at its face. Roerg The lion roared in pain when Evan's fist landed straight into its face, and because of the impact, it was blasted 10 meters away from Evan. Evan was shocked by his own strength because normally an average rank D hunter will have a hard time while fighting against a monster who is in the same rank as him, but here he was not even using his full strength and he was still able to dominate the lion, without much effort. Looks like the power Monarch Core gave when it advanced to new rank is vastly different from the power that Prime Core gave me. Evan said when he saw how he was able to fight against the lion without any effort. Roerg the lion roared and stood up after being blasted away by Evan's punch. Suddenly a black mist started to come out from the lion and covered its entire body. The mist started to solidify after covering the entire body of the lion and soon the mist turned into armor that was covering the entire body of the lion. Because of the armor the defense of the lion increased greatly and with a loud roar, it once again dashed towards Evan. Evan didn't care about the skill that the lion just used and pointed one of his fingers toward the incoming lion. Shadow Bullet Evan muttered and a dark bullet shot from his finger toward the lion with a frightening speed. Since the lion was running towards Evan at its full speed, it wasn't able to dodge the bullet and the bullet struck the lion at the center of its head. The bullet pierced through the armor of the lion easily and even the tough skin of the lion wasn't able to stop the shadow bullet completely. The bullet dig deeper into the head of the lion and made a small hole at the center of its forehead. Roar with a loud roar, the running lion dropped to the ground when the bullet struck it at the center of its forehead and black blood spurt out from its forehead. The power of Shadow Bullet is not bad. Evan said when he saw how his bullet easily pierced through the defense of the lion. I think I can easily take care of any rank D monster with my current power. I should finish this lion so I can go back and eat something. After doing so much today, I am starting to feel hungry. Evan said and dashed towards Lion who was still roaring in pain because of the bullet that struck it earlier. With his high agility Evan came before the Lion in the blink of an eye and once again used Shadow Bullet but this time Evan used three times more mana than he used before. A sharp looking two centimeters long bullet formed at the tip of Evan's finger and he shoot it at the Lion. The bullet pierced through the head of the Lion and destroyed its brain. Roar With a loud painful roar the Lion stopped breathing and died. Evan looked at the lifeless body of the lion for a moment and remembered how just a few hours ago he was struggling to fight against the monsters who also possessed the same strength as this lion, but just after a few hours, because of a single event, everything changed. When Evan thought how easily he killed the lion, a small smile appeared on his face. I wonder what kind of expression those arrogant students of the academy will make when they will find out about my current strength. After killing the lion Evan looked for the core but unfortunately he did not find anything Evan was not disappointed by this and once again started to walk toward the exit portal of the dungeon.
This time he did not encounter any monster and safely came before the exit portal of the dungeon. Evan took a deep breath and exit the dungeon to start a new life where he will not have to endure the mocking look of others and he can also improve his power. Chapter 16 Looks like that kid died in the dungeon. The guard who warned Evan when he entered the dungeon said, Many ignorant people like him die every day because they overestimate themselves and enter dungeons that are higher ranked than them. The other guard said while shaking his head. According to the card he showed he was a student of Astral Hunter Academy, I wonder what they are teaching students there. You can't expect them to pay attention to every student. There are hundreds of people who awaken their ability and join the Hunter Academy. If a student overestimates himself and enter a dungeon that is high level than him, you can't blame the Academy for this. I wonder if he informed his teachers that he will be entering a D-rank dungeon. The guard said, We already know his name, we will do our duty and just inform the academy about him if he did not come out before tomorrow. The second guard said while yawing. Suddenly the entrance portal of the dungeon flashed. When both guards who were talking looked at the portal, they saw a boy in tattered clothes that were stained in blood came out from the portal. Even though the boy was wearing tattered clothes that were stained in blood, he was still looking devilishly handsome, his pitch. Black hair were waving because of the wind of cold night. When the guards saw Evan, they were stunned for a moment because he looked completely different than before. Who is this guy and how he entered the dungeon without us knowing? One of the guards asked when he saw Evan. Idiot, he is the same F rank student who entered some hours ago. The guard who warned Evan said because he still remembered the face of Evan clearly, although Evan was looking completely different than before he was still able to recognize him. What the guard shouted and looked at Evan's face carefully how the hell has his appearance changed this much? He asked with a stunned look when he also recognized Evan. After coming out from the dungeon Evan walked towards the gate of the dungeon where guards were standing when he came near them he nodded at them with a small smile. You, what happened to you? The guard asked Evan when he came near them. Evan was confused at first, but then remembered that because of his core advancement his appearance changed quite a bit, his previous skinny body gained some muscles, and his height and charm also increased quite a bit basically he looks completely different than before. I just got lucky and my core advanced to E rank that's why my appearance changed a little. Evan said while scratch, ing the back of his head. The guards were stunned when they heard this because they never saw someone's appearance changing this much after advancing from F rank to E rank. But they also can't find any other reason for the sudden change in Evan's appearance so they were not able to say anything. You are lucky that you did not die in the dungeon, next time you should only enter a dungeon according to your rank. The guard said when he saw how Evan's clothes were tattered and were covered in blood. Thanks, for the advice I will keep it in mind. Evan said politely and started to walk away. The guards did not stop him this time. Evan waved his hand when he saw a taxi. The taxi driver stopped near Evan a straight hunter academy. Are you a student of the hunter academy? The driver asked while driving towards the academy he was not surprised by tattered clothes of Evan because they were near Shadow Kingdom dungeon and many hunters came out with tattered clothes after fighting in the dungeon. Yes, I am in my finale year. Evan replied to the taxi driver. Sai I also wanted to become a hunter but wasn't able to awaken any ability. Evan did not say anything when he heard this because he already knew very few people can awaken their ability. The driver also stopped talking after this and continued to drive towards the academy while sitting Evan was thinking about the things that happened to him today. He was mostly confused about how he got Shadow Monarch physique after sacrificing his Shadow physique because he was sure that the person who took his physique wasn't the one who gave him this physique. I will have to look how people can obtain a physique Evan thought about looking into the details of how a person can obtain a physique after returning to the academy. Although my power is even higher than a D-ranker the aura of my body is still showing the power of an E-ranker Evan's monarch core was not releasing any aura so anyone who will see Evan will think that he is an E-rank hunter. Evan was happy with this fact because he doesn't want to tell about his shadow monarch physique to anyone and the details of the physique it was written that this is a forbidden physique so Evan wanted to make sure that no one knew about it. After two hours he finally arrived at the academy, Evan paid the bill and exit the taxi. I am almost out of money, I will have to sell these cores or I will not even have money to buy cub noodles. Evan said with a sigh enter the academy. 
When Evan entered the academy, there were not many students because it was already nighttime and most of the students were either training in the training ground or sleeping, but there were still some students who saw Evan. He was pretty eye-catch. ING with his handsome face and tattered clothes that were covered in blood. Who is that guy? Is he also a student? One male student asked when he saw Evan. He may be a new student in the academy who forget to take extra clothes when he entered a dungeon. I think saw him somewhere before a student said when he looked at Evan, suddenly his eyes opened wide and he said, isn't he that trash Evan? When other students heard this, they all were shocked and when they all looked at his face, they were also able to recognize him because Evan is famous all over the academy for being the weakest student. What happened to him? All students were shocked seeing Evan's new appearance. Evan already expected this kind of reaction from other students, so he just ignored them and continued to walk toward his dorm room. Evan? But Evan stopped when someone called him from behind. A cold light flashed in Evan's deep black eyes when he heard the voice. Evan turned around and saw four people coming toward him. The person who just called him was a muscular man who looked like a bodybuilder and was walking in front of the other three men. All four of them were looking like third-rate villains of streets that collect protection money from people. Mike Evan muttered the name of the muscles man when he saw him. Chapter 17 It is really you? Mike said when he came near Evan. Here he goes again, he always tries to make the life of weak students hard. A student who was watching ING everything said when he saw Mike and his gang called Evan. It is his fault for being weak. If he doesn't want to get harassed by them, he should work hard and increase his power. Another student said without much care. Still, I feel bad for other students who get bullied by these bastards. Why don't you go there and help him if you feel bad about him? I would have helped him if my rank was higher than theirs. Unfortunately, all four of them are also D-rankers. I will be digging my own grave if I mess with them alone. The student said while shaking his head. If you know you can't do anything, then just shut your mouth and watch a, the show. Are you all right? What happened to you? Your clothes are all stained in blood. Mike asked Evan after coming near him. What a good actor Evan thought when he saw how Mike was showing concern for him. If it was in past, Evan would just listen to him silently without saying anything, but now that he has his monarch corps that already advanced to D rank, he can easily crush Mike and his friends without any effort. I am fine, thanks for your concern. I just went to the market to buy some stuff, but when the girls saw me, they all jumped on me like a hungry lioness. I had to go through a bloodbath to safely escape from them, that's why my clothes are stained and blood side being too handsome is really troublesome, Evan said with a sigh and made a face like he just suffered from a great injustice. Mike and the others who heard what Evan said were taken aback by Evan's response and just looked at him dumbfoundedly go through a bloodbath to escape from girls do really want us to believe on this sh asterisk t this was the only thought that came to everyone's mind. Ha ha ha. Mike came out from his day's look after hearing the laughter of the other students who were watching ing everything. A cold light passed through Mike's eyes when he looked at Evan who was staring at him calmly. He was a little confused because Evan never talked back to him in past, but just now not only Evan talked back to him, he was even looking at him without any fear. I see you have learned how to joke. Mike said with a cold smile. Joke, what are you talking about? Evan asked with a puzzled expression. He is pissing him off. One student said when he saw how Evan was provoking Mike. You piece of sh asterisk t, did you forget what happened last time when you talked back to us last time? Lucas, one of Mike's companions, said. Oh, I did not expect to see an orc here in the Hunter Academy. What the hell are security guards doing letting an orc into the academy? Evan said to Lucas when he heard him. Ha ha ha. Other students started to laugh after hearing this Lucas was two meters tall and his body was unusually muscular for a human and he really looks like an orc. You bossed asterisk D. Lucas was about to attack Evan when Mike stopped him and looked at Evan coldly. I don't know what happened to you, but if you don't want me to break your bones, you better apologize to us when I am giving you a chance. That's my line, you morons. If you don't want me to wipe out the floor along with you all, you should better apologize to me than I might consider letting you off. Evan said to Mike without bothering about his earlier warning. What happened to him? Why is he acting like this? Most of the students were confused when they saw how Evan was behaving. This is not the first time they saw Mike and his gang messing with Evan. In the past, whenever Mike and his gang harass him, he would silently do whatever they want him to do, but they were confused what had happened to him that he was behaving like this. 
Ha 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 Mike and his gang burst into laughter when they heard what Evan said you want us to apologize to you did you hit your head or something? Mike asked while laughing. Can't you four at least laugh like humans I know your appearance is similar to monsters but you guys can at least behave like humans. Evan said with an irritated voice because these muscle heads were laughing like idiots while standing in front of him. You bastard do you think I won't kill you if we are inside the academy? Mike said while grabbing the collar of Evan's tattered shirt. Evan's expressions turned cold when Mike grabbed his collar, remove your dirty hands if you don't want to become bedridden for the rest of your life. Evan said in a cold voice. When Mike heard this he wanted to laugh, but when he looked at the deep black eyes of Evan he suddenly felt an ominous feeling, he wanted to let go of Evan's collar and take a step back, but when he remembered how weak Evan is he discarded that feeling. Evan just looked at Mike coldly and when he did not let go of his collar he was about to make his move when someone said what is going on here. Mike quickly released the collar of Evan's shirt and took a step back after hearing the voice. Everyone looked in the direction from which the voice came and saw a girl walking toward Evan and Mike. So the class president finally appeared. One of the students who was watching, ING said. TCH, the show was just started to become interesting. I wanted to see what that Evan would have done after talking like this. A student said in a dissatisfied tone when he saw what happened. The girl who just appeared was the class monitor of the final year, and she is a C-plus rank hunter. Her name was Valerie. Valerie had light blue hair and deep green eyes. Her skin was as white as jade. She came near Mike and Evan and asked once again what's going on here. Nothing, we were just talking among ourselves. Mike said with a nervous tone when he saw Valerie because even if all four of them work together they will not be able to do anything to her who is already a C plus rank hunter. Mike, I think I already warned you to not harass other students. Valerie said in cold tone when she heard what Mike said. But we did not do anything you can ask Evan. Mike said and looked at Evan with threatening eyes. Chapter 18 When Evan saw how Mike was looking at him, he just sneered, but he also doesn't want to involve anyone else in his matter, so he said, yeah, these guys were just asking me about the information about some monsters since they want to enter a dungeon. These muscle heads don't pay attention in class and now asking about it to me. Valerie was taken aback by Evan's response because in past Evan never said anything against Mike and others whenever they bullied him. Although he did not say anything against them, she was still surprised that Evan at least did not back away without saying anything. There was just one simple reason why Evan never said anything about Mike and his gang because he was well aware of his situation. The Hunter Academy is not a place where you can go and complain to your instructor whenever you get bullied. As long as you don't cross the line, even instructors won't do anything. Valerie is the monitor of the class. If Evan complains about Mike to her, Mike and his gang will behave for some time, but will harass him again after some time beside Evan did not want anyone else to involve in his business that is why even now he did not tell that Mike was picking a fight with him. You guys should better pay attention in class next time, if not and you come to me once again to get information about the monster you will have to pay a price that you might not be able to afford. Evan said while patting the shoulder of Mike. Mike and his gang can only look at Evan with anger-filled eyes, but wasn't able to say anything in front of Valerie. Well, since I already gave you information about the monsters, I will be on my way. Evan said and started to walk toward his dorm room. I swear you will regret this, Mike thought, while looking at Evan who already started to walk away. I hope you won't give me chance to use my authority as a class monitor. Valerie said and she also left. The show was better than I expected. A student said when he saw the sour faces of Mike and his gang. What show I am sure that Evan dig his own grave by saying those things earlier. Do you think he will be fine after saying all of those things to these guys? Another student said. Evan did not care about what other students were thinking because he was already aware that Mike will try to mess with him again, but with his current power Evan was sure that he will have no problem in taking care of Mike and his gang. Soon Evan reached his room, he first took a long bath and cleaned himself properly. While bathing Evan was finally able to inspect his body. His body was perfectly sculptured now compared to his previous skinny build and his height also increased by around 5 centimeters. Is my body changed this much because of the Monarch Corps? I never read anyone else's body changing this much just by advancing from F rank to D rank. Evan came out from the bath and looked at himself in the mirror. My hair turned completely pitch. Black and the color of my eye pupils are also darker than before. Evan said whilst admiring himself in front of the mirror. 
After seeing himself in the mirror, Evan wore some clothes and made some noodles to eat. I will sell those cores tomorrow and will definitely go to a restaurant. Evan said while eating the noodles with a sour face. After eating noodles, Evan finally lies down on the bed and took out his phone to search about how a person can obtain a physique. Evan was still confused about how he got his shadow monarch physique so he wanted to look on the internet about it. According to information available on the internet, there are two known ways for people to have unique physiques. First, a person can born with a unique physique. The second is when a person awakens his ability like Evan awakened his ability at age of 14, they can awaken a unique physique along with their ability. There may be another way for people to obtain a unique physique, but there was no information on the internet apart from these two ways. When Evan read this and thought about these two ways, his eyes opened wide in shock and he finally realized something. The previous Evan was born with shadow physique, but he did not know about it till he awakened his ability at age of 14 because people can't see their status window before they awaken their ability. Evan was born with shadow physique, but after reading information about physiques on internet, Evan concluded that when he awakened his ability at age of 14, he also awakened another physique along with his ability. The physique he awakened with his ability was the shadow monarch physique, but since he already had shadow physique, a complicated issue occurred in his physique and he wasn't able to absorb any core other than shadow core. This also explains how he got shadow monarch physique after sacrificing his shadow physique since he had two physiques and he sacrificed one of them the other physique naturally took over the entire body of Evan, and the problem of him not being able to absorb other cores was also solved. Damn. To think I suffered this much because I had two physiques is quite absurd. Evan was lost for words after realizing this because normally there is a very low chance that a person will have a unique physique but he was suffering all this time because he had two physiques. Of course, this was all what Evan thought there may be other reasons why he got shadow monarch physique but after reading the details on the internet Evan was at least 80% sure in his guess. Forget it who cares how I get this physique, I just have to think about how I can get more cores to improve the rank of my prime core, I want to advance my prime core to D rank before I absorb more energy through monarch core. I don't want to break my prime core like last time again. Evan said while putting away his phone. I don't want to enter a dungeon currently, I should take a mission from the mission hall of the academy tomorrow, Evan thought and closed his eyes he was pretty tired after all the things that happened to him today. Chapter 19 the next day after breakfast Evan came out from the boys' dormitory and went towards the mission hall. The mission hall is the place where students of the Hunter Academy can take different types of missions and earn mission points. There are many types of missions available in the mission hall of the Academy. Most of these missions are issued by normal people who are not hunters. These missions are not very dangerous because most of the missions are for the purpose of training the students and teach them. Evan came before a two-story building there were many students who were entering and exiting the building. Evan went inside the building and saw many receptions, students were talking with the receptionist and choosing the most suitable mission for them. Evan also went towards a male receptionist, when Evan came near the receptionist he asked how can I help you? Is there any D rank mission? Evan asked the receptionist after coming near him. Can you show me your hunter card provided by the academy? The receptionist asked because he can show him the mission only after confirming his rank. Evan gave his hunter card to the receptionist but when the receptionist saw Evan was an F-rank hunter he looked at Evan weirdly and said sorry but with your current rank I can't show you D-rank missions. It will be very dangerous for you and even the person who issued the mission may face problems because of this. I understand but I already advanced to E-rank I just didn't update my card because I was busy and according to the rules I can accept missions that are one rank higher than me right Evan said calmly when he heard what the receptionist said. Can you please place your hand on this orb so I can confirm your rank? The receptionist took out a white orb size of a football and placed it in front of Evan. Evan was already aware about this orb. This orb can show your rank when you place your hand on it. Evan was not sure how it worked, but according to the book, the orb will react to the energy of his prime core and will show its current rank. Evan placed his hand on the ranking orb and he felt a strange energy entering his body through the orb. The energy went towards his prime core and after rotating around his prime core, the energy once again returned to the orb. When the energy returned back the orb lit up and showed E word in green color. When the receptionist saw this he put away the orb and said alright I can show you the D rank missions please wait a moment. 
The receptionist took out some papers, and after filtering out the D-Rank missions, which were suitable for Evan, he gave him some papers. Evan took the papers and looked at the missions. Slash mission. Bring the five teeth of a fire saber tooth tiger. Reward 15 mission points. Slash mission. Kill the members of the Hawk Bandit group. Reward 15 mission points. Slash mission. Collect five stalks of moan grass from the night forest. Reward 20 mission points. Slash mission. Kill goblins near the stellar region. Reward 15 mission points. Slash mission. Bring. There were many missions and most of the missions were given a reward of 15 mission points. Evan can use these mission points to buy weapons, potions, cores, and many more things from the academy. The rank 2 invisibility potion that Evan bought with 30,000 credits can be bought with 50 mission points. Evan looked at many missions but did not find any mission to his liking but suddenly Evan saw a mission and stopped. Slash mission. Safely transport the goods to Oklahoma City from a straight city. Reward 20 mission points. Oklahoma City, if I am not wrong you have to go through wild region to reach there. I will have to face many monsters who live in the wilderness if I choose this mission Evan thought when he read about the details of the mission. Evan thought about some time and finally chooses this mission. I would like to accept this mission. Evan said while giving the paper to the receptionist. Are you sure although this is a D-rank mission the difficulty is very high? There are many D-Rank monsters in the wild region. The receptionist said when he saw which mission Evan selected. Yes, I am sure can you give the details of this mission. The receptionist did not say anything after hearing Evan and looked at his computer for the details of the mission. After looking at the details of the mission, the receptionist printed the details and gave it to Evan. Evan looked at the details and raised an eyebrow. There will be three more hunters aside from me and the mission will start tomorrow. Evan did not expect that there will be more hunters aside from him, but when he thought about it carefully, he realized that it is only natural that there will be more hunters because in the wild region there are many monsters and one hunter can't take care of everything alone unless he is a very high rank hunter. Let's go to market for buying some things that will help me in this mission, Evan thought, and after thanking the receptionist, he left the mission hall. Evan did not go back to his room instead, he left the academy, and after taking a taxi he came to the city plaza once again where he bought the invisibility potion last time. Evan came here to sell the cores that he saved after killing the monsters in the Shadow Kingdom dungeon. Evan went inside the plaza and after taking the lift went to the 10th floor where people sell and buy cores. Chapter 20 Evan camps to the 10th floor of the plaza and unlike the 7th floor where potions are being sold, there were very few people on this floor because rarely anyone sell monster cores. Evan went towards one of the receptionists. When the receptionist saw Evan he asked him politely how can I help you? Evan took out 4 shadow cores and said I want to sell these shadow cores. The receptionist's eyes lit up when he saw 4 shadow cores. Sure, we can offer you 30,000 credits for each shadow core. Before coming here, Evan already checked the price of the cores on the internet and he was satisfied with the price that the receptionist offered so he sold the cores and received 120,000 credits. After selling the cores, Evan went to the 7th floor and bought some healing and mana potions because there is a high chance that he can get injured during his mission. After buying some potions, Evan left the plaza and went to buy some food items and other things for travel. When he was done with everything it was already evening, I should eat in a restaurant today since I will be going on a mission tomorrow. Evan went to one of the best restaurants in a straight city. After eating, Evan went back to the academy to rest early since tomorrow he will be leaving for Oklahoma City. The next day, Evan took a taxi and went towards the city gate where he will meet with the other three hunters and the merchant who issued the mission. Evan never left a straight city so he doesn't know the exact situation outside the city but according to information he gathered on the internet leaving a city is pretty dangerous because there are many monsters outside the cities. In Aurora world, most of the cities are protected by a barrier that prevents any monsters to come near them but when someone leaves the city they lose the protection of this barrier and have to protect themselves against the monster with their own power. Most of the merchants who have to travel from one city to another to sell their goods issue missions and hunter associations to hire some hunters for their protection. The hunter association work with the academy and provide some low danger mission to students for training purposes. 
Evan was more concerned about the other hunters who will join him in this mission. He knew that these hunters will be from the Hunter Association and will be pretty powerful. It should be fine according to the details of the missions, all three of them will also be deer ink hunters. Even if something happened, I should be able to take care of them, although they all have to work together and transport the goods to the Oklahoma City safely. Evan was well aware that humans are more dangerous than the monsters in this world. Soon Evan arrived at the city gate where he was supposed to meet with the other hunters and the merchant. Evan saw some vehicles at the city gate. These vehicles were like a van, but most of them were 5 to 10 meters long. All of these vans are created by using science and magic. The vans are powered by monster cores, and there are even barriers that protect the van from monsters. Let's see where is van number Co-90. After reaching its city gate, Evan looked around for the van he has to protect. After five minutes, Evan finally found the van number Co-90. This van was 10 meters long and was made from black steel-like metal. There were some weapons installed in the van, and it looks like a future vehicle if compared to the vehicles of modern Earth. Evan saw a middle-aged man was standing near the van, the man probably Henry who issued the mission, Evan thought, when he saw a middle-aged man dressed in a business suit. Hi, are you Evan? The middle-aged man asked when he saw Evan coming towards him. Yes, I am. Can you show me your hunter card? Evan showed Henry his hunter card, which was showing he is an E-rank hunter. The receptionist in the mission hall updated his rank yesterday when he went to pick the mission. After checking Evan's card, he nodded, you are the first to arrive, others should be here soon. It will take us two days to reach Oklahoma City, right? Evan asked Henry while waiting for others' hunters to arrive. Yes, is this your first time going out of the city? Henry asked Evan. Yeah, I never left the Estrate City, it will be my first time going out of the city. You don't have to worry too much, most of the high rank monsters are cleared by hunter associations every month. We will not face any monster who is higher than D rank during our journey. Henry said when he heard Evan never left the city. After five minutes, Evan saw two men coming towards them. Both of them were D rank hunters, so these are the hunters from Association. Evan looked at the hunters carefully. Both of them were around 30 years old and looks quite experienced. Hello, I am George and he is Dean, said one of the hunters when they came near Henry. Hello, I am Henry. Can you guys show your hunter card? Here both George and Dean showed their hunter card to Henry when he confirmed their identity he nodded all right we will leave as soon as the last hunter arrives oh looks like he is here. Ethan looked at the last hunter who was coming towards them and was surprised because the last hunter who came was also the hunter from the academy. James Evan remembered the name of this hunter because just like Evan he is also an orphan and Mike and his gang often try to bully him. James is not a sociable person and doesn't talk to anyone in the academy so Evan doesn't know much about him. Are you James? Henry asked when James arrived near them. James nodded and handed his hunter card to Henry. After checking his hunter card, Henry nodded and said now that everyone is here we should leave. First I am Henry, your mission is to protect me and my cargo till we reach Oklahoma City and came back to a straight city. We will be taking the route that is cleared by the Hunter Association every month so we will not meet any monster who is higher than deer rank. Any questions? Nobody asked anything when Henry saw this he nodded, okay let's depart then. The van was divided into three parts Henry went to the first part where the driver of the van was sitting this all time. In the second part, the goods that Evan and the hunters have to protect were placed and the third part was the largest where all four hunters went to sit. After everyone sat down, the driver started the van and left a straight city. Chapter 21 Since we will be working with each other till this mission end, let's introduce ourselves. I am Georgia Deer Inc. Hunter. One of the hunters who came from the association said, I am Dean, I am also a D Rank Hunter. James D Rank. James said with a flat voice, I am Evan an E Rank Hunter. Evan said without much interest, Everyone was surprised after hearing Evan's rank, but the most surprised person was obviously James because everyone in the academy knows that Evan is an F-rank hunter. You are quite brave to take a mission like this when you are just an E-rank hunter. Dean said after hearing Evan's rank. You can say that. Evan replied to Dean with a light smile. You are from the academy, right? You must be quite famous in the academy with this kind of face. George said with a jealous voice when he saw the handsome face of Evan. When Evan heard this his eyes twitch, Ed, yeah, I am pretty famous in the academy. 
Evans said because everyone in the academy knows about him after all he got the title of the weakest hunter in the academy. So, what do we have to do this is my first time doing a mission like this. I am sure with the speed of the van and the emergency barrier Henry can safely reach Oklahoma without our help. Evan asked with a confused voice because at first, he thought that the speed of the van will be very slow and they will have to protect it against monsters, but looking at the speed of van Evan was sure that even a rank D monster will have a hard time catch. ING up with the van. Oh it's your mission well this senior will give a brief summary then. Dean said with an old man like expression. It will take us two days to reach our destination and they can't drive continuously for two days. They will eventually stop for taking rest and at that time there is a high chance that the monsters will attack them. Monster is one thing, but there are also bandits who rob merchants whenever they get any chance. These bandits are more dangerous than monsters because unlike monsters they can use tools that can negate the barrier and other functions of this van. Evan was surprised and at the same time, a bit concerned that they might have to face a bandit who is higher than D rank, but after hearing the next words of Dean, Evan relaxed. Although these bandits are dangerous, you will not find anyone who is higher than D rank since the association clears these areas every month. And it's not impossible for monsters to catch, up with us even when we are going at pretty fast speed there are some monsters like Sky Eagle and Forest Tigers who can easily catch, up to us with their speed. George added when Dean finished his explanation. Evan nodded and understood what they have to do during the mission. Everyone stopped talking after this, George and Dean closed their eyes and did not say anything. James was sitting like a mute he did not say anything after introducing himself to George and Dean. Evan was looking outside from the window with a bored look but suddenly Evan saw someone was following them. Evan looked carefully and saw five monsters were chasing the van, their speed was also quite fast and they looked like hyenas. All five monsters were two meters tall and their fur was light brown. There are five monsters who are chasing us. Evan said while looking outside the window. Dean opened his eye and looked outside these are wild hyenas, although they are fast they will not be able to catch us. Evan nodded when he heard this because he can also see that the speed up hyenas was getting slow as time passes because unlike Van that runs with the help of cores the monsters were spending their stamina to catch them. If you are bored you can look outside using that. Evan heard George's voice who was pointing his finger towards the roof of the van. When Evan looked at the roof of the van he saw a slider there, Evan stood up and pushed the slider forward and brought his head outside the roof of the van. The barrier of the van was currently deactivated to save energy, only when the monster came near the van did they activate the barrier. Evan felt the cold wind of the morning when he brought his head outside the van the air is quite fresh here Evan said while enjoying the cold wind. Evan was enjoying the view when he suddenly saw another group of hyenas start to chase after them. When Evan saw this he first looked at James and the other hunters to confirm that they were not looking outside. When he confirmed they were not looking outside a smile appeared on Evan's face since I am getting bored I should practice with Shadow Bullet. Evan pointed his finger towards one of the hyenas who was chasing after them Shadow Bullet. A pitch, black small bullet formed before the pointed finger of Evan and shot toward one of the hyenas at lightning speed. Swish. The bullet arrived before the hyena in a blink of an eye and pierced through its forehead but Evan did not use much mana in the bullet so it wasn't able to pierce too deep but the running hyena still dropped to the ground when the bullet struck it. Howl. The blinding effect of shadow bullet activated. Your target is blinded for two seconds. Evan was surprised when even the blinding effect of his shadow bullet activated. Shadow bullet. You can shoot a bullet made of shadow by using mana the power of the bullet depends on how much mana you use to cast it, there is a 5% chance that the defender will become blind for 2 seconds after being hit by shadow bullet. The hyena howled in pain when the bullet struck it, because of the loud howl George and others quickly looked outside. What happened? Dean asked while looking at Evan since he was the only one who was looking outside. Nothing, that hyena suddenly fall while running and crashed against a rock. Evan replied without looking at them. When Dean and the others heard this they all stopped looking outside and closed their eyes once again. I completely forget that they will definitely make a loud sound after getting hurt Evan said while sighing in relief. Evan did not use his shadow bullet again and after six hours of continuous travel the driver finally stopped the van to take some rest. Chapter 22 Let's take a short break here. 
Henry said to Evan and the other hunters after stopping the van. Evan and I will stay here to protect the Henry and the cargo you too should scout our surroundings. George said to James and Dean after coming out from the van. All right. Dean said and went to scout their surroundings along with James. What kind of monsters can attack us here? Evan asked while guarding the cargo. There are many types of monsters that you can encounter here but most of them will be around E-Rank, and if I am not wrong, there is a pond not so far away from here. So there is a high possibility that we can encounter water-type monsters here. George said while looking at their surroundings carefully. James and Dean returned after 20 minutes we scouted 200 meters around us. There were just some E-Rank monsters we took care of them without any problems. Dean said after coming back. It is good, if nothing goes wrong we should be able to leave from here without facing any monster. George said after hearing Dean. Hey, guys lunch is ready, come here. Evan and others heard Henry's voice who was eating a steak cooked by the driver of the van. Henry and he set up a small barbecue stand and were grilling some meat on it. Are they here for picnic? Evan thought with a speechless expression when he saw Henry and his driver doing a barbecue in this wilderness. You two go and eat first we will keep watcha, ing, till you finish. George said to James and Dean since they were just come back after scouting their surroundings. Evan and George kept watcha, ing, their surroundings for monsters until Dean and James were came back after eating. Is transportation missions are supposed to be this easy? Evan asked while eating. Nope, most of the time you will have to face monsters whenever you stop in the wilderness. I am surprised that no monster comes to bother us even though we are here for more than one hour. George said while eating a large chunk of meat. Howl. 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 Looks like I jinxed it. George said with a speechless look. Just as George finished speaking everyone heard howls of wolves. Get ready to fight a pack of wolves is coming towards us they will be here in 20 seconds. Dean shouted after hearing the howls. You guys go inside the van, we will take care of these monsters. George said to Henry and the driver who quickly already rushed towards the van after hearing the howl's wolf. How many are there, Dean? George asked after he and Evan came back near the van along with Dean and James. If I am not wrong, there should be three wolves. Dean said while holding his sword. Is this is his ability? Evan thought to himself when Dean was able to tell how many wolves will be attacking them. You two can take care of one wolf, George said to Evan and James Dean, and I will take out the other two. Evan and James nodded and did not say anything, even if there are more than three, it should be no problem for me to take care of them, Evan thought, while looking in the direction from which they heard the howl. After 20 seconds, Evan finally saw three wolves coming towards them with rapid speed. The wolves were two meters tall and their fur was completely green. All three wolves were looking at them with their deep yellow eyes, which were filled with blood lust. Be careful while fighting against them, they are wind wolves, and their agility and reaction speed is quite fast, if you gave them even a single opportunity they will not miss it. Dean said to everyone after seeing the wolves. After seeing the wolves Evan extended his hand forward and a sword shot out from his shadow that he caught without any problem. What the hell was that? George who was standing near Evan asked when suddenly a sword came out from the ground. Just one of my skills. Evan replied while looking at the sword. Dude at least tell me before if you are going to do something like this, I thought there are bandits who attacked us by taking advantage of the situation. George said while shaking his head, anyone will be scared if a sword suddenly came out from the ground. James was holding a spear which was surrounded in purple lightning, George was using a long sword and Dean was the only one who was barehanded. Let's kill these bastards so I can eat my lunch, George said, and was about to charge towards the wolves when he heard haste. Swish. With a swift motion, Evan who was standing beside him disappeared, and when he looked towards the three wolves, George saw Evan suddenly appear one of the wolves and slashed his sword at the neck of the wolf. Evan's sword was shining in light blue color, which means he was using mana to increase the power of his attack. The speed of Evan was too fast when he slashed the sword, so George and others were not able to see his slash clearly, they just saw Evan moving his hand a little while holding the sword. Thud. The next second the eyes of James and others popped out from their sockets when they saw the head of the wolf who was standing in front of Evan was severed cleanly and it dropped to the ground lifelessly. 
the entire area became dead silent when everyone saw what just happened. What the hell I just saw? Dean asked with a dumbfounded voice when he saw how a D-rank monster was killed with just a single strike and the shocking thing was that since Evan used mana while killing the wolf they all can tell from his aura that he is still an E-rank hunter. Chapter 23 What the hell happened Evan thought when he saw how easily he killed a D-rank monster is a D-rank monster supposed to be this weak Evan was shocked that he was able to sever the head of a D-rank beast with a normal sword. Evan looked at the sword in his hand which was still shining in blue light because of his mana and noticed a very thin black layer along with the blue layer of mana. The black layer was very thin Evan was sure that if his eyesight did not improve after he got Monarch Core he would not have noticed this black layer. Is my attack was this powerful because of this black energy that is mixed in my mana Evan thought when he saw the thin black layer. Howl. Be careful. Evan came out from his dazed state after hearing the shout of Dean. When Evan looked at the other two wolves he saw one of them was already in front of him and was slashing at his neck with its front claw. Evan was still using haste skill so he saw everything in slow motion, he lifted his sword and parried the claw of the wolf with his sword. Evan was pushed back a little because of the running momentum of the wolf. Before the wolf can regain its balance after its failed attack Evan slashed his sword at the shoulder blade of the wolf. Howl. The wolf howled in pain when its shoulder was almost severed from the rest of its body a fountain of blood erupted from the wounded shoulder of the wolf. Watcha, out. Evan was about to attack the wolf once again when he heard George shout and without hesitation, he jumped sideways. Just as Evan jumped sideways a green blade passed by his previous location and hit a tree that was not so far away from him. The tree was served in two when the blade hit it. Cold sweat appeared on Evan's back when he saw this I should pay more attention to my surroundings while fighting Evan thought when he was almost done by because of ignoring the second wolf. Just what the hell is going on from his aura I can clearly feel this guy is an E-rank hunter so how can he fight against these D-rank monsters like this? Dean said with a shock filled voice. Hey you guys are from the same academy do you know what is going on? George asked James who was looking at Evan with his mouth wide open. George and Dean don't know Evan but James was well aware that Evan is the weakest student in the academy and everyone called him trash. Just what happened to this guy James asked himself when he saw Evan taking care of D-rank monsters like he was playing with them. Just a few days ago I saw how Mike and some other students were bullying him, was he pretending all this time? Hey, are you listening? James comes out from his thoughts after hearing Dean's voice. I never talked to him in the academy so I don't know about him. James did not tell them about Evan since he was also not sure what was happening here. After evading the wind blade Evan looked at the wolf who attacked him and charged toward it with an agility that was much faster than a deer ink hunter. Since the wind wolf was an agility based monster it was somehow able to see Evan when he appeared before it, the wolf used its front claw and smashed it at Evan like a hammer but instead of dodging the claw, Evan used his sword to clash with the claw of wolf. Slash When Evan's sword which was covered in a blue layer of mana clashed with the wolf's claw it cut it in two like a hot knife cutting the butter. Howl the wolf howled in pain and even before it can do anything Evan once again slashed his sword at the neck of the wolf. Evan wasn't able to sever the neck of the wolf with a single attack this time but he once again slashed and severed the head of the wolf. After killing it Evan looked at the reaming wolf who was trying to stand up but failed miserably because its shoulder was almost severed from Evan's earlier attack. Evan walked towards the wolf calmly and killed it with a single slash. James and others looked at Evan like they were looking at a monster. Evan ignored them and started to look for cores, unfortunately, Evan got only one core from three wolves. Evan dropped the core and his sword on the ground and both things suddenly disappeared after touching the ground. Evan put them inside his shadow storage. Evan was not thinking about sharing his cores with anyone because in the details of the mission it was written that you can keep the cores of the monsters that you hunted on your own. After taking care of everything Evan calmly walked toward George and the others. Who are you? Dean asked Evan when he came near them. Didn't I already tell you I am an E-rank hunter Evan? E rank my ass even a D rank hunter can't kill those monsters like this. George said while looking at Evan. I just have some skills that improve my fighting power for some time. Evan said without explaining much. Oh, what kind of skill can improve your power by two ranks? Dean asked in a sarcastic voice. 
I don't think I have any reason to tell you guys about my skills. Evan said with an irritated voice because he was starting to feel irritated by their questions. Yeah, you don't have to tell us about your skills, but since we are going to work as a team, you should at least inform us that you can easily face a Deering monster. Dean did not back away and continued to say, Oh, if an earring hunter came before you and say, Hey, I can kill Deering monsters easily, will you believe him? Evan said while rolling his eyes. When Dean heard this, he wanted to say something, but nothing came out of his mouth because he knew that he would never believe in that person. Sigh, I am sorry I overreacted. Dean said after hearing what Evan said. Don't worry, I can understand, and I have no intention of harming you guys in any way. Evan said while going towards the barbecue table where he was eating his lunch. James looked at Evan while lost in his own thoughts. Meanwhile, George and Dean were also thinking about something. Evan did not care about them because he never thought about hiding his power from the beginning. His main purpose to come on this mission was to take a break after two years and collect some cores, if possible. If he hides his power how he will be able to collect some cores, I hope I will be able to get enough cores to advance my prime to E plus rank Evan thought while eating a steak. Chapter 24 I never saw an E-rank hunter as powerful as you. Henry said to Evan, he already came out from the van along with his driver after Evan took care of the monsters. Thanks. Evan said without much interest. Only Henry was talking with Evan. Dean and George, who were previously talking to Evan casually, now looking at him warily. Evan also understands their situation. If he was in their place, he would also feel suspicious if someone who is an E-rank killed three D-rank monsters without breaking a sweat. But currently, Evan could not care less about them because he was thinking about the thin black layer that appeared on his sword earlier. Just what was that black energy, the power of my attack increased too much because of that Evan already checked his status window and there was no information about that black energy. Is this also related to my monarch core Evan thought while eating an apple? Forget it, there are too many things that I don't know about this monarch core, I will eventually figure out everything Evan thought and stop thinking about that black energy. When will we leave from here? Evan asked Henry. Let's rest for one more hour before leaving. All right. Evan nodded and continued to guard their surroundings. Evan was feeling quite awkward because after seeing his strength, other hunters were looking at him warily. I bet they must be thinking I was hiding my strength to backstab them later and rob their belongings, Evan thought, while rubbing his temples. All right, let's go. We still have to cover quite a distance. Henry shouted while his driver packed the barbecue and other equipments. After five minutes, everyone sat down in the van and it started moving toward Oklahoma City. Look, I know why you guys are being suspicious and looking at me like this, but I have no intentions of harming you, so stop looking at me like you are looking at your lifelong enemy. Evan said to others after the van started to move once again. Dean and George were hesitating a bit after hearing Evan. When Evan saw this, he just sighed and did not say anything. Although I did not talk to him in the academy, I can say that he is a good person, so you should stop being suspicious of him or we might get in danger while facing other monsters. Suddenly, everyone heard James's voice who was sitting with his eyes closed. When George and Dean heard this, they looked at each other and nodded, all right, we will trust you, but I hope you won't do anything suspicious. Don't worry, I just wanted to take a break from the academy and collect some cores. I don't have any other motive to come here. Collect some cores. With your strength, you can easily collect cores from a D-rank dungeon. Dean said when he heard Evan. My situation is a bit complicated, so don't mind me. Evan said without explaining much after all he can't say that two days ago he was just an F-rank hunter who can't even increase his power because of his physique. James heard everything quietly but did not say anything. By the way, I saw you using two skills when you were fighting against those monsters. Did you get a skill book in the past after clearing a dungeon or you awakened two skills at the same time? George asked curiously to change the atmosphere. Dean and James also looked at Evan curiously because it is very rare for people to have more than one skill. You can get a skill book as a reward after clearing a dungeon, but it is extremely rare and can be sold for thousands of credits depending on what kind of skill you are selling. Dean and George, who are normal hunters, can't even imagine buying a skill book. Yeah, I got lucky last time when I cleared a dungeon and received a skill book. Evan said with a light smile there is no way he is going to tell anyone he can get skills just by absorbing the energy of the cores. 
He knew his life will be in danger if other people know about his physique which can basically turn the evolving system of Aurora's world upside down. That's why Evan did not use his shadow bullet skill during the fight since it will be suspicious if he used too many skills. I also cleared some dungeons with my friends but we never received a skill book. Dean said in an envious tone after hearing Evan. Both Dean and George believed on Evan that he got his skill from the dungeon, only James was looking at him suspiciously because just like everyone in the academy he also knew that Evan never went into a dungeon with anyone. But even if he was suspicious he can't do anything. The rest of the day passed without any problems and soon the sun was about to set. Let's make a camp here since the sun is about to set. Everyone hear Henry's voice and no one objected because it will be quite hard to make a camp if the sun set down. The van stopped moving and everyone came out from it. You two guard here, Evan, and I will check our surroundings. George said to Dean and James after coming out from the van. Be careful, it will be dangerous since it already started to get dark. George said to Evan seriously. Evan nodded after hearing this, but he was not bothered by this because even in the darkness he was able to see clearly thanks to his monarch core, and he even felt like he can see better during the night time. Truly a monarch physique Evan thought when he saw how he was able to see in low light without any problems. Evan and George were looking around their surroundings they were around 100 meters away from each other so they can cover more area and help each other if something happens. Evan was holding his sword in his hand and was looking at his surroundings carefully, although he was strong he knew he will be done for if he become arrogant and did not pay attention to his surroundings. Suddenly, Evan heard the sound of someone coming towards him and looked at his right side. Just as Evan looked at his right side, a rabbit jumped out from the bushes. The rabbit looks normal in size, but what made it different from normal rabbits was the horn that was coming out from its head. A horned rabbit Evan was surprised when he saw this rabbit because they are pretty rare. According to what Evan read on internet, the meat of horned rabbits is quite delicious, but it is very hard to catch them because they are experts in escaping. Evan quickly pointed his finger toward the horned rabbit and shot a shadow bullet toward it. Since the rabbit was just an earring monster, it wasn't able to dodge the bullet and died on the spot when the bullet pierced through its brain. Looks like I will finally be able to taste how the horned rabbit tastes like. Evan said and picked up the horned rabbit. Chapter 25 What is that? George asked Evan when he saw Evan was holding something in his hand. Horned rabbit, I heard they taste great. Evan said while handing the rabbit to George. Yeah, I also heard they taste great, but why are you giving me this? I don't know how to cook. Evan said while walking back towards James and Dean who were guarding the van and Henry. Do I look like a chef, George thought while following Evan. George gave the rabbit to the driver who was in charge of cooking their food. When the driver saw the horned rabbit he was ecstatic because he also never ate the horned rabbit. Since there were six people the driver made a rabbit stew. When Evan tasted the stew he really wanted to cry from happiness it's a hundred times no thousand times better than cup noodles although it's a shame after eating cup noodles for two years Evan's food standards were really low and he can only compare other food items with the cup noodles. I will keep the first watcha, you guys can take some rest. Evan said after everyone ate their dinner. All right I will take a shift with you. George said thus Dean and James went back into the van to sleep. The van was quite big and Henry and his driver were also sleeping in the van. They just made a campfire but did not set up a camp because it is quite dangerous for Henry and his driver to sleep outside in case they have to face a monster attack at night and they were not able to go back in the van at right time. Because it was night George was having problems seeing clearly, although deer ink hunters have better eyesight than normal humans and can see in the dark somewhat it was still difficult for George to see his surroundings clearly. The only source of light around them was the campfire that was burning not so far away from their van. Evan was looking at his surroundings with a bored look. Since he can see in darkness clearly he was not bothered by the darkness. Evan and George continued to stand guard and paid full attention to their surroundings after four hours Dean and James came out of the van. You guys can go now we will stand guard. Dean said while stretch ing his body. Evan went into the van and lay down while covering himself in a blanket that he took out from his storage ring. Evan was quite tired after all the work he did so he fall asleep just after laying down. Wake up we are under attack. Evan wasn't able to sleep for long because just after one hour he fall asleep he heard the shout of Dean. 
George also woke up along with Henry and his driver, Evan and George quickly came out from the van. When Evan came out from the van, he did not see any monster nearby. Dude, why are you shouting? I can't see any monster here. They will be here soon. Dean said with a grave voice. When Evan heard this, he remembered how Dean was able to sense the wolves earlier even before they arrived near them. How many are there? George asked seriously when he heard the grave voice of Dean. I don't know, but there are at least 20. What? George was shocked when he heard the number of monsters. Are you sure? George asked once again to confirm he heard that right. Dean didn't say anything and just look in front of them. Others also looked in direction Dean was looking. Evan don't know if Dean was able to see in darkness, but just as he looked in front of them, he saw a horde of monsters running toward them. The monsters were 100 meters away from them when Evan noticed them. When Evan saw the monsters, he was taken aback for a moment, but then he shook his head and said, Don't worry, all of these monsters are just E-rank. Dean and others who were looking in front of them seriously were taken aback by Evan's words, and before they can ask anything, the horde of monsters came before them and others were also able to see all monsters were just E-rank. I almost got a heart attack earlier when you said there were 20 monsters, George said, while signing in relief, let's take care of them quickly. George said and dashed towards the incoming monster horde with his long sword in his hand. James also took action and charged toward monsters with his spear that was covered in purple lighting. Evan and Dean stayed behind to protect the van from any monsters. George came before a horse who was rushing towards them and swung his long sword at the horse without using mana. The muscles of George bulged out and like a hot knife passing through the butter, he cut the horse in two parts with a single slash. Damn. That sword must be quite expensive, Evan thought with an envious look when he looked at the long sword of George. Evan looked at the shabby sword in his hand that he sto underscore I mean took from the training ground of the academy, and his eyes twitch a, Ed, I will buy a good weapon after earning some money. Crackle. Evan heard the sound of lighting and looked at James who just stabbed a panda type monster, just as James stabbed the panda with his spear, it released thunder arcs and chared the panda like a coal. Is his skill related to thunder or that spear is special? Evan wondered when he saw the thunder arc around James and his spear. Suddenly a tiger-like beast jumped above George and came running towards in Evan's direction. When Evan saw this he moved forward and with his superior agility, he was able to kill the tiger with a swift motion. It's strange. Evan heard Dean mumbling to himself. What is strange? Evan asked him after killing the tiger. I am not sure, but I felt like these monsters are running away from someone. Why are you saying this? Evan asked while raising an eyebrow. I am working as a hunter for more than five years, but I never saw so many different types of monsters attacking someone in a group. I mean, I have fought against a larger monster horde than this, but all of those monsters were the same type. But here all of these monsters are of different types. There is tiger, horse, bear it is like instead of attacking us they are running away from someone. When Evan heard this he also looked at the monster horde seriously and noticed that even though George and Dean were killing monsters no one was attacking them. All monsters were trying to get past them like they were afraid of something and wanted to run away from here as soon as possible. Suddenly Dean's face changed and he said I can feel two more presences that are coming towards us. You guys stop attacking Evan quickly shouted towards James and George after hearing what Dean just said they are running away from someone they are not here to attack us don't waste your strength while fighting against them. George and James did not understand what Evan was trying to say but they still stopped attacking and backed away from the monsters. The monsters did not attack Evan and the others and just run past them like something was chasing them. What the hell is going on? George asked when he saw all monsters were running away from them. Two more presences are coming towards us, I am not sure, but if I am not wrong these all monsters are running away from these two presences that are coming towards us. Dean said with a grave voice. If all of these E-rank monsters are running away from them they are at least D-rank. James who did not speak this entire time said in a serious voice. I just hope they are not C-rank monsters Evan thought while getting ready to fight. Chapter 26 Soon Evan and others were able to hear the sound of heavy footsteps that were approaching them. Ethan focused on the direction from which all monsters came. After 10 seconds Evan finally saw two humanoid figures coming towards them. 
They were still 100 meters away from them so others were not able to see them. They were only able to hear the sound of footsteps. Evan was the only one who was able to see them clearly. Evan saw the two, three meters tall humanoid monsters with long horns coming out from their head dark black skin and one deep red eye at the center of their face coming towards them. At first, Evan did not recognize the monster, but when he finally identified the monster, his eyes opened wide, what the hell, how can black ogres can be here? When others heard what Evan said, they looked at him with shocked faces, and before they can ask anything, the two black ogres arrived near them. When others saw the hideous-looking three meters tall monsters, their face turned pale white, no wonder those monsters were running away like that. Dean said after regaining his composure everyone here was an experienced hunter except Evan so they quickly came out from their shock state. It's good these black ogres are still D plus rank. George said while holding his longsword tightly. Even if they are D plus rank it will be very hard for us to kill them. James said even he was looking at the black ogres with a serious face. Black ogres are one of the most dangerous monsters. It was because of their abnormal skills and innate ability. Every black ogre possesses the innate ability called devouring. With the help of this ability, they can devour any life forms and increase their power. Unlike humans who need cores to improve their power, black ogres can devour any life forms and increase their strength. The reason other monsters were running away from these ogres was also because of this ability. If you get caught by these black ogres, you will receive a very painful and slow death where you will be eaten alive by these monsters. Although these black ogres are still D plus rank, even C rank hunters struggle when they fight against this monster because its defense is very high, on top of that these monsters possess skill regeneration, so even if you injure them they will quickly heal because of this skill. If this was any other monster Evan and others will not be this worried, but the black ogre is a completely different matter. When Evan saw the black ogre he was not sure about defeating them because of their abnormal defense and regeneration skill. But Evan was at least sure that his life will not be in danger because the agility of black ogres are very low so he can always run away from here if he wasn't able to kill them. I will take care of one of them, you guys took out another one. Evan said to George and the others. No one objected to what Evan said because they already saw how Evan was able to kill three D-rank monsters all by himself earlier. Evan ran a little far away from the van and threw a stone towards one of the black ogres. When the stone hit the ogre it looked in Evan's direction and walked towards him. The second ogre did not go towards Evan and continued to go towards George and others. Alright, I hope this shabby sword will be able to pass through the tough defense of this black ogre Evan thought while holding his sword that was covered in light blue mana. Corlek the black ogre made a strange sound when it came near Evan sorry but I didn't learn the ogre language in the academy. Evan said while charging toward the black ogre. The ogre was three meters tall so Evan looked like a child who was running towards an adult. When the black ogre saw Evan coming towards it, it lifted its hand and tried to crush Evan while using its hand like a hammer. Evan jumped up and dodged the attack of the ogre while slashing at its arm with his sword. Because of its low agility, the ogre wasn't able to defend itself and was struck by the sword. Ka! The ogre screamed in pain when a deep wound appeared on its arm. Evan was shocked when he saw the wound because earlier when he fought against the wolves he was able to behead them with a single slash. And here he wasn't even able to cut off the arm of ogre as expected its defense is in a completely different league compared to other monsters. Crick! The ogre shouted and suddenly the deep wound on its arm started to heal at incredible speed. Damn. Its regeneration skill will be a pain in the A asterisk S Evan cursed when he saw how the wound of the ogre started to heal. Suddenly the eye of the ogre lit up and Evan felt a sense of crisis. Without hesitation, Evan backed away from the ogre and activated his haste skill to increase his agility even more. Just as Evan backed away a deep red laser-like beam shot out from the eye of the ogre, Evan quickly jumped sideways to dodge the beam and saw how the beam penetrated many trees. If I didn't back away on time and used haste skill, I would have been hit by that beam Evan thought while gulping down his saliva. After using the beam, the ogre closed its eye for a moment. When Evan saw this, he quickly charged toward the ogre and arrived near its right leg in a blink of an eye. Evan slashed at the right leg of the ogre with his sword. Swish! Dark black blood spurted out from the leg of the ogre where Evan just slashed, but he did not stop their shadow bullet. Evan used a shadow bullet at the same place where he just slashed with his sword. Slash! Aye! 
The bullet pierced deep inside the leg of the ogre and a fountain of black blood came out from its leg. Ka. The ogre screamed in pain when the shadow bullet pierced deep inside its leg. Evan was about to attack the ogre once again when his body suddenly stopped moving and even before he can do anything the ogre punched him in the chest. Evan flew backward like a broken kite and crashed against a tree. Evan coughed out mouth full of blood after crashing against the tree. What the hell happened Evan tried to stand up while ignoring the pain that he was feeling in his chest area. The bones of his ribcage were almost fractured because of the ogre punch. Why my body suddenly stopped moving Evan thought and looked at the ogre with a painful expression on his face. When Evan looked at the ogre he saw its eye which was red some time ago was now pitch black and the damage that he did earlier to its leg was also healing at rapid speed. Chapter 27 I always wanted to fight against a black ogre. George shouted while slashing at the chest of the ogre. The muscles of George were bulging out and a crimson aura was coming out from his body. His long sword was releasing ice energy that freezed the surrounding air around it. Ka. The ogre screamed in pain when a deep wound appeared on its chest and surprisingly an icy layer appeared around the wound that was slowing down its healing. You were shocked when you saw the black ogre earlier now you are saying you always wanted to fight against them. Dean said and punched the ogre right in the stomach. Dean was barehanded but currently his whole body was surrounded by earth armor and he looked like a humanoid golem. James was surrounded by purple lighting and was attacking the ogre while running around it. He was occupying the attention of the black ogre while Dean and George attack it. Crick. Suddenly the black ogre changed its attention from James to Dean and caught his arm when he was trying to punch it on its leg. Dean. George shouted and tried to free Dean by slashing at the arm of the ogre, but before he could do anything the eye of the ogre lit up and a laser beam pierced through the tough earth armor of Dean. A.A. A painful scream came out from Dean's mouth when the laser beam pierced through his shoulder. After shooting the laser beam from its eye, the ogre closed its eye for a moment. George and James didn't miss this chance and quickly attacked the arm of the ogre from which it was holding the Dean. The crimson aura that was coming out from George's body suddenly intensified and his muscles bulged out like they were about to explode. How arc. With a war cry, George slashed at the arm of the ogre with his long sword and to the ogre's horror, its arm was severed like a tofu. Dean fell to the ground after the arm of the ogre was severed. James quickly came near Dean and took him away from the ogre. George also backed away from the ogre after his attack and coughed out a mouthful of blood because he pushed his body too much in the last attack. The ogre was crying in pain after losing its arm, because of George's special sword that does additional ice damage its arm was regenerating very slowly, even a black ogre can't grow its severe limb quickly. George took out a healing potion and quickly drank it then he went towards James who was giving a healing potion to Dean. Dean's earth armor was completely broken near his shoulder area and it was bleeding pretty badly. Dean drank the healing potion although his wound will take a long time to heal, the potion at least stopped his bleeding. This bastard is quite tough. George said after coming near Dean and James. They all looked towards Evan who was fighting against the other ogre alone. Is that guy really an earring hunter? Dean asked when he saw how Evan was fighting the ogre alone. His condition is also not looking good. Although he is doing some damage to the ogre, it is not enough to defeat it because of its regeneration skill. James said when he saw how all damage that Evan was doing was healed in no time. Stop paying attention to him we should quickly kill this ogre since we are three people here and help him. George said to them and once again charged towards the ogre. Just as James and Dean looked away from Evan the eye of the ogre Evan was fighting turned pitch black and it's used another skill that froze the body of Evan. Because of this skill Evan wasn't able to move his body and was struck away by ogre and crashed against a tree. Just how many skills does this damn ogre have? Evan said when he saw the black eye of the ogre, Evan looked at his sword and saw it was filled with cracks and can't be used anymore. I should have stolen a better sword from the academy, Evan thought when he saw the condition of his sword. Evan put away his sword and drank a healing potion. Looks like I will have to use my hands, Evan thought and charged toward the ogre. When Evan came near the ogre, he once again felt like his body was being restricted by something. Do you think your trick will work on me again? Evan shouted and used his skill Shadow Walk. Shadow Walk, your body will turn into a shadow and you can walk through any barrier and restrictions without being hindered. 
Suddenly, Evan disappeared while running towards the ogre. The black ogre was taken aback when Evan suddenly disappeared and looked around its surroundings with its pitch, black eye, but wasn't able to find Evan. Suddenly, a black shadow materialized behind the ogre and turned into Evan. After appearing behind the ogre using his shadow walk skill, Evan closed his fist and punched at the knee joint of the ogre with his full power. His monarch core started to rotate at its full speed and gather mana around his fist. When Evan's fist struck the knee joint of the black ogre, it fell down on its knees. Evan did not stop there and gathered mana around his legs. After gathering mana around his leg, Evan jumped up and punched the ogre in the back of its head. Because of the fist impact, the ogre fell to the ground face first. Evan did not miss this opportunity and once again used shadow walk and came in front of the ogre who fall to the ground. Evan pointed his finger at the eye of the ogre and used around 50% of his mana to create a shadow bullet. A jet black bullet was formed at the finger of Evan which he shot towards the eye of the ogre. Slash. Eye. The bullet pierced through the eye of the black ogre and even destroyed its brain. Everything happened too fast that ogre wasn't even able to cry out before it died. Since the moment Evan used shadow walk skill only 10 seconds passed and he killed the ogre. If not for his skill shadow walk that can allow him to move without being restricted by anything it would have been really difficult for him to kill the ogre when it was using its restriction skill. After killing the ogre Evan sat down on the ground while panting heavily. He used more than 70% of his mana in just 10 seconds which took a toll on his body. I hope this ogre gave me a core and when I absorb it with my monarch core I receive one of its skill Evan thought while looking at the dead ogre. Chapter 28 I am still not strong enough Evan thought while looking at the corpse of the black ogre I am almost out of breath just after fighting against a D plus rank monster Evan stood up and looked at George and others who were still fighting against the black ogre. Evan was a little disappointed when he wasn't able to kill the black ogre easily who was just a D plus rank monster he thought that with his monarch core which is D rank and his prime core which is currently E rank he should be able to fight against a C rank monster. But after fighting against the black ogre he realized he still has a long way to go. I was also not able to control my power properly and wasted too much mana during the fight. I should have trained a little more before accepting a mission since Evan's power increased by a large margin suddenly he wasn't able to control it properly and during the fight when he used his mana to strengthen his body he wasted too much mana. Acutely it was already a miracle that Evan was able to kill a black ogre alone that is famous for its regeneration and defense. Even a C-rank hunter can't kill a black ogre easily because of its abnormal skills. You can guess this just by looking at George and the other hunters who were still trying to kill the second black ogre. Even when fighting 3 versus 1 they were not able to kill that black ogre till now. I should help them so we can leave this damn place Evan thought and moved towards George and the other hunters. How the hell it can still move around? George shouted in an irritated voice. After cutting an arm of the black ogre, it was a lot easier for them to attack black ogre. But since Dean was also injured earlier, they were still struggling against this ogre even though its body was filled with numerous injuries. Because of George's sword that froze the wounds of the ogre, its regeneration skill wasn't working properly. This ogre is like a cockroach that you can't kill. Dean said while attacking the leg of the ogre with a club made of rock. James was using his lightning spear to slow down the moment of the black ogre, but just by looking at the three of them, anyone can tell that their condition was not good. They all started to get tired on the other hand, the ogre was fighting like it had endless stamina. Damn. We can't go on like this, we need to do a fatal attack if we want to kill it. James shouted while stabbing his spear at the stomach of the black ogre. It's not easy to do fatal damage to this bastard because of its defense and regeneration. Dean said in an irritated tone. Suddenly, Evan appeared behind the ogre like a shadow and punched the knee joint of the ogre like last time. Because of the sudden attack, the ogre fell to its knee after losing its balance. Get ready to attack its eye. Evan shouted and after jumping up, punched at the back of the head of the ogre. Even George and others were startled when Evan suddenly appeared behind the ogre using his shadow walk skill, but they did not miss the chance that Evan provided them. Because of Evan's punch, the ogre fell face first to the ground. George was the first who came before the black ogre and slashed at its eye with his long sword. Slash. The eye of the black ogre burst apart because of George's sword slash. Just as George burst the eye of the ogre, James arrived there surrounded by purple lighting. James used his spear and stabbed the eye of the ogre. Crackle. 
Lighting crackled around the Spear of James, and because the defense of the ogre was very weak in that area his spear pierced through all the way to its brain. The lighting of the spear cooked the brain of the ogre and the foul smell of rotten cooked meat permeates the area. This bastard is finally dead. George said and sat down on the ground. We should leave from here, soon other monsters will come here after smelling the blood. James said to others after they killed the black ogre dot in slash dash dash dot slash i slash n. Everyone nodded after hearing this George can you give me your sword for a moment, my sword broke during the fight. I want to look for the core but the skin of this ogre is quite tough. Evan said with an embarrassed tone. Sure. George gave his sword to Evan without any problem because if not for him who knows how long it would have taken them to kill this black ogre. James and others also looked for the core in the body of the second black ogre and other earring monsters that they killed earlier. Evan came near the black ogre that he killed and used the long sword of George to look for the core near its heart. Evan's eyes lit up when he found a purplish black core near the heart of the black ogre I hope when my prime core reaches D rank and I absorb this with my monarch core I will receive a skill of this black ogre. Evan mumbled to himself because every skill that black ogre had was too powerful and he also wanted to get its skills. After taking the core Evan used his shadow storage skill and the body of the ogre suddenly started to sink into the ground. Evan can sell the body of the black ogre at a good price, people can use it to create a weapon and other things. Evan doesn't know how much space his shadow storage skill have so he was not sure about storing the body of the ogre, but luckily he was able to store the whole body without any problem. Your skill is quite impressive, people have to buy expensive storage rings if they want to sell the bodies of monsters after killing them but you can just keep them with your skill. Dean said when he saw how the body of the black ogre sank into the ground. Dean and others also found a core in the body of the second black ogre. Evan tried to put away the second body of the ogre in his shadow storage, but wasn't able to put it. Looks like I will have to increase the level of my core if I want to store more things in it, Evan thought while shaking his head. Henry, let's leave from here since other monsters will soon come here after smelling the blood. George said to Henry after coming near him. Henry nodded and they all soon left for Oklahoma City once again. Chapter 29 Can you sell that black ogre core to me? Evan asked Dean and others because he wanted to absorb the core of the black ogre using his monarch core. Well I don't mind since you also helped us take down that ogre. George said while looking at James and Dean, both of them also didn't object to it so George gave the core of the black ogre to Evan. Let me know your account number, I will transfer the money. Evan said happily when he got the core. George told his bank account number and said just transfer 45,000 credits. But D plus rank cores can be sold for 60,000 credits without any problem. Evan said with a confused face because George was asking just 45,000 credits for a D plus rank core. You also helped us to take care of that ogre so of course, we are not going to take your share. Dean said while waving his hands. When Evan heard this he smiled and transferred 45,000 credits to George who will split it later. Evan was happy that he didn't receive some trash hunter as a teammate who act almighty and try to take the fortune of other people. Even when Dean and others found out Evan was just an E-rank hunter in the start they didn't mock him or say anything to him. At first Evan accepted this mission he thought he will find some half-backed hunters who will try to do something stupid when they will find out he is just an E-rank hunter. Now I just have to advance my prime to D rank so I can once again absorb the cores through my monarch core Evan thought and put away the ogre core. We should reach there in one hour. Dean said while looking outside. Finally, I will sleep on a comfortable bed today. George said while yawing. It has been two days since Evan and others were attacked by the black ogre. Luckily, nothing major happened after the black ogre attack and they are about to reach Oklahoma City. During these two days, Evan was able to collect two more D-rank cores and five E-rank cores. Now he had three D-rank cores, five E-rank, and two D-plus rank cores, but these are not enough to push his prime core to E-plus rank. On top of that, he is not going to use Black Ogre cores on his prime core. It went better than I expected Evan thought when he heard they will soon reach Oklahoma City. One of the reasons he decided to do a mission instead of going dungeon was to gain some experience in missions because practical exams for Hunter Academy students will be held soon. 
Evan never participated in any practical exam because it requires you to show your skills and strength and Evan, who was nothing more than an F rank hunter, can't do anything during the practical exam. Normally in practical exams, students will receive a mission from the academy that they will have to complete to get a better score. These missions can be anything like exterminating some monsters in a particular area, killing some bandits who rob the merchants, clearing a dungeon, and many more. Now that Evan had enough strength, he also wanted to participate in the practical exams of the academy, which is why he decided to do a mission that will help him understand how everything works during a mission. Look, we are about to reach there. Evan looked outside from the window after hearing the dean's voice and saw 50 meters high walls and a gate where two hunters were sitting while talking to each other. I heard most of the cities are protected by a barrier, then why there are these high walls? Evan asked when he saw 50 meters high walls. Oklahoma City is also protected by a barrier, but it is pretty weak when you compare it to the barrier of a straight city. Do you think a barrier of that magnitude can be installed everywhere? George said while looking at the high walls. Evan nodded in understanding when he heard this. He also understands that a barrier that can repel every monster cannot be installed everywhere. After all, that kind of barrier must be very hard to create. Soon the van arrived near the city gate where two guards were sitting. Both of them were C-rank and looked quite bored. Henry took out some papers and showed them to guards who allowed them to enter after checking the papers. You guys can stay in the Four Seasons Hotel. I already booked your rooms there. Just show your hunter ID. After going there, we will leave for a straight city tomorrow when I am done with my business here. Henry said to Ethan and others after entering the city. Let's go. I know where this hotel is located. Dean said and left with Evan and others. Henry had to settle his cargo before he can go back to the hotel. Evan looked around the city while following Dean, unlike a straight city which is filled with modern buildings, most of the buildings in Oklahoma City were the medieval style. Evan felt like he came back in time when technology was not developed, but only the look of the city was medieval style there was every modern facility available. After 10 minutes of walking Evan and others finally arrived before a large medieval looking villa with a sign for Season Hotel hanging on top of it. Evan and others went inside and Evan was surprised when he saw how the floor was made of beautiful ivory wood that gave it a luxurious look. I wonder what is the cost of staying here for one night Evan thought when he saw how luxurious the hotel was. Even though Henry was the one who was paying he can't help but thought this because he spent most of his life being poor. After entering the hotel Dean and others went to reception and showed their ID. Just like Henry said after showing their ID the receptionist gave them the key to their room. Since all of them were pretty tired after guarding the cargo for two days, without much sleep all of them went to their room. Chapter 30 Evan and the others arrived at Oklahoma City in the afternoon, so when Evan woke up after sleeping it was already nighttime. Evan looked at the clock and it was already 7, 30 p.m., Evan rubbed his eyes and stood up. He washed his face and thought about what should he do. I wanted to stay here for some time and relax a bit. After all, it is my first time coming out from a straight city, but we are leaving tomorrow. Evan said with a sigh because he wanted to chill here for some time before going back to the academy. Unfortunately, Henry will be going back tomorrow. I should visit the market and buy a sword, Evan thought when he remembered the condition of his sword. But first Evan stood up with a bright smile, I am going to enjoy the most expensive dishes of this hotel, Evan said with a smile that resembles a thug because Henry is the one who will pay for the food he will eat here. Since that guy is going back tomorrow and I can't enjoy myself here by touring, I am going to plunder his money by eating every expensive dish here, Evan thought and ordered the most expensive dishes of the hotel through the landline phone of his room. Just after 10 minutes someone knocked on the door, when Evan opened the door he saw a waiter with a trolley full of food. Evan allowed the waiter to enter the room who left after putting all the food on the table. Although I ordered everything in excitement, can I even eat all of this? Evan muttered to himself when he saw how many dishes he ordered without even realizing it. While well, I am in my growing phase I should at least eat this much. Evan said and started to dig in food. I feel like I am a second generation rich young master. Evan said while patting his round belly that became like a football after he was done eating everything. Let's see if there is a weapon shop nearby. Evan said while taking out his phone. After searching on internet Evan found some shops not so far away from his location. All right let's see if I can find something decent here. Evan said and left the hotel room. 
Evan left the Four Seasons Hotel and went towards the market by following the map he got from the internet. Many blacksmiths in Aurora World can create extremely powerful artifacts using various materials. Since Evan doesn't have much money currently, he wanted to buy a normal sword that he can use for the time being. After 10 minutes of walking, Evan came to a shop Pose Artifacts. The things that blacksmiths create from monster body parts and other magical materials are called artifacts. Only extremely talented blacksmiths can create artifacts. The other way you can get an artifact is by clearing a dungeon. After clearing a dungeon, there is a high chance that you will receive an artifact as a reward. Welcome, a male attendant said to Evan when he entered the shop, how can we help you? I am looking for a sword. Evan said. Please go to the second floor. Most of the weapons are being sold there. The attendant said to Evan. Evan nodded and went to the second floor. There were many weapons on the second floor like swords, spears, machetes, bows, and many others. Evan went towards the section where most of the swords were placed. Evan ignored the E and F rank sword and came into D rank sword section. There are more than I expected. Evan said when he saw around 50 rank D swords. Evan came before a light blue sword and looked at it. Frost sword, D rank, a light sword created from the bones of a frost tiger. It can increase the power of your sword attack by 50%. A 50% increase in sword attack is quite good, Evan thought and looked at another sword. Moon sword, D rank, a sword made from the moonstone that absorbed the moonlight for 20 years. Do 10% extra damage to darkness type monsters. Evan continued to look at D rank sword and eventually found a sword that he liked. Nether steel sword, D rank, a sword made from nether steel that is very sharp and can cut through even the hardest metal. Because of nether steel, the flow of mana is improved by 20%. Evan tried to imbue his mana into the sword and found it was flowing into the sword without any problem. Although this sword was normal when compared to other D-Rank swords, Evan found this sword perfect because of its weight and size which match up with his previous sword. Evan went to the counter while holding the Nether Steel Sword and said, I want to buy this. Nether Steel Sword, it will cost you 50,000 credits. The receptionist said after seeing the Nether Steel Sword. Evan felt like his heart was bleeding, but he still purchased the sword, I just have 5,000 credits left. Evan got 120,000 credits after selling the cores. He bought healing and mana potions along with some other things before coming to the mission. He spent 20,000 credits in those potions. Then he bought the core of Black Ogre from George and others and now this sword. In just a few days, he spent all of the money that he got after selling the cores. Sigh, I am dirt poor again, Evan thought after leaving the shop. Evan roamed around the city for some time after purchasing the sword and returned to the hotel after one hour. When Evan came back, he met George and others who were talking to Henry. You are back from your tour, Henry said when he saw Evan, we are going for dinner, want to join us? Sorry, I already ate, you guys can go by yourself. Evan said after hearing Henry. All right, remember we will leave around early morning tomorrow, so take a good sleep. Henry said to Evan and went with George and the others. Evan came back to his room and started watching ING a movie on his phone since he had nothing else to do. The night passed away just like this and the next day arrived. Chapter 31 Henry's eyes twitched. Ed, when he saw the hotel bill, everything was fine except the food bill and when he asked about it he finally found the culprit who ate the food of an entire football team. How the hell he ate the food of 7,000 credits Henry paid the bill with a bleeding heart while cursing Evan for being a Snorlax. All right, let's go. Henry said to Evan and others after paying the bill and left the Four Seasons Hotel. While leaving, Henry was looking at Evan like he is his lifelong enemy. Evan already noticed this, but ignore him because he was already aware of how costly his dinner was last night. They all came near the city gate where Henry's driver was waiting for them. Just like previously, Evan and the other hunters sat down at the back of the van and they all left Oklahoma City. Hey, did you do something wrong? I felt like Henry was looking at you strangely. Dean asked Evan after they left the city. Evan's mouth twitched, Ed, when he heard this because he was aware of why Henry was looking at him like this, but for obvious reasons, he can't tell them about it. I don't know, maybe he is not feeling good. Evan said while making an ignorant face like he didn't know anything. When Dean heard this, he shrugged his shoulders because he just asked out of curiosity. 
After six hours, the van suddenly stopped moving and the driver activated the barrier of the van. There are some monsters in the way we can't move forward before you guys clean them. Evan and the other hunters heard Henry's voice after the barrier of the van was activated. Evan and others came out of the van and saw seven tigers like monsters were blocking their way. Three tigers were three meters tall while four tigers were two meters tall with their light yellow skin and black stripes all over their body they resembles the Bengal tiger. 3D rank and 4E rank forest tigers. George said after seeing the monsters, Let's check out the power of this new baby, Evan thought after taking out his nether steel sword. Haste even before George and others could react, Evan used haste skill and charged towards the tigers alone. Hey, wait for us. Dean shouted and he also dashed towards the tigers with James and George. The agility of Evan after using the haste was too fast for a D-rank monster, so even before any tiger can react, Evan came before an E-rank tiger and slashed horizontally without using mana. Swish! Like a hot knife passing through the butter, the head of the E-rank tiger was severed cleanly. The 50,000 credits that I spent on this sword were worth it, Evan thought, when he saw how even without using his mana the sword easily severed the head of the tiger. Roarar! The remaining six tigers roared when they saw how Evan killed one of the tigers. Swish! Suddenly a green aura appeared around all D-rank tigers and they charged toward him with far greater agility than a D-rank monster. When Evan saw the green aura he remembered, George told him at the beginning of their journey that the forest tiger is one of the monsters that is famous for its agility. They are fast for a D-rank hunter, but for me Evan thought and without much effort jumped back and avoided the attack of three D-rank tigers. With his D-rank monarch core and E-rank prime core, his agility was already much higher than a D-rank hunter, and with the help of haste skill, his agility is in a completely different league when compared to D-rank monsters. Even before the D-rank tigers can react, George came from behind and slashed at the back of one of the tigers. James and Dean went to take care of the three remaining E-rank forest tigers. Roerg The forest tiger roared in pain when a deep wound appeared on its back because of George's attack. All three D-rank tigers looked back at George when he suddenly attacked them, but it was a fatal mistake because Evan who was standing in front of them didn't miss this chance. In a blink of an eye, he appeared before a forest tiger using his haste skill and slashed at the head of the tiger. Surprisingly, the forest tiger reacted quickly and with a quick moment jumped back. Because of its quick reaction, Evan wasn't able to kill it in a single move, but a large wound still appeared on its left shoulder. Roerg the tiger roared in pain and Evan was about to finish it off while it was still trying to recover from his attack when one of the D-rank tiger opened its mouth and shot a dark green blade toward Evan. Sure asterisk T, Evan cursed when he saw he do not have enough time to dodge the blade, he quickly used his nether steel sword and slashed at the incoming blade while imbuing his mana in the sword. The flow of mana was a lot smoother than his previous sword and when the nether steel sword that was covered in a light blue layer of mana and a faint layer of darkness clashed against the dark green blade, it destroyed the dark green blade like without any problem. After destroying the green blade Evan came before the forest tiger who shot the green blade at him earlier and with a swift motion beheaded it even before it can react. After killing the tiger, Evan didn't stop and using haste quickly charged toward the other D-rank tiger and in just 10 seconds he killed it. George also didn't take long and after a minute he also killed the last D-rank tiger. Soon Dean and James also finished the three E-rank tigers without any problem. Let's look for cores and leave immediately. George said when he noticed other monsters will soon come here after smelling the blood. But suddenly an arrow came out of nowhere and pierced the shoulder of George and even before Evan and the others can react three more arrows came toward them at a lightning speed. Chapter 32 Swish! Evan heard the sound of an incoming arrow and with sheer reflex slashed with his sword in front of him. Cock! Evan's sword clashed against an arrow and it was cut in two instantly. Evan quickly looked at Dean and James and saw both of them were fine. Dean was covered in earth armor so the arrow wasn't able to pierce through it and James also cut down the arrow using his spear before it can reach him. What the hell is going on? Evan asked while looking around their surroundings. Just as Evan asked suddenly a light yellow barrier appeared around them. Damn. It's a trap barrier, it must be the work of bandits. George said while taking out the arrow from his shoulder. 
David, didn't I tell you the archery of this bastard is complete trash? Look, he wasn't even able to kill those trash hunters who were not aware about us. Suddenly, Evan and others heard a gruff voice and looked behind them. Evan saw three men who were smiling like third-rate villains coming towards them. The man who just spoke was two meters tall and his head was completely bald. The man was holding a light yellow crystal that looked strangely similar to the color of the barrier in which they were trapped. Whose archery is trash you bald head, all of them are deer ink hunters and I even managed to wound one of them. A short man who was holding a bow rebutted when he heard what the bald man said. Hey, David I don't think we need this bald head who just activates the trap barrier whenever we rob someone. We can do this on our own, why don't we just kick him out from our group? Oliver the short archer said. Stop fighting and get back to work. David the leader said in a cold tone and both Oliver and Drew shut their mouth. Evan looked at the bandits with cold eyes because if he didn't react on time earlier the arrow would have pierced his head and he is sure that even with his current strength it would have been very difficult for him to survive from that kind of injury. Oliver and Drew were D rank while David was D plus rank. Evan came near the barrier and touched it ouch. Evan quickly removed his hand from the barrier when he felt an electric shock just after touching the barrier. It's not going to work. We can't go out before the energy of the trap is exhausted or they remove it using the controller. Evan heard Dean's voice who was looking at bandits with grim expressions. Quickly, turn back and move towards Oklahoma City. When Henry saw how Evan and others were trapped in a barrier by bandits he decided to ditch them without hesitation because he knew there is nothing he can do to save them and will die meaninglessly if he did not run away. Just as the driver start the van to run away, Drew the bald man took out a strange black device and pointed it toward the van. After pointing the device at the van he clicked the only red button available on the device and suddenly the barrier that was surrounding the van disappeared and its engine also shut down. Do they think we are stupid? Drew said while looking at Van with mocking expressions. What happened? Henry asked in a panicked voice when the engine of the van suddenly shut down and the barrier disappeared. The engine is not working. The driver said in panic. Oliver bring them here. David said to Archer after Drew shut down the barrier of the van. You bastard remove this barrier and fight with me head on. George shouted at bandits while holding his shoulder that stopped bleeding after he drank a healing potion. Are you stupid we trapped you inside because we wanted to rob without problem, do you think we will remove the barrier just because you asked? Oliver the short archer said with a sneer and went towards the van. Don't worry we will remove the barrier soon after all it uses too much energy to maintain it. Drew said with a sinister smile. When Evan and others saw his smile an ominous feeling bloom in their heart. But I don't think you guys will be able to see us remove this barrier. Drew said while taking out a small bottle that was filled with dark green liquid. Poison of Swamp Python. James said with a dark look when he saw the dark green liquid. Oh, you know about this, Drew said in surprise. When James recognized the poison, then you should also know what I am going to do. What kind of poison is that? Dean asked James since he doesn't know about it. The poison of Swamp Python will turn into gas as soon as it comes into contact with air. If he threw that bottle inside this barrier, the air around us will become poisonous and we will die. James said in despair-filled voice because there is no way they will survive if the air around them become poisonous. They will have to remove the barrier if they want to throw that bottle inside, can't we go out at that moment? George asked when he heard this. I don't think they need to remove this barrier. If my guess is correct, anyone can come inside the barrier from outside, but you can't go outside after entering the barrier. This time, Dean answered with a helpless voice. Please let us go. We don't have anything you can check our van. Henry said while pleading when Oliver brought him. We already know your van is empty, but I don't think your bank account is also empty. Just transfer two million credits into this bank account and you can go. David said while showing a bank account number. Henry's face turned white when he heard this and he said, I am just a normal merchant, how can I have two million credits in my bank account? Do you think we are fools just by looking at your van? I can tell that you are not an ordinary merchant. David said in a cold voice after hearing Henry. When Henry heard the cold voice of David, a chill run down his spine and he looked at Evan and the other hunters who were still trapped in the barrier. Drew killed them. David said when he saw Henry was looking at Evan and the other hunters. 
When Drew heard this, he smiled sinisterly and looked at Evan and others. Wait, I will transfer the money, don't kill them. Henry shouted when he heard what David said, because if Evan and the other hunter died, there is no way he will be able to safely reach a straight city. Do it fast, my patience is limited. David said with an indifferent voice and showed the bank account number to Henry. Arg. Suddenly, David heard the scream of Drew and quickly looked back. When David looked back, he saw one of the hunters who was trapped inside the barrier was looking at him coldly while his sword was plunged into the heart of Drew. Chapter 33 Evan wasn't worried about being trapped in the barrier because if he want, he can leave the barrier whenever he want with his shadow walk skill. Shadow walk, your body will turn into a shadow and you can walk through any barrier and restrictions without being hindered. But Evan was hesitating a little because of James who is also a student of the Hunter Academy. Till now Evan only showed shadow storage and haste skill to other hunters. He didn't show them his shadow walk and shadow bullet skill because it will be too suspicious for him to have so many skills. If it was only George and Dean who don't know about him, he can still use any skill without much problem. But James is already aware about Evan that he is the weakest hunter in the academy. It is already quite strange that he can kill deer rank monsters without any problem while being only ear rank. Now if he shows other skills it will be quite troublesome. Evan doesn't want to reveal the existence of his monarch core to anyone or he might get into some problems because of it. Don't kill them I will transfer the money. Evan heard the shout of Henry and saw he was about to transfer the money to the bandits. Is this guy an idiot? It is already clear they will kill us even after he transferred the money to them Evan thought while shaking his head because there is no way these bandits will leave them alive. Guess I have no choice Evan finally made up his mind and decided to use his shadow walk skill that guy is mute and doesn't talk to other students so I think it will be fine. Evan used shadow walk skill and suddenly turned into a shadow he went towards the barrier and easily passed through it without any problem. Just as Evan passed through the barrier he felt his mana decrease by a considerable amount so it will take a large amount of mana if I want to pass through a barrier Evan thought when he lost a large amount of mana after passing through the barrier. What the hell was that? George asked while looking at the place where Evan was standing just a moment ago. Where is he? Dean asked while looking around them. Aorg. Suddenly they heard a painful scream of Drew and saw somehow Evan appeared behind him and stabbed his sword in his heart. H. How? Drew asked with a trembling tone while blood came out from his mouth. Ask Lucifer when you met him. Evan said coldly and pulled back his sword. He didn't feel anything after killing a human because they were the first who tried to kill him, so there is no way he will let them live after they tried to kill him. I am not a naive person who will hesitate to kill someone just because they are human. I will kill anyone who will try to harm me, Evan thought, when he saw Drew drop to the ground and his life ended. After killing Drew, Evan looked at David coldly who was looking at the cold corpse of Drew without any emotion on his face. You bastard. Oliver the short archer shouted and shot an arrow towards Evan. Evan used haste skill and easily dodged the arrow. After dodging the arrow Evan first charged toward Oliver. Even before the archer can react Evan came before him and grabbed him by the shirt like he is throwing some kind of garbage Evan used his abnormal strength and threw Oliver towards the barrier in which George and others were trapped. Just like what Dean said earlier Oliver was not stopped by the barrier and crashed before Dean and others. After throwing Oliver inside the barrier, Evan ignored him and once again looked at David who was still standing in the same place. You are quite strong. David said after Evan threw Oliver inside the barrier. Evan raised an eyebrow when he saw how David was still calm despite the fact that Drew and Oliver is already out. You don't look bothered by the death of your subordinates. Evan said after seeing David's reaction. They are just disposable tools for me, David said, without changing his expression, since they are dead I will just find a new one. A bandit is just a bandit in the end. Evan said without much surprise, because he never expected to see any loyalty among them. But you are wrong about one thing. Evan cracked his neck and said. David raised an eyebrow and asked what is it? You will not be able to find any new tools, because you are going to die here. Evan said and charged toward David using haste skill. Even though David was a D plus rank hunter, the agility of Evan was too fast after using haste skill for him to react on time. 
Evan clasped his hand and threw a punch at the face of David, but just as Evan's punch connected with the face of David, his eyes trembled because Evan felt like instead of hitting the face of David, he just punched an unshakable iron wall. Evan looked at the face of David and saw the skin of David's face take the sheen color of metal before his punch connected with his face. Even before Evan can understand what was going on, he felt danger like never before, and without hesitation, he used Shadow Walk. Just as Evan turned into a shadow David's fist which was covered in silver-like metal missed him. Evan moved backward in his shadow form and after arriving 10 meters away from David he stopped using the shadow walk skill. When Evan once again looked at David he saw, somehow David's skin turned into a silver color metal and he looked like a metallic golem instead of a human. Spikes like blades were coming out from his arms that looks quite sharp. Do you think I become the leader of this group without doing anything? What did you say just now you will kill me? Let me see how you are going to kill me. With the defense that my skill provides forget about killing me or won't even able to leave a scar on my skin, David said to Evan while laughing. When Evan saw how David turned into a metallic golem his expression didn't change and he looked at his nether steel sword with a smirk. Nether steel sword, dear ink, a sword made from nether steel that is very sharp and can cut through even the hardest metal. Because of nether steel, the flow of mana is improved by 20%. Let's see if this sword can cut through his skin, Evan thought, and without saying anything once again shot towards David. According to details of his sword, it can cut through even the hardest metal without even using mana. So what will happen if Evan used his mana that was even more powerful because of the strange black energy that was mixed in it? Evan came before David who was still surprised because of the high agility of Evan and slashed at him while imbuing his mana in the sword. Fool stop struggling you can't harm me. David shouted and used his arm to block the slash of the sword. A light blue layer of mana mixed with a faint black layer shined around the nether steel sword and when it clashed against the metallic arm of David a hand flew into the sky and red blood spurted out. Chapter 34 Aorg David screamed in pain and fell to the ground while holding his severed hand. Because of the pain, he was feeling David started to roll on the ground. The severed hand of David fall two meters away from Evan. When he saw the severed hand of David, Ethan's eyes trembled for a second, but they returned to normal very quickly like they never trembled. Bastard, I will kill you. David shouted with blood-red eyes while trying to stop the blood that was coming out from his severed hand. Evan did not say anything and slowly walked towards David who was looking at him with blood red eyes. Didn't I tell you, you will die today? Evan said in an emotionless tone. Die you bastard. David shouted and suddenly the spikes that were coming out from his arm flew toward Evan like bullets. Shadow walk. Evan muttered and evaded the spikes by using shadow walk skill. Evan appeared behind David using shadow walk skill and with a swift motion beheaded him even before he can react. Thud. A head roll on the ground and everything came to end. Evan looked at the headless corpse of David and took off the storage ring that he was wearing. After taking David's storage ring, Evan walked towards the body of Drew and picked up the barrier crystal. After picking up the barrier crystal, he threw it toward Henry while saying deactivate the barrier. After saying this, Evan silently went inside the van. No matter what, it was the first time Evan killed a human, so although he wasn't feeling guilty because they were the first that tried to kill him, he still felt strange that he just killed two humans. Well, it was bound to happen someday after I was transmigrated into this world, Evan muttered to himself and stopped thinking about everything that just happened. After 10 minutes, George and others also came back into the van after Henry freed them from the barrier. George and others already killed Oliver when Evan threw him inside the barrier. When George and the other hunters saw Evan who was leaning back with his eyes closed they didn't say anything and quietly sat down. Soon the driver started the van once again. The effect of the black device that Drew used was cancelled when he was killed by Evan since it requires mana in order to stop the functions of the van. Time continues to pass and soon night arrived. The driver stopped the van in a good area to spend the night and take some rest after what happened earlier. During this entire time, no one talked about anything Evan was busy with his own thoughts while George and the other hunters were also quite shocked because of the earlier event. They knew that if not for Evan they all would have died there without being able to do anything. Let's spend the night here. Evan opened his eyes after hearing Henry. He came out of the van with George and others and stretched it his stiff body a bit. 
I will go look around our surroundings with James. George said and went to look around their surroundings for any monster. Henry and his driver also get to work and started to cook dinner after settling their signature outdoor barbecue. George and James returned after 20 minutes and continued to monitor their surroundings before the dinner was cooked. Dinner is ready. Henry shouted and called Evan and others for dinner. You guys can eat, I will keep guarding. Evan said to the other hunters since he was not in the mood to eat anything. George and the other hunters looked at each other and after shrugging their shoulders went to eat dinner. When George and the others left, Evan took out the storage ring that he got from David and used a drop of his blood to link the storage ring to himself. After linking the ring to himself, Evan looked inside to see what he got after killing those bandits. When Evan saw the things inside the ring, a smile appeared on his face. At least they were not totally useless, Evan thought, after seeing 10 deer ink cores and 16 ear ink cores. There were some other things as well like healing potions, mana potions, and some other minor things. I should be able to push my prime core to E plus rank with all of these cores, Evan thought happily after seeing the cores. One of the things that he hoped for before completing the mission was to gather enough cores to advance E plus rank with his prime core, and because of bandits, his goal completed without any problem. I wonder what will happen when my monarch core will reach C rank, Evan thought, because whenever a person reaches at C rank they will get a job class. Evan was not sure what will happen when his monarch core will reach C rank because other people only have prime core and they get a job class after reaching C rank. Will I get a job class when my monarch core will reach C rank? Evan wondered while thinking about his monarch core, but if I got a job class when my monarch core reaches C rank, then what will happen when my prime core will reach at C rank? Evan had a lot of questions about his monarch core like the black energy that is mixed in his mana and his class and many more, but he knew he will eventually get his answers when the time come. Let's stop thinking about these things and focus on the things that are important for now, Evan muttered, and his mood, which was a little down after killing those bandits, finally improved after seeing enough cores for his advancement. The next thing is the practical exam of the Hunter Academy, Evan thought and looked at the half moon in the sky. Chapter 35 Finally, it's over, Dean said while looking outside the window of the van. From the window of the van, Evan and other hunters can see the outline of the Estrate City. It was one of the hardest transport missions of my life, George said while recalling the Black Ogre and Bandit attack. Well, it doesn't matter now that we are back safely, Dean said and looked at Evan who was looking outside the window. After the bandit attack, nothing major happened during their journey and they all safely arrived at a straight city. They did encounter some monsters on their way back, but most of them were E and F rank and Evan and the other hunters took care of them easily. Evan did not get any high rank core, but he wasn't disappointed because he already had enough core to push his prime to E plus rank. After three minutes the van finally entered the gate of a straight city and Evan once again saw the familiar city once again. After entering the city, the driver parked the van where most of the transport vehicles were stationed. When the driver parked the van, Evan came out from the van with the other hunters. Henry also came out from the van and walked towards them. Thanks for your hard work. If not for you guys, I would have never come back here safely. Henry said to Evan and the other hunters after coming near them. Evan and the other hunters just nodded now that they came back to the city. They all just wanted to finish everything quickly and take a good nap. Henry can also see that all of them were quite tired after constantly fighting against the monster so he didn't hold them back and gave them a letter. It was proof that they all completed their mission successfully. Evan and others took the letter and put it away in their storage ring. Evan and James can show this letter in the mission hall to receive their mission points while George and Dean can show this letter to the association office to receive their payment. After giving the letter Henry was about to walk away when Evan said aren't you forgetting something? When Henry heard this his body stiffened for a moment then he coughed and gave Evan a light yellow crystal and a black device while saying I completely forget about this. Evan took the barrier crystal and the black device without any change in his expression. Although he doesn't know how to use this and he left it in the hand of Henry after killing bandits because his mood was off at that time there is no way he will let him keep these precious artifacts. These two will fetch a, me a good amount of money, Evan thought, and put away both things in his storage ring. It was a pleasure to work with you guys. Evan said to George and the other hunters after putting away the barrier crystal and black device. 
Evan was happy that his teammates were not some de asterisk kids who try to kill the weakest member during the mission. During the two years Evan spent in this world, he many times heard how some hunters killed their weakest member during the mission to rob his share and other things, so he was happy that he did not meet those kinds of guys. Dash one in. We were lucky you were doing this mission with us thanks for your help during all this time. George said with a grateful voice, Dean and James also nodded after hearing George because if not for Evan this mission might have turned their last mission. Don't worry about it, let's meet again in the future. Evan said with a smile after hearing George and started to walk away from them. Should I directly go to the academy? Evan thought while walking let's go to a hotel and rent a room there I will return academy after taking proper rest and eating dinner. Evan took a taxi and asked the driver to bring him to Crown Hotel which was pretty near to the academy and he heard the food of that place is also quite good. The driver nodded and started to drive towards the Crown Hotel, Evan closed his eyes and finally relaxed his tense muscles. It was his first time doing a mission so he was quite tired after not sleeping properly for the past some days. Evan was so relaxed that he fall asleep while sitting in the taxi. Wake up young man we arrived at Crown Hotel. Evan woke up after hearing the shout of the old driver. Evan looked outside and saw the Crown Hotel outside. Sorry I fall asleep. Evan said to the driver and exited the taxi, he paid the taxi bill and looked at the grand building of the Crown Hotel. Just some days ago I can't even think about coming here Evan thought and entered the hotel. Evan went towards reception and asked for a room. It will be 2,000 credits. Evan's mouth twitched, Ed, when he heard the hotel price, but he still paid. The receptionist gave Evan the key to his room and told him to go to the third floor where his room is located. Evan went into his room, which was quite luxurious, and first decided to take a bath before doing anything. After taking a bath Evan jumped onto the bed and lay down like a log this mattress is quite soft, I can't even compare the mattress of my academy room with it. Evan said while rolling on the mattress. Should I steal this mattress using my shadow storage skill Evan thought with a wicked smile his mentality is completely twisted after living like a beggar for two years. Even though he can get hundreds of thousands of credits after selling the things he got after killing bandits he still can't change his mentality in just a few days. Even before he decides what to do the fatigue of his mission kicks in and he falls asleep without even realizing. When Evan woke up again it was already 7, 00, 00 p.m. Evan arrived at the hotel around 10 in the morning so he slept for around 9 hours. It's the first time I slept for this long after coming to this world. Evan said while starching his body after standing up. Evan washed his face and ordered something to eat. His food arrived in 10 minutes and Evan started to eat while cursing the hotel owner because of the price of the food. I will advance my prime core to E plus rank after going back to the academy. Evan said while taking a bite of meat steak. After eating the food Evan came out to form his room and left the hotel to go to the academy. The academy was quite close to the Crown Hotel so he arrived there after 10 minutes of walking. When Evan entered the academy gate someone bumped into him. When Evan looked at the person who bumped into him, he saw a tall guy who looks like an orc looking at him with a smile. Again this is asterisk hole Evan sighed when he saw Mike and his gang. Chapter 36 Can't you walk while watch a ING in front of you? Evan said in an irritated tone because he was in good mood just by thinking about advancing his prime court to E plus rank, but he bumped into these morons who will surely try to pick a fight with him. The person who bumped into Evan was Lucas who was looking at Evan with a cold smile. Did you say something? Lucas asked while looking down at Evan since his height was around 210 centimeters. Evan sighed when he saw this I might as well settle everything with them so I will not have to waste my time with them in the future. Hey, I asked you something did you say something to me? Lucas asked once again while grabbing the collar of Evan. Mike was watcha, ing, everything with a cold smile this bastard was saved by Valerie last time, but let's see who will save him this time. Since they were at the gate of the academy there were not many students. Only a few students were watcha, ing, everything, and they had no intention of intervening in this mess. I warned you guys last time, don't mess with me again. Evan said while looking at Mike since he is the leader of their gang. Currently of the four members of Mike's gang only Lucas and he was present the other two whose name Evan didn't bother to remember were not there. 
Mike just showed a cold smile to Evan and sent a signal to Lucas. When Lucas saw the signal Mike sent him, he smiled coldly. Evan also saw how Mike sent a signal from his eye to Lucas' typical clinch plot of an old movie where third-rate villain uses his eye to give order to his subordinate Evan thought after seeing the signal that Mike gave. Let's finish this so I can advance my core to E plus rank Evan thought and even before Lucas can do anything, he used his left hand to free his collar from the hand of Lucas and while using more than half of his strength slapped Lucas using his right hand. Since Lucas wasn't expecting Evan to attack him suddenly, he wasn't able to do anything. With his strength, Evan easily freed himself from Lucas. And with his high moment speed, because of his agility, even before Lucas can react, Evan's right hand arrived before his cheek. Slap. Thud. A loud sound rang out Lucas's head was smashed against the cold ground of the academy floor. The power behind Evan's slap was too much that Lucas's head was smashed against the ground because of the impact of his slap. Lucas's jaw was dislocated, some of his teeth were broken and his mouth was bleeding, even his head was bleeding because of how hard his head smashed against the cold ground, Lucas's eyes rolled inside his head because of the sudden attack and he passed out. Mike and the other students were shocked when they saw the condition of Lucas just after taking a slap from Evan. They all looked at Evan with their eyes wide open and saw him looking at Mike with an expressionless face. When Mike saw pitch, black eyes of Evan his heart trembled for a moment. Let's have a spar next Friday, if I win stop bothering me with your nonsense again. Evan said to Mike without any expression on his face and started to walk inside the academy leaving behind a dumbfounded Mike and some shocked students who were lucky enough to see everything. Evan did not wait to hear Mike's response because he was 90% sure that Mike will accept his challenge. If Mike refused his challenge he will not be able to control Lucas and the other members of his gang. Mike Watcha, at the back of Evan while his back was drenched in cold sweat, he looked at the condition of Lucas and can't help but gulp down his saliva. How the hell he can knock out a deer ink hunter just by a slap? Some students who saw everything were shocked because they never expected something like this to happen. Evan is known for being the weakest hunter in the academy, so it was not surprising that most of the students who saw Evan knocking out Lucas with just a single slap were shocked. I don't care how he did it but do you think Mike will accept his challenge? Some students wondered while looking at Mike who was trying to wake up Lucas. Evan didn't care much about the challenge he just made because he did all this so that Mike and his gang will not bother him again in the future. Evan first went into the mission hall to receive his mission points. Evan went to the reception of the mission hall and saw a different receptionist there. How can I help you? The receptionist asked Evan when he was him. I am here to submit my mission. Evan said while giving the letter that Henry gave him to the receptionist. The receptionist checked the letter and scanned it into the computer and after a minute when he didn't find anything wrong he nodded and said give me your academy hunter card I will transfer 20 mission points in it. Evan handed his hunter card and after a minute the receptionist returned him his card. Do you want to accept another mission? The receptionist asked after transferring the mission points to Evan. Not now. Evan refused politely and left the mission hall and went towards his room. Tomorrow is the swordmanship class of Professor Robert, although I don't need to learn swordmanship now because I have enough power to protect myself even without a sword, I should at least inform him I will not come to his class anymore. Evan mumbled to himself after sitting down on his bed. Students of the academy can only skip classes if they are out on a mission or doing a dungeon raid. If they are not out on a mission or doing something important, they can't skip classes at the academy. Evan was able to skip classes this week because he was out on a mission and it is the first time since he joined the academy that he skipped classes. Previously, Evan can't accept a mission from Mission Hall because of his low strength, so he never skipped a class before. Let's advance to E plus rank. Evan said and sat up crossed legs while taking out cores that he got after killing bandits. Chapter 37 Evan took out a core and used a little mana to refine it. When Evan used his mana to refine the core, its energy rushed toward his prime core and was absorbed by it. Evan continued to refine one core after another since he was refining cores using his mana he wasn't able to absorb 100% power of the core. With each core that Evan absorbed, he felt a little stronger and his prime core slowly started to move towards E plus rank. There were around 20 deer rank cores that Evan got from David's storage ring. When Evan absorbed the 16th core, suddenly his prime core started to rotate and the mana from the surroundings started to rush toward him. 
His prime core greedily absorbed the surrounding mana and Evan felt his power slowly increasing. Evan also noticed that his prime core was absorbing less mana than his monarch core while advancing. Evan still remembered when his monarch core advanced a mana vortex was formed near him because of how much mana his monarch core absorbed while advancing. After one minute his prime core stopped rotating and mana from the surrounding also stopped rushing toward him. Suddenly, Evan felt a new wave of energy spreading all over his body and his power increased by another level. Evan looked at his hand and closed his fist. The air around his fist trembled because of his sheer strength. When Evan saw this, a smile appeared on his face. Evan opened his status window and looked at it. Name, Evan. Rank, E+. Monarch Core Rank, D. Strength, E+. Agility, E+. Mana, E+. Stamina, E+. Intelligence, E+. Luck, C. Charm, C+. Skill, Shadow Walk. Haste, Shadow Bullet. Physique, Shadow Monarch Physique. Title, None. Job, None. His prime core advanced to E plus rank, his luck becomes C, and even his charm increased to C plus rank. After confirming his status, Evan closed his status window and put away the remaining cores because they were not enough to advance his prime core to D rank. If I have enough cores, I can advance to the next rank without any problem. I don't have to stabilize my core like other people after advancing to next rank. Evan mumbled with a smile when he remembered another perk of his monarch core. After advancing to the next rank, people have to stabilize their core before they can once again absorb the energy from the core. If they absorb more energy without stabilizing their core, there is a high chance that their prime core will break apart. Evan never paid much attention to how people advanced their ranks before since he wasn't able to advance because of his shadow physique. But now that he also started to advance using cores, Evan suddenly found it weird that many hunters were stuck in the same rank for quite a long time. Can't they just use more cores and advance their rank as much as they like? When Evan looked on the internet about this issue, he finally found hunters have to stabilize their prime core after advancing to the next rank. How much time it takes to stabilize the core depends on the potential of the hunter. Some people stabilize their core in a few days, while some can take months. There are even hunters who can't stabilize their cores for a lifetime after reaching to a certain rank because they don't have the potential to advance to the next rank. When Evan found out about all this he was shocked because his prime core never destabilized even though he advanced from F rank to E plus rank in just mere days. Unlike other hunters, he advanced three times in just mere days and his prime core is still as stable as Mount Tai. Evan was confused why he don't need to stabilize his core after advancing. In the end, when Evan didn't find anything, he thought it must be another effect of his monarch core. If I am not wrong, I don't have to stabilize my prime core as long as my monarch core's rank is higher than my prime core. Evan thought after seeing how his prime core is completely stable even after reaching E plus rank. I will collect more cores, and after advancing my prime core to D rank, I can once again start advancing my monarch core. Evan said out loud while thinking about his monarch core. I can't wait to see what will happen when my Monarch Core will advance to C rank. Will I get any class from my Monarch Core? If I do get a class from my Monarch Core, then what will happen when my Prime Core will advance to C rank? Just thinking about the possibility what will happen when his both cores will advance to C rank, Evan can't help but want to collect enough cores right now and advance to C rank. I have to sell the things I got from David's storage ring. My bank account is almost empty. Evan said after remembering the balance in his bank account. Evan has one barrier crystal, one black device, and some other things that he found in David's storage ring. Along with those things, Evan was planning to sell the storage ring that he got from David and some earring cores that he collected during his mission. Evan is not going to absorb the energy from earring cores because even after absorbing energy from earring cores, he knew his prime core will barely able to move forward since it is already E plus rank. So instead of wasting those earring cores by absorbing them, he decided to sell them and earn some money. I also have to prepare for the practical exam since it's the first time I am going to take this exam. Evan rubbed his temples just by thinking how many things he has to do. Let's see what will happen in classes tomorrow. I don't even know what am I supposed to do in practical exams. Hopefully, I will get some information tomorrow. Chapter 38 if my charm continues to improve like this, I think I will soon become Mr. World. 
Evan said while rubbing his chin, Evan was standing before the mirror bare chest and his perfect body was on full display. His jet black hairs were little wet indicating that he just took a bath. If any girl sees him right now, they will definitely get charmed by his devilish handsome look. It's been a while since I last went into the class. Evan said while wearing a black shirt that matcha, Ed with his jet black hair and deep black eyes. Evan came out from his dorm room and left the boys' dormitory. After leaving the boys' dormitory, Evan went towards his classroom. Hey, did you hear what happened last night? While walking, Evan heard some students who were talking among themselves. What happened? Asked another student. I don't know if it's true or not, but I heard that Trash Evan challenged Mike for a duel next Friday. Of course, it's not true how can that Trash who is even afraid to enter a dungeon can challenge Mike. But I heard some students were talking about it, and apparently some time ago when Mike tried to pick a fight with him, he even insulted Mike and his gang. Hey, look at this video. Suddenly one of the students showed a video to other students that was being viral in the Hunter Academy students chat group. Holy crap, who is this guy? The student who was talking about Evan's challenge a moment ago asked. He completely crushed Lucas with just a slap. Isn't this guy looks like Evan? Another student said after seeing the face of the guy who slapped Lucas. Don't jack around although he looks like him there is no way he is that guy. He looks more handsome and clearly he is at least C rank hunter. If not above there is no way that trash can reach C rank. Can't you guys see he attacked Lucas when he was not paying attention? It's clear that if Lucas was not careless he would have easily dodged that attack. Who is this bastard who spread the video Evan thought and annoyed us because he knew he will not be able to attend the class peacefully. I just hope no one will come to bother me Evan thought when he arrived near his classroom. Since the class was about to start most of the students were already present. When Evan entered the classroom students looked at him and were stunned to see a new student because most of the students didn't recognize Evan. Isn't the same guy who slapped Lucas in the video? Why he is in our class? He looks like that trash Evan, don't you think? He becomes more strong James who was also present in class thought when he saw Evan. He changed once again Valerie who was also present in the class raised an eyebrow after seeing Evan. She saw him some days ago when Mike was picking a fight with him and was surprised when she saw how he changed completely. Evan already expected this kind of reaction since he also know his look changed completely after he got his monarch's course so he ignored them and went towards his seat at the back of the class where he usually sit. Holy shit, that guy is really Evan he sat at the same seat where he usually sat. Did he do plastic surgery or something? It's really annoying Evan thought when he saw how all students were looking at him. Mike and his gang were also present in class and they were staring daggers at him like they just want to rip him apart. Evan ignored everything and started to browse the internet. After five minutes the professor finally came into class and Evan sighed in relief when students stopped looking at him. All right, stop talking. Professor Elena said after entering the class. Elena looked around 25 years old. She has long black hair like green eyes and she was wearing a knee-length skirt. She teaches students about the theory of monsters and most of the things that they need to know while facing monsters. Elena looked around the class and when she saw Evan her eyes stopped on him for a moment but she didn't say anything. Today I will teach you about the weaknesses of different types of monsters. It's important to know about the weaknesses of the monsters while facing them because it gets easy to kill a monster if you know its weakness Elena said and started the class. She touched the screen that was present in class and an image of a snow white tiger with deep blue eyes appeared on the screen. As you all know it's a frost tiger one of the most common and at the same time dangerous monster that you can find in an icy environment. If you fight against it in an icy environment it will be very dangerous for you but if you know its weakness you can defeat it more easily. Elena said after showing the picture. Anyone knows how to deal with this monster properly. Elena asked while looking at the students. Some students raised their hands. Evan was also among them since during these two years he can't take any practical exam because of his low strength. He basically memorized most of the theory about monsters. Elena looked around the class and pointed at a short hair boy. When the boy saw Elena was pointing at him, he stood up and started to tell about the weaknesses of the frost tiger. I should ask about the practical exam after the class end, Evan thought with a bored look because he already knew most of the things that Elena was teaching. All right, that's it for today. Remember to revise what you learned today. Elena said after her class ended and left the class. 
Evan quickly stood up to go after Elena since he wanted to ask about the practical exam. Just as Evan stood up to go after Elena, someone came before him and said, Oi, Trash, did you go through plastic surgery or something? Chapter 39 Evan looked at the person who stopped him and saw a 180 centimeters tall boy standing before him. What do you want, Rio? Evan asked while looking at the boy. Rio has brown spiky hair and his build is similar to Evan's. What can a trash like you can give me? I am just curious what happened to you and why your look changed this much in just one week. Rio said while putting one of his hand on Evan's shoulder. I don't think I need to tell you what happened to me, Evan said in an indifferent voice while removing Rio's hand from his shoulder and don't try to touch me again. I am sick of people who always try to grab my collar or touch me without any reason. Rio looked at Evan closely and seeing his indifferent expression before him, he suddenly burst into laughter. Looks like rumors are true. You really grow some backbone, Rio said while laughing, but he suddenly stopped laughing and said to Evan in a cold voice, although it's good to show courage you should K. Rio wasn't able to finish what he was saying when Evan grabbed him by the throat. After grabbing Rio's throat, Evan lifted him up from the ground and said, I don't care what you want to say, so spare me your bullshit and don't try to bother me anymore. Rio tried to free himself from Evan's clutch, yes, but found to his horror that no matter how much he tries he can't free himself from Evan's grasp. When Rio tried to free himself he felt like he is a kid who was trying to free himself from an adult. If you got any problem with me you can also challenge me on Friday with that trash, but if you try to bother me again I will make sure that you regret not listening to my advice. Evan clutch ed the throat of Rio with even more strength and his face turned purple because of the lack of oxygen. Tears started to come out from Rio's eyes and he tried to speak something, but because of how tightly Evan was holding his throat, he wasn't able to say anything. That's enough, you should let him go now. Valerie came near Evan and said to him after seeing Rio's condition. Evan also didn't want to waste his time anymore since he wanted to ask about the practical exam from Professor Elena, so he freed Rio. When Evan freed Rio, he fell to the floor of the academy while grasping for air, his face was full of horror and his whole body was shaking. After freeing Rio, Evan didn't even look at him and quickly left the classroom. Is he really that weakling, Evan? One of the students finally spoke when Evan left the classroom. How the hell he become this strong in just a single week? Was that guy hiding his strength all along? A student said while looking at Rio who was still gasping for air. Now I can't wait to see his fight against Mike on Friday. A student said and everyone looked at Mike who was sweating buckets while looking at the condition of Rio. I hope no one will bother me from now on after seeing this Evan thought while quickly moving towards the staff room to catch up with Professor Elena. Professor Elena. Since Evan didn't waste too much time with Rio he was quickly able to catch up with Professor Elena. Elena looked back after hearing Evan's voice and saw him coming towards her with hurried steps. Professor, I wanted to ask you something. Evan said after coming near Elena. You want to know about the practical exam, right? Elena said with a smile on her face. Evan was taken aback after hearing this and asked with a surprised expression, how do you know this? Just after seeing you in class, I understood that you somehow solved the problem of your physique and now that you can improve your power just like other hunters, I can guess that you will be taking practical exams with other students. Elena said after seeing the surprised face of Evan. Hearing Elena, Evan nodded and said, you are right, I also want to participate in the practical exam this time. Let's go to my office since it will take some time to explain everything to you. The practical exam this time is special. Elena said and once again started walking towards her office. Evan was not surprised that Elena know about his physique because most of the professors who taught Evan during his academy life know about his physique. In order to not participate in practical exam students have to give a proper reason and since Evan missed the practical exam each year he had to tell about his physique to the professor each year. Evan already prepared a good story about how he solved the problem of his physique so he was not afraid that someone else will find out about his shadow monarch physique. Take a sit. Elena said to Evan after they enter her office. Can you first tell me how you solved the problem of your physique? Elena asked Evan after he sat down. It happened last Sunday when I entered the Shadow Kingdom dungeon. Evan started to tell her a fake story that he created last night. Evan told her that he entered the Shadow Kingdom dungeon and used an invisibility potion to hunt some Deerank Shadow monsters. 
Everything went according to his plan and he successfully killed 10 D-rank monsters before the effect of the invisibility potion ended and got 3 cores from those 10 monsters. When I absorbed those 3 shadow cores, I advanced from F rank to F plus rank and I felt my physique changed somehow after I advanced to F plus rank. Evan continues to tell Elena his fake story. So after advancing F plus rank when you tried to absorb cores once again you found you can now absorb the cores just like everyone right? Elena asked after Evan told his fake story. Yes. Evan said while praying inwardly that Elena will believe in his fake story. Chapter 40 What the hell you were thinking when you enter a D-rank dungeon alone? Elena asked Evan while glaring at him. I was thinking about getting cores. Evan said while laughing nervously. You want me to beat you up? Elena said while smacking the head of Evan. It's been 10 minutes since Evan finished telling his fake story and Elena is lecturing him for entering a D-rank dungeon alone while he was just an F-rank hunter. I was just joking and I entered the dungeon because I had no other choice, I can't always be stuck at F-rank. Evan said while rubbing his head. I know what you are talking about, but still didn't I tell you before you can become a theory professor in the academy even if you are not a high-rank hunter, with your knowledge of beasts it would have been very easy for you to become a professor here. Elena said, I know but I did not want to become a professor that's why I entered the dungeon. Evan said while shaking his head because he never wanted to become a professor. Forget it I am glad you didn't die there and even solved the problem of your physique. Elena said after hearing Evan. Actually, I almost died there Evan said in his mind remembering how that bat almost killed him. The practical exam will be held next month, I can't tell you details about the exam because the staff is still discussing what kind of test we should give you guys. But one thing is for sure you will have to work in a team to clear this exam, since this is your last year and after graduation, you will become an official hunter. You will have to work with other hunters occasionally so you can think of it as a training for working in a team. Elena said and looked at Evan whose eyes were twitcha, ing, after hearing the word team. Elena ignored him and continued don't worry too much there will only be one person in your team and you don't have to find your teammate by yourself because the teams will be created randomly by the lucky draw. After saying this Elena looked at Evan and said I know it will be your first time working with someone but try your best to perform good because the All Hunter Academy tournament will be held in four months and the result of your exam will greatly affect who will represent the Estrate Academy in the tournament. I completely forget about the tournament. Evan said when he heard Elena. The All Hunter Academy tournament is the competition between the six major hunter academies. Six major hunter academies including a straight hunter academy will take part in this tournament. This tournament is held every year and the students of different academies will compete against each other. Only the students who are in their final year will take part in this competition and since this is Evan's last year he also has a chance to take part in this tournament. The winner of the tournament will receive excellent rewards and if Evan remembered correctly last year a straight academy came in third place in this tournament. Only five students from each academy can take part in this tournament and since you just recovered it will be hard for you to compete for a position but try your best. Elena said to Evan. Evan nodded and asked do you know why the sword class was cancelled today? While telling his fake story Evan received a message that there will be no sword classes for the time being, although he was planning to stop going to sword classes, he was still curious why the class was suddenly cancelled. There have been some dungeon outbreaks recently and Professor Robert is currently working with hunters to surpass these dungeon outbreaks so I don't think there will be sword classes for the time being. Also don't go into dungeons for some time because it's strange that many dungeon outbreaks happen at the same time. Elena said to Evan in a serious voice. All right, I will keep that in mind, Evan said, and stood up thanks for telling me about the exam and tournament. Don't worry about it, just do your best in the upcoming exam. I will. Evan said and left the office. Now that I don't have anything else to do, I should go and sell everything that I got from my last mission. Evan mumbled and left the academy. Evan took a taxi and went towards the city plaza where he can sell most of the things at a reasonable price. I will finally become rich after working like a fool for all those years Evan thought while dreaming about the money he will receive after selling everything. N O N N. I know about the price of most of the things but I don't know how much I will get for that barrier crystal and black device since those two are not new. 
Soon Evan reached at City Plaza, he paid the taxi bill and went inside the building of the City Plaza. Now where should I go? I have so many different kinds of things that I want to sell. Evan mumbled after coming inside the building. Evan wants to sell cores, a storage ring, a crystal barrier, a black device, and even the corpse of the black ogre that he stored inside his shadow using his skill. Evan was most surprised by the fact that time stopped for the things that he stored inside his shadow. This was great news for Evan since he can store the corpses of monsters for a long time after killing them. Suddenly Evan saw a guy in a staff dress coming towards him, but just by looking at the face of the man Evan was sure that this guy is a villain. Chapter 41 The man who was coming towards Evan had narrow eyes, his ears were folded a little, and he had a strange goat mustache, his beard was also trimmer in an irregular way, and just from his face, Evan was sure that this guy is up to no good. If Evan had to describe the man in a wuxia novel style, he would say from his folded ears it looks like this guy sold his master after poisoning him, narrow eyes that are eager to peep at his junior sister who is about to take bath, goat mustache that he is rubbing while watcha, ing his senior brother who is being eaten by some ants, strange beard trimmed in an irregular way by his junior brother when he was in his late years. How can I help you, sir? While Evan was evaluating the man in a strange way, the man came near him and asked politely, how can you do this to your own master? Evan asked absent-mindedly while still immense in his strange thoughts. Master? What master? The man asked in a baffled voice after hearing Evan. Huh. Evan came out from his thoughts after hearing the baffled voice of the man and saw he was looking at him strangely only now Evan realized he spoke out his mind loud cough asterisk Evan coughed to change the topic and said, Nothing I was just asking I want to sell different things so where should I go? Although the suspicious-looking innocent man thought Evan was looking at him strangely, he still nodded and said, Can you tell me what you want to sell? Hearing the man, Evan was hesitant a little because of the suspicious-looking face of the man, but since he can tell that man was just a normal human, he was sure that this man won't be able to do anything to him. Evan told everything that he wanted to sell after hearing what Evan wanted to sell, the man nodded and said, All right, please come with me. I don't know much about these items, so please wait in the waiting room for some time. I will quickly inform someone. Who will come to attend you? Evan nodded and followed the man. While following the man, Evan realized the man is quite polite and seems to care about the customers. It was just his face that make him suspicious. I shouldn't judge people by their appearance, Evan thought, when he remembered how he created a strange picture of the man just because his face is quite strange. If the face of this guy is not like this, I am sure with his manners and way he spoke with customers, he could have easily become a manager of this place, Evan thought, and looked at the man with eyes filled with pity. When the man saw how Evan was looking at him, he made a weird face and said, while coughing, sir, although you are quite handsome, I still prefer women. Evan, who was looking at the man with eyes filled with pity, almost fell to the ground. He looked at the man with his eyes wide open and asked, what the hell are you talking about? The way you are looking at me, with your eyes full of affection, I am too familiar with this look. Most of the customers that I handle here give me the same look filled with affection. What can I do? I know I was born with this face that attracts everyone who looks at me, but I can't let you have me since I prefer women. The man said with an apologetical smile like confronting Evan for being rejected by him. Is this guy gone senile? Evan was speechless after hearing what the man said. I am looking at him with pity-filled eyes and this crazy bastard saying don't look at him with affection-filled eyes. The more Evan looked at the apologetical smile of the man, the higher his blood pressure rose. Evan took out his nether steel sword and said, Crazy bastard, if you say anything else, I swear I will kill. When the man saw Evan taking out his sword, he was scared shitless. He quickly backed away and nodded while looking at Evan with wronged expression. When Evan saw the wronged expression on the strange face of the man, he tried his best not to behead him on the spot. Just lead the way to the waiting room and bring the person who will inspect the things I want to sell. Evan said while taking a deep breath to calm down. The man nodded his head obediently and started walking towards the waiting room. Did my rejection hit him too hard, the man thought, while leading the way. I should apologize to him properly later. I don't want him to commit suicide because I rejected him. Evan was regretting his decision for showing pity for this bastard, but how can he know this suspicious-looking innocent man will have a twisted mind? I swear I am not going to look at anyone with pity. Who knows when I will come across another lunatic, Evan swore and promised himself to never look at another human with pity. Please wait here for some time someone will come to assist you soon. The man said to Evan in an awkward tone after they reached the waiting room. 
Evan went inside the room and sat on the expensive-looking sofa. The man didn't enter the room and said, I will send someone quickly. After saying this, the man closed the door and left. Evan sighed in relief when the lunatic left him alone, but suddenly the door opened a little and he heard the voice of the man, I know it's hard to overcome a rejection, but I am sure with your handsome face you will be able to find someone better than me. Evan almost coughed out two liters of his blood when he heard what the man said, I swear if this guy appeared before me I will kill him. Chapter 42 Five minutes after the lunatic left the door of the waiting room opened once again and a man entered the room. The man was wearing a neat black suit and looked in his mid-thirties and Evan was glad his face doesn't look like someone who sold his sector. Hello, thanks for waiting I am Ron. The man introduced himself while extending his hand for a handshake. I am Evan. Evan shook his hand and nodded. Dylan told me you want to sell some equipments, cores, and the body of the black ogre. Ron said and sat down in front of Evan. Yes. Evan said and took out 13 earring cores, a storage ring that he got from David, Barrier Crystal, and the black device that bandits used along with these things. Evan also took out an earring sword and armor that he found in David's storage ring. You have some interesting things. Ron said when he saw the Barrier Crystal and the black device. Ron picked up the Barrier Crystal and inspected it closely. After checking it for one minute, he put down the Barrier Crystal and picked up the black device while saying, Seeing you have both barrier crystal and interference device, you must have gotten these things from bandits since they occasionally use these two things to attack people in wildernesses. Ron said while looking at the black device. Evan did not say anything after hearing Ron and just looked at him wondering how much he will offer him for these things. Although these things are in good condition, their model is quite old. There are better barrier crystals and interference devices available in the market. Ron said after checking the barrier crystal and black device. Don't beat around the bush and just tell me can I become a rich young master or not Evan shouted inside his mind after hearing Ron. I can offer you 200,000 credits for barrier crystal and 100,000 credits for interference device. Ron said calmly while looking at Evan. Evan's facial expression did not change after hearing Ron, but his heart was beating furiously just after hearing how much he will get. I can finally say goodbye to Cub Noodles now this young master will only eat expensive meat every day. Can you tell me how much the new barrier crystal and an interference device cost? Evan asked, not showing his happiness. The model of these devices is quite old, so these things don't cost much. A new barrier crystal cost around 300,000 credits and an interference device cost around 150,000 credits. Ron said honestly without hiding anything. Don't cost much the money sense of this guy is completely twisted Evan thought when he heard the price of new devices. After hearing Ron, Evan was satisfied with the price Ron was giving him so he nodded. When Evan accepted the price Ron looked at other things and said for these e rank cores I can give you 10,000 credits each, 40,000 for storage ring, 12,000 for this armor, and 8,000 for sword so that will be 190,000 credits. Evan gulped down audibly just after hearing how much money he was getting. Didn't you say you also have the body of a black ogre? Ron asked Evan since the body of a black ogre is quite rare. Evan nodded and tapped his foot on the ground. Suddenly Ron saw the body of a black ogre start to emerge from the ground. What a cool skill you can store monsters' bodies inside the ground. Ron said when he saw how a body suddenly emerged from the ground. Evan didn't say anything and just waited to hear how much he will get for this body. Ron inspected the body of the black ogre and was pleased to find out the body was in excellent condition because Evan killed it cleanly by destroying its brain using a shadow bullet. The condition of the body is excellent. I can offer you 30,000 credits for this body. Ron said after checking the body. Evan was more than happy to sell Black Ogre at 30,000 credits, so he nodded. All right, just wait a moment. Ron said and calculated the entire sum. After a minute, Evan left the waiting room while looking at his phone, which was showing the balance of his bank. Finally, I can say goodbye to being poor. Evan said, and instead of leaving the city plaza, he went to the sixth floor of the plaza. Professor Elena said not to enter the dungeon for some time, but I need cores to improve my power. I can't wait until the situation with dungeons is solved, Evan thought, and arrived at the sixth floor of the academy. 
Since Evan can't go to the dungeon to gather cores, he decided to hunt monsters in the wilderness, but he needs something to travel faster in the wilderness, which is why he came to the sixth floor of the plaza. Evan came to the reception on the sixth floor and said, I want a Syrian hoverboard. The receptionist nodded and tapped at the table in front of him and a holographic screen appeared before Evan showing him different kinds of hoverboards. These are the designs that are available in C-Rank hoverboards, please choose one. The receptionist said to Evan after showing him the holographic screen. Evan didn't care much about the design and chose a navy blue hoverboard. Soon a staff member brought the hoverboarder Evan selected. Evan checked the hoverboard and nodded in satisfaction. How much is this? It will be 180,000 credits. Although Evan's heart bleed when he heard the price, he still purchased the hoverboard because he will be using this thing for a long time. Now that I have a hoverboard, I can easily move faster in the wilderness and search for monsters. Evan mumbled to himself after leaving the city plaza. Chapter 43 Since tomorrow is Sunday and I don't have to attend any class, I should leave for the wilderness now so that I can hunt for today and tomorrow, Evan thought after coming out from the city plaza. Since Evan decided to hunt the monsters in the wilderness, he did not wait and took a taxi and went towards the city entrance. He already has everything that he needs in the wilderness since he recently finished his mission. Evan did not use his hoverboard in the city because he never used a hoverboard before and he was sure that if he used it in the city for the first time he will definitely crash against someone. I will practice with this hoverboard in the wilderness. After reaching the city gate Evan exit the taxi and paid the bill. Evan went towards the city gate where two C plus rank guards were stationed. When Evan reached near guards, he showed them his hunter card and easily left the city. Instead of going on the trade route from which merchants and other people travel in the wilderness, Evan was planning to go deeper into the wilderness so he can hunt more monsters. After coming out of the city, Evan took out his hoverboard and stood up on it. After standing up on the hoverboard, Evan channeled a little mana in it and the hoverboard started to lift upwards. When the hoverboard reached three meters high from the ground, Evan stopped channeling his mana in the hoverboard and it stopped going upwards. Evan willed the hoverboard to move forward and suddenly the hoverboard moved forward like a bullet. Holy mother stop. Evan shouted in a scared voice when the hoverboard moved forward at the speed of around 150 kilometers per hour. When Evan shouted the hoverboard suddenly stopped and Evan received a backslash because of how abruptly the hoverboard stopped, luckily because of the safety mechanisms of the hoverboard he didn't fall down from it. Puck. Unfortunately, he still spits out his breakfast because of the sudden backlash, and his head was spinning. Damn, it's harder than I thought. Evan muttered while massaging his head, he never thought that he won't be able to control the speed of the hoverboard. Evan had to spend two hours before he was finally able to ride his hoverboard properly. I heard kids use these hoverboards in this world instead of the bicycles, are those kids some kind of lunatics how can they ride something so dangerous? Evan muttered when he was finally able to control the hoverboard. His face was pale and his hairs were messy after he was done learning how to ride a hoverboard. Let's forget about them, now that I can ride this bad boy properly, I can finally move deeper into the wilderness. After confirming that he was going in the opposite direction of the trade route, Evan finally set off to kill some monsters and get cores. Since Evan is going deeper into the wilderness, there is a chance that he can encounter monsters who are above D rank because the association only cleans the area around the trade route. If Evan went too deep into the wilderness, there is no guarantee that he will be able to come out safely. That is why although Evan was going in the opposite direction of the trade route, he wasn't planning to go too deeper into the wilderness. Another reason Evan decided to go in the opposite direction of the trade route was that he will have an easier time finding monsters if he go in the opposite direction of the trade route. In, in. Evan traveled for two hours on his hoverboard and was now around 100 kilometers deeper into the wilderness. During these two hours, Evan saw some e rank monsters, but he ignored them because e rank cores can't help him much, so he didn't waste his time on them. Suddenly, Evan stopped his hoverboard when he saw two three meters tall bears in front of him. Both bears were covered in light brown fur and were releasing the aura of D-plus rank. Finally, some useful monsters. Evan said when he saw the bears, he put away his hoverboard in his storage ring and went towards the bears on his foot. Now that my prime core is E-plus rank and my monarch core is D rank, I should be able to easily kill any monster who is below C rank, Evan thought, and arrived near bears. Roerg. Roerg. 
Both bears roared when they saw Evan and like an enraged bull charged toward him. Evan also took out his nether steel sword and shot toward both bears without any fear. While charging towards bears, Evan used haste skill and appeared before one of the charging bears like a ghost. The bear who was charging towards Evan was startled when Evan suddenly appeared before it, but even before it can do anything Evan closed his fist and with a war cry threw a punch at the face of the bear. Evan wanted to test his physical strength after his prime core advanced to E plus rank. He knew that a normal E plus rank hunter will never be able to harm this bear with only his physical strength. Evan knew that his body is far stronger than any D plus rank hunter because of his monarch core, but he wanted to know can he fight against this D plus rank bear with just his physical strength who is famous for its physical strength. Evan used mana to enhance the strength of his punch and like a rocket, his punch landed in the face of the bear. Boom. Roerg. A small explosion happened when Evan's punch landed in the face of the bear. The bear roared in pain when Evan's punch landed on its face. The momentum that the bear created while running towards Evan completely disappeared and it took three steps back while roaring in pain. The nose of the bear was broken and its face was dyed red because of the blood that was coming out from its nose. Ha ha ha. Evan burst into laughter when he saw the result of his punch because he was sure that even a C-rank hunter can't stop this bear with just a single punch. The second bear also stopped running and was looking at Evan with its eyes wide open like it was looking at a monster. Now, don't look at me like this because I am only getting started. Evan said to the bear with a white smile when he saw the shocked face of the bear. When the bear saw the smile of Evan a chill run down its spine and it finally realizes the human in front of it is not someone it can mess with. Chapter 44 Thud With a loud sound a three meters tall brown bear fell to the ground motionless there were many wounds on the body of the bear but the most noticeable was the wound on its head. There was a hole at the head of the bear like a bullet pierced through all way to its brain and even before it can do anything it was already dead. I thought I would be able to kill this bear with just my physical strength. Evan said while looking at the body of the dead bear. Evan turned around and saw another bear who was also lying motionless on the ground, but unlike the previous bear, there were many sword wounds on the body of this bear. At first, Evan tried to kill both bears just by using his physical strength and he fought with them like a barbarian, but because there were two bears he wasn't able to fight properly with them. At last, Evan decided to kill one bear with his sword and fight against the second bear with just physical strength. After killing one bear with sword, Evan once again fought with his bare fist and surprisingly he was able to fight against the bear on even ground, although it was a D plus rank bear who was even stronger than some C rank hunters when it come to physical strength. Evan was also surprised when he find out how much his physical strength increased because of his monarch core, but even though he was able to fight against the bear with his physical strength and was able to evade its attack because of his high agility, he still wasn't able to fatally wound the bear with just his physical strength. The vitality of the bear was quite high so even though it was taking damage while fighting against Evan it was not enough to kill it. In the end, Evan used a shadow bullet and killed the bear with it. Because his prime core advanced to E plus rank the power of his shadow bullet also increased quite a lot and he even used quite a lot of mana to create that bullet so he was able to one shot the bear. Maybe after my monarch core will advance to C rank I will be able to blow up the head of this kind of monsters with just a single punch. Evan said out loud when he remembered how in some novels that he read in past life, some people can blow up the entire body of monsters with just single punch. Damn. I really want to turn the bodies of the monsters in meat paste with just a single punch. Evan shouted and started to look for cores. Lucky for Evan he found one D plus rank core from the bear he killed using the shadow bullet. After taking the cores, Evan didn't leave to look for monsters, instead he used the body of the bear as bait and spilled its blood all around the area. After spilling the blood of the bears, Evan climbed up a tree and waited for monsters to come here after smelling the blood. Soon the smell of the blood spread all around the area and Evan waited for monsters to come near his location after smelling the blood. Asterisk asterisk. Swish. Evan swung his sword and the head of a horse-like monster dropped to the ground. After killing the monster, Evan quickly looked for the core. TCH. Evan clicked his tongue in irritation when he didn't find any core from the horse-type monster. After seeing there was no core, Evan once again walked towards the tree and climbed up on it. 
Evan looked around him, and now along with the bodies of two bears, there were around 15 more bodies of the D and D plus rank monsters. It has been three hours since Evan killed the bears, and in these three hours around 15 monsters came near the location where he was waiting for them. After killing those 15 monsters, Evan received three D rank cores and two D plus rank cores. How? Suddenly, Evan heard the howl of a wolf, and a predatory smile appeared on his face. Another one is coming, Evan said while waiting above the tree. Soon Evan saw a wolf coming towards the many corpses while drooling like a hungry beast. Soon the wolf came near the body of an ape-like monster and started munching it. The wolf was two meters tall and was covered in dark black fur, and when Evan saw the wolf he instinctively felt shadow power near it, which means the wolf was a shadow-type monster. Good my prime core will advance even faster if I absorb the power of a shadow core. Evan said and was about to come down from the tree to kill the wolf when he saw two more wolves come out from the bushes and went towards the bodies of monsters to eat them. Evan was more than happy when he saw two more shadow wolves, but before he can think anything else Evan felt another presence approaching his location. Suddenly another wolf who looked similar to the previous three wolves came from the bushes, the only difference was that this wolf was three meters tall and its aura was stronger than the previous three wolves. When Evan saw this wolf, he stopped climbing down from the tree and his eyes opened wide. See, rank monster. Evan muttered in low voice and gulped down his saliva. How the hell it came here, I am still in the outer zone of the wilderness where you don't find sea rank monster. Evan cursed his luck when he saw the sea rank monster. Evan was not sure about killing a sea rank monster because just like how humans get a class after reaching its sea rank, monsters' abilities also increased when they reach its sea rank. Evan was sure that he is physically stronger than this C-Rank wolf, but he was still not sure in defeating this wolf because C-Rank is completely different from all previous ranks. I shouldn't take the risk and just leave from here, Evan thought when he saw the wolf because there was no reason in risking his life. Evan just has to wait for some time and he will easily be able to kill these kinds of monsters. Just as Evan thought about retreating the C-Rank wolf who just came looked at the tree he was hiding and slowly started to move towards him. Well, FCK. Evan cursed when he saw the wolf was coming towards him. Chapter 45 Don't tell me this guy noticed me, Evan thought, while looking at the three meters tall sea rank wolf who was coming towards him. But the wolf stopped when it was 20 meters away from the tree on which Evan was hiding, but even before Evan can sigh in relief he saw the wolf open its mouth wide and shot a dark energy ball toward the tree he was hiding. Damn. My shitty luck Evan cursed his luck that already reached sea rank and jumped down from the tree. Boom! The energy ball exploded after hitting the tree, and with a loud explosion, the high tree fell down to the ground. Thump! A loud sound was heard in the surrounding area when the tree fell down to the ground, but the sea rank wolf ignored everything and looked at Evan who just jumped down from the tree. Howl! The sea rank wolf howled and like it was some kind of order, the three shadow wolves who came earlier stopped munching the corpses of monsters and started to walk towards Evan. Evan narrowed his eyes when he saw the C-rank wolf didn't attack at him immediately, instead ordered other D-plus rank wolves to attack him. Evan's face turned ugly when he saw the wolf didn't attack him immediately because it means this wolf was quite intelligent. This fuck asterisker is testing my strength by sending his minions first, Evan thought, when he saw the three shadow wolves who surrounded him. Evan became more serious when he realized what the wolf was doing and his alertness increased to the next level. Evan was not concerned about the D-plus rank wolves because he can kill them easily without any problem, but for some reason, this C-rank wolf was giving Evan a very dangerous feeling. Let's take care of these small fries first. Evan took a deep breath and took out his nether steel sword. How? The C-rank wolf howled when he saw Evan taking out his sword and all three D-plus rank wolves rushed towards Evan at the same time. Haste Evan said and like a ghost appeared before the wolf who was coming from his right side. Swish. Since Evan's agility was just too fast for a D-plus rank wolf, it wasn't able to react, and with a horizontal slash, Evan cut the body of the wolf in half. After killing the wolf, Evan did not even wait for a second and charged toward another D-plus rank wolf. Evan knew that he had to take advantage of his surprise attack since even the C-rank wolf was shocked when it saw the agility of Evan. But it was not C-rank monster for nothing, just as Evan came before another D-plus rank wolf, the eyes of the C-rank wolf turned pitch, black. 
The hair on Evan's body stood up and without hesitation, he stopped his attack on the wolf and jumped sideways. Just as Evan jumped sideways, the shadow of the D-plus rank wolf trembled a little and tens of five centimeters long needles came flying at the location where Evan was standing just a moment ago. Even before Evan can regain his balance after jumping sideways, the third D-plus rank wolf opened its mouth and shot a dark energy ball toward him that landed just one meter away from him. Boom! SH asterisk T Evan cursed when the energy ball exploded near him and his body was blasted away because of the explosion. Evan's body landed four meters away and his body rolled to the ground before coming to stop. Even before Evan can stand up the sea, Rank Wolf shot another energy ball toward him and it landed just before his face. Boom! A dust cloud rose and the sea rank monster looked at the location where Evan was with a proud face. But suddenly the sea rank wolf felt something and looked at the D-plus rank wolf who shot the energy ball earlier and saw a dark shadow materialize behind him and turned into Evan. Swish! Evan slashed his sword and the body of the D-plus rank wolf was cut in half just like the first one. After killing the wolf Evan looked at sea rank wolf, most of Evan's clothes were torn and there were many wounds on his body that were bleeding. That was dangerous, if I hadn't used shadow walk skill on time I might have died there a chill ran down Evan's spine just thinking about the earlier attack that he faced. The C rank wolf was also looking at Evan with a shocked face because it didn't understand just what kind of trick Evan used to survive from its earlier attack. Evan pointed his finger at the last D plus rank wolf and shot a shadow bullet toward the wolf like a rocket, even before the D plus rank wolf can react the bullet pierced through the head of the wolf and destroyed its brain. Now there will be no one who will disturb us. Evan said to see Rank Wolf after he killed the last D plus Rank Wolf. After seeing how Evan killed its three minions without much trouble, the C Rank Wolf knew that Evan is not going to be an easy opponent. But the C Rank Wolf was still confident that it will be able to take care of Evan because it can see although Evan evaded the earlier attack, he was still injured seriously and will not be able to fight against it with his full capability. From the beginning, since the wolf came here and saw so many corpses of monsters it knew that the person who killed them is strong. That is why after finding Evan instead of attacking him directly the wolf first sent its three minions to test the strength of Evan and exhaust him as much as possible before it can take care of him easily. And now although its three minions were dead it still achieved what it wanted. Evan was looking at the wolf with a serious face because he knew this wolf is a cunning bastard and if he let down his guard there is a high chance he will die here. Chapter 46 Haste Evan once again used his haste skill and shot towards the sea rank wolf who was standing just 30 meters away in front of him. Swish! With the boost of haste skill and his already high agility, he arrived before the wolf in a blink of an eye and slashed at the neck of the wolf with his nether steel sword that was covered in light blue mana. Although the wolf already saw Evan was fast, it was still surprised when Evan suddenly appeared before it. But since it already knew Evan's agility is very fast, it was prepared for Evan's attack. Just as Evan's sword was about to come into the contact with its neck, a thin but completely black mirror-like sheet materialized before the neck of the wolf. When Evan's nether steel sword clashed against the thin sheet, his eyes opened wide because even with his abnormal strength and nether steel sword, he wasn't able to cut through that black sheet. Howl. When Evan's attack failed, the wolf howled and the sheet that was formed in front of the wolf trembled a bit. When Evan saw the sheet trembling, all hairs on his body stood up and he remembered what happened when he attacked the D-plus rank wolf earlier. Evan quickly pulled back his sword and jumped back from the C rank wolf. Just as Evan jumped back, tens of small black needless shot towards him from the sheet that materialized in front of C rank wolf. Shadow Walk without wasting any time after jumping back Evan used Shadow Walk and turned into a shadow and disappeared from the place. Evan traveled in shadow form and appeared behind the sea rank wolf while pointing one of his fingers at him. Since Evan was behind the wolf he obviously targeted a certain place firing his shadow bullet. The sea rank wolf felt a chill run down its spine and without hesitation it shifted its position without even looking back from where Evan was attacking. Because of its quick reaction, the wolf was successfully able to evade the bullet that Evan shot at it from behind. Tisk. Evan clicked his tongue when he saw the wolf dodge his bullet. Howl. After dodging the bullet, the wolf howled out loud and Evan noticed a slight trembling in its howl like it was shaken by the earlier attack of Evan. 
But Evan didn't get time to think about it because just as the wolf howled, the black aura appeared around it and Evan felt the wolf become more powerful after the black aura appeared around it. Swish! Suddenly, Evan's eyes opened wide when the wolf suddenly disappeared from its place. Evan quickly turned around and brought his sword before his face. Clang! Just as Evan brought the sword before his face, a black claw appeared and clashed against his sword. Aorg! A painful voice came out from Evan's mouth when he blocked the wolf's claw with his sword. Evan's arms trembled and he took five steps back because of the impact. Evan felt his arms turning numb, but even before he can do anything the wolf once again appeared before him and once again slashed at his neck. Damn it, Evan can't help but curse because he wasn't able to keep up with the agility of the wolf after the black aura appeared around it. Although Evan was using haste skill, he was still having a hard time fighting against the wolf. Evan once again used his sword to block the attack of the wolf. Clang! Evan's whole body once again trembled, but he gritted his teeth, and before the wolf can regain its balance, he shot a shadow bullet at the wolf. The wolf was caught off guard, but it still reacted quickly and tried to move its body to the side. The wolf was successfully able to move its face to the side, but since it was so close to Evan, the bullet still hit the right shoulder of the wolf. Slash! Aye! The bullet pierced through the black aura of the wolf and dug deeper into its fur. It was the first time the blood of the wolf was spilled, but instead of feeling delightful Evan's face turned ugly because he can see the wolf completely ignored the injury it received and was looking at him with menacing eyes that suddenly turned pitch black. When Evan saw this he clenched his fist and threw a punch at the face of the wolf. Surprisingly the wolf didn't do anything and let the punch hit it. Boom! Because Evan used mana to increase the strength of his punch, the wolf was blasted 10 meters away from him. But even before Evan can celebrate that he somehow avoided the attack of the wolf, his body froze at the same place, and no matter how much he tried, his body refused to move. What the hell is happening? Evan screamed in his mind when his body suddenly froze. He wasn't even able to open his mouth to say something like he became a statue. Although Evan can't see since he can't move his body, there were many black chains all around the body of Evan that bounded him in the same place. Evan didn't even know when these chains bound his body and why he can't even open his mouth. The wolf who was blasted backward because of Evan's earlier punch stood up and looked at Evan with its menacing eyes that were still pitch, black instead of yellow. The nose of the wolf was broken because of Evan's earlier punch and black blood was coming out from it but just from the wolf's expression, Evan can see that it wasn't bothered by its broken nose and was looking at him with a sneer on its face. After standing up, the wolf slowly started to walk toward Evan, who was still trying to move his body, but failed miserably. Move damn it, Evan shouted in his mind and tried to use Shadow Walk, but was shocked when even Shadow Walk skill didn't work. The wolf slowly closed the distance between itself and Evan and didn't look concerned at all. Evan just helplessly watch a Ed the wolf closed the distance between them and no matter what he do he wasn't able to free himself. Will I die here? Evan thought while still trying to free himself. The wolf reached before Evan and lifted its claw to slash at the neck of Evan. When Evan saw the wolf lifting its claw to kill him his heart started to beat faster no way I am going to die here just as Evan's heart started to beat faster his monarch core also started to rotate faster and faster. My life just changed recently, there is no way I am going to die here, there are many things I wanted to do. Suddenly his monarch core released a very tiny amount of black energy. Just as his monarch core released a small amount of black energy, the wolf slashed its claw at the neck of Evan. Swish! Thud! The wolf's claw came down and with a thud sound a body without a head dropped to the ground lifelessly. Chapter 47 just as the wolf slashed its claw at Evan who was frozen in his place, his monarch core released a very small amount of black energy which was very similar to the energy that is mixed in his mana. Just as his monarch core released that dark energy, Evan's entire body trembled and the mana in his body became chaotic. Evan's eyes shined an ominous black color and he felt time slow down around him. He saw as the claw of the wolf coming towards his neck in slow motion. While the claw of the wolf was coming towards him in slow motion, Evan tried to move his body and was able to move without any problem. Evan came to the side of the wolf who was still slashing its claw where Evan was frozen. It was like the wolf didn't realize Evan moved away from his location. In reality, it was not that the time slowed down or the wolf didn't realize Evan moved away from his location.
It was just that because of the black energy that his monarch core released his body and mind became so fast that he was seeing everything in slow motion. Not even one second passed since the moment his monarch core released that dark energy. While the wolf was still moving its claw toward Evan's previous location, Evan slashed his nether steel sword at the neck of the wolf. When Evan slashed his sword, a completely dark layer covered his sword. Swish! In slow motion, Evan watched Ed when he slashed his sword even the space was cut apart. It was just for a brief period the space was cut apart and returned to normal, but Evan who was in that special state clearly saw the broken space barrier. The sword came into the contact with the neck of the sea rank wolf, and like like a hot knife passing through the butter his sword severed the head of the wolf. Thud. Just as Evan severed the head of the wolf, he returned to his normal state as he watched uh, Ed the body of the wolf falls down to the ground motionless. The wolf's severed head still had the same expression on its face that it was showing while slashing at Evan till the last moment the wolf didn't realize that it is already dead. Only one second passed since the moment Ethan's monarch core released that black energy and the wolf died. Arg. Suddenly Evan fall to the ground and screamed in pain, blood started to come out from his eyes, nose, and ear. What the hell is happening? Evan shouted in a pain-filled voice because he never experienced pain like this before. Cough. Evan started to cough out blood and he felt his inner organs were being destroyed by something. The mana in his body was very chaotic and was causing internal damage to his body. I have to control mana in my body or I will die. Evan gritted his teeth and tried to control the mana in his body. Crack. Arg. Suddenly, Evan's bones started to crack and the pain was so great that he almost passed out. Damn calm down already. Evan shouted when he wasn't able to control his chaotic mana. But just when Evan felt he will not be able to control his mana, his monarch core, which was still rotating at crazy speed, started to slow down and the mana in his body also started to calm down. In 10 minutes his monarch core returned to normal and Evan's chaotic mana also calmed down. Evan was laying on the ground while breathing heavily his entire face was covered in blood that came out from his eyes, nose, and mouth. His entire body was aching and he was on the verge of passing out. I can't stay here any longer more monsters will soon come here after smelling the blood. Evan thought while trying to get up. Arg when he tried to get up he felt like his entire body was breaking apart just what the hell happened when that wolf attacked me. Evan sat up while still trying to understand what happened when the wolf was about to kill him. I have to check for the cores quickly. Although it was dangerous Evan still can't leave without checking for the cores after all he killed 3D plus rank and 1C rank shadow monster. If Evan got a C rank shadow core he was confident that he will be advanced to D rank with his prime core. Evan took out some healing potions and drank them, he felt a refreshing feeling spreading into his entire body and his pain eased a little. It still hurt like hell. Evan complained while standing up with difficulty. Evan first checked the body of C-Rank Wolf since its body was laying right next to him. At least give me your core for almost killing me you bastard. Evan said while looking near the heart of the wolf. Suddenly, Evan felt his hand touch something solid, he quickly grabbed the object and pulled out his hand. When Evan pulled out his hand, he was holding a black core that was at least two times bigger than AD plus rank core. At least I didn't suffer for nothing. Evan said when he saw the core. Evan put away the C rank core and searched the body of 3D plus rank wolves. Luckily, Evan got 1D plus rank core from those three wolves. With all the cores that I collected, I should be able to push my prime core to D rank. Evan muttered to himself after putting away the core in his storage ring. Evan used his shadow storage skill and put away the body of C rank wolf in it. Now I should leave from here before any new monster shows up. Evan said and took out his hoverboard. He stood up on his hoverboard and went towards the city entrance of the Estrate City. Just what happened when that wolf attacked me? Now that Evan left the dangerous area, he finally got time to think about the things that happened to him. Evan opened his status window to see if there was something and he saw two new notifications before him. You have got one unit of shadow energy. You have acquired a new title, The Rule Breaker. Chapter 48 Evan opened his status window to see if there was something and he saw two new notifications before him. You have got one unit of shadow energy. You have acquired a new title, The Rule Breaker. Shadow Energy. 
Rule breaker, you are the first person who has acquired a higher level energy without reaching out this is why you are given the title rule breaker. The title has the following effects. You can enter the Tower of Ascension after reaching a rank. Evan just looked at his status window with his eyes wide open and can't help but say just what the hell is this? After seeing his status window Evan didn't understand anything. Evan took a deep breath to calm down his beating heart and once again looked at his status window. Shadow Energy Why there are these strange symbols instead of information? Evan muttered when he saw the strange symbols instead of information. A higher level energy. Evan looked at the details of his title where it was showing he got this title because he acquired a higher level energy without reaching a certain level of power. Evan was sure that he wasn't able to see the details of the shadow energy because he is currently too weak. I must have gotten this title because of shadow energy. Evan said and looked at the effects of the title, which was showing just one effect currently and there was a question mark there which means more effects of the title will unlock in the future when he will become more powerful. Tower of Ascension This was the only thing Evan have information and he was truly happy about the fact that he can enter the Tower of Ascension after reaching a rank. According to the records that Evan read in the Academy's library, the Tower of Ascension is a different type of dungeon where people can enter only after reaching S rank. The highest level a person can achieve in Aurora World is S rank and in order to break past the limit of S rank you have to enter the Tower of Ascension. If you successfully cleared the Tower of Ascension you will be able to surpass S rank and will reach a higher world than Aurora World. According to the records, your core will also evolve when you break past the limit of S rank and there is a very low chance even your race will change after you break past the limit of S rank. Evan was excited about this title because he can enter the Tower of Ascension even without reaching S rank. Evan is sure that he has the potential of reaching S rank with the help of his Monarch core, but the problem is that he will have to get many S rank cores to advance his Monarch core and his Prime core to S rank. But there are very few S rank dungeons in Aurora World and most of these dungeons are controlled by Hunter Association or large guilds. If in the future Evan wants to enter the S rank dungeon he will have to work for association or join a guild that has control over an S rank dungeon. Honestly, Evan does not want to work for the association or join a guild because there are many restrictions you have to follow if you join any of them. Evan likes to act alone and if he works with someone there is a high chance they will find out about his monarch core. But now with the help of his title, Evan doesn't have to join the association or any guild because he can enter the Tower of Ascension without reaching S rank. Reaching a rank is also quite difficult because these are rank dungeons are also controlled by hunter association and guilds but unlike S rank dungeons you can enter an A rank dungeon even without joining them. But if you enter a dungeon that is controlled by association or guild without joining them, you will have to give 50% of everything that you got inside the dungeon to them. But what will happen if I enter the tower without reaching S rank, after clearing the tower will I become S rank or I will skip the S rank and directly break past it? Evan muttered in confusion. More importantly can I even clear the tower of ascension with the power of a rank? Evan had lots of questions but there was no one who can answer his question but Evan had a feeling that he can clear the tower even without reaching S rank because along with his prime core, he also has his monarch core. I think I will be able to clear the tower if I get a good class after reaching C rank. Name, Evan. Rank, E+. Plus. Monarch Core Rank, D. Strength, E+. Plus. Agility, E+. Plus. Mana, E+. Plus. Stamina, E+. Plus. Intelligence, E+. Plus. Luck, C. Charm, C+. Plus. Shadow Energy, 1 unit. Skill, Shadow Walk, Haste, Shadow Bullet. Physique, Shadow Monarch Physique. Title, Rule Breaker. Job, None. There were two changes in Evan's status window now it was showing he have one unit of Shadow Energy and his title section was also showing Rule Breaker. Evan still doesn't know why there are still question marks in his title section but he knew when he will become stronger he will know eventually. Seriously there are so many things I don't know and I am sure it will take a lot of time for me to find out about everything. Evan said in a tired voice and closed his status window. I should just focus on improving my strength. With the cores I got from this hunting session I should be able to reach D rank with my prime core. After reaching D rank with my prime core I can once again focus on improving the rank of my monarch core. 
Evans said, and a small smile appeared on his face, just thinking about the possibility of what will when his monarch corps will reach C rank made him excited. Chapter 49 Evans soon came back to the entrance of the Estrate City and quickly went back to the city. At first, Evan was planning to hunt for two days, but because of his earlier fight against the C-rank wolf, he can't hunt anymore in the wilderness. Because of using shadow energy, Evan's entire body was aching, and he was even having difficulty staying conscious. Evan knew that if he stay in the wilderness in this condition, there is a high chance of him dying when he came across a monster, so he returned to the city without any hesitation. And although he came back early, he was fine with it because with the chorus he got after hunting today, he can easily push his prime core to D rank. After entering the city, Evan quickly found a hotel that was closest to the city entrance and quickly went there. After arriving at the hotel, Evan booked a room and didn't even care about its price. Just as Evan entered his booked room and saw the bed, he fall on it like a dead man. Evan was barely holding his conscience after using the shadow energy. His mind was too tired and his whole body was screaming in pain, so just as he lay down on the soft bed, all of his strength disappeared and he fall asleep. Because of how exhausted Evan's body was after using shadow energy, he slept for more than 12 hours and woke up the next day. It's still hurting. When the next day Evan tried to stand up, he found his body was still not recovered and he was still feeling pain even while moving his body. Damn it, I just used that energy for one second and almost died there. Evan muttered while going toward the bathroom. Evan first took a long bath because he was still covered in blood after fighting against those monsters. After taking bath, when Evan came out of the bathroom and analyzed his body, he found, although his body was aching all over, he can feel his physical strength increase a little bit after using shadow energy. On the status window, there is no change in my strength and other states, but I can clearly feel my body is more powerful than before. Evan said while rubbing his chin. Looks like my body became more strong after using shadow energy. After analyzing his body, Evan wore some casual clothes and sat down on the bed. Let's push my prime core to D rank so I can once again focus on my monarch core. Evan took out all the cores that he got from his hunt yesterday and put them in front of him. Three D rank cores, four D plus rank, and one C rank core, these should be enough. Evan said while picking up one D rank core. Evan started to refine D rank cores and in just five minutes refined all three D rank cores. After refining D rank cores, Evan started to refine D plus rank cores. It was the first time Evan was refining a D plus rank and when he started to refine the D plus rank core, he was surprised that the energy inside the D plus rank core was more than two times that of the D rank core. Evan continued to refine the D plus rank cores and his prime core slowly but steadily started to approach the limit of the E plus rank. It took Evan more than 20 minutes to refine all the D-plus rank cores, and he can feel he just needs a little more energy to reach D rank with his prime core. Evan picked up the C rank core and started to refine it. There is too much energy inside it. Evan muttered while refining the C rank core, he can feel there was at least four times more energy than a D-plus rank inside this C rank core. After 15 minutes, when Evan refined around one-fourth of the C rank core, his prime core suddenly stopped absorbing more energy and the surrounding mana started to rush toward him. Evan dropped the C rank core and focused on his prime core, which was advancing to the D rank. Everything was going smoothly and his core was absorbing surrounding mana to complete its evolution. But suddenly a black water drop that was hovering around his heart where his monarch core was located moved towards his prime core. Evan who was focusing on his prime core didn't feel anything at first, but when the black water drop came near his prime core his heart skipped a beat and he tried to control that black water drop. When Evan tried to control the black water drop which was actually one unit of shadow energy it stopped near his prime core. Swish! But suddenly a strong suction force came out from the prime core and absorbed the one unit of shadow energy. FCK Evan cursed when his prime core absorbed the shadow energy and even before he can think anything else, the mana from the surrounding rushed towards him with even more force. A small mana whirlpool formed above Evan's head and his prime core started to absorb a large amount of mana. Although the size of the whirlpool was much smaller than the whirlpool which was formed when his monarch core advanced to D rank, it was still larger than before. I am not feeling any pain, surprisingly Evan didn't feel any pain, when his prime core absorbed shadow energy he thought it will break apart because it is a higher level of energy. 
After one minute, the whirlpool above his head disappeared and his prime core successfully advanced to D rank. Even before he can assess the change in his prime core, some notifications started to appear before him. You successfully refined one unit of shadow energy with your prime core. Your prime core mutated because of the shadow energy. Chapter 50 Your prime core mutated because of the shadow energy. Because of the mutation, when you absorb a shadow core using your prime core, there is a 2% chance you will receive one of the skills of the monster from whom the core was extracted. Boom! Suddenly, a large amount of energy came out from Evan's prime core and started to refine his body. Evan felt his mana reserve double, and his physical strength increased to a completely different level. The pain that Evan was feeling after using the shadow energy started to lessen, and in just one minute the pain completely disappeared. Soon his prime core also stopped releasing energy that was refining his body and successfully stabilized at D rank. Evan stood up after his core stabilized and checked his body. I am not sure, but I think my physical strength is increased by at least two times. Evan muttered in a shocked voice because he never expected that his prime core will mutate and his physical strength will increase by two times. Evan's physical strength was already compared to a C-rank monster, but now he himself doesn't know just how powerful his physical strength is. Looks like I will not have to wait for a long time before I will be able to kill monsters with just a single punch. Evan muttered while punching the air in front of him. When Evan punched in front of him, a small gust of wind was created. After checking his physical condition, Evan once again looked at the notification that he got earlier, and a big smile appeared on his face. I never expected that my prime core will get a mutation because of shadow energy. When Evan absorbs cores using his monarch core, there is a 3% chance he will receive a random skill of the monster from whom the core was extracted. There is no restriction on which type of core he absorbs using his monarch core, there is a 3% chance he can get a skill. But although his prime core mutated, he can just get the skill if he absorbs a shadow type core and the chances of getting the skill are also lower than his monarch core. Even if there is only a 2% chance of getting a skill, it is already more than enough and I can clearly feel my prime core became more powerful than before. Evan said in a satisfied voice while checking his body. Roerg. In a dark world, far away from Aurora World, a completely black 50 meters tall monster roared in pain and fell to the ground motionless. There was a large hole in the stomach of the monster and black blood was flowing out like a river from the wound. The surprising thing was that even though the monster was dead, its aura was so strong that even an S-rank hunter will not be able to stand before it. Suddenly, another monster who was 20 meters tall and looked like a T-Rex approached the body of the monster and started to eat it. The aura that the monster was releasing was even more terrifying than the dead monster. Suddenly, the T-Rex-type monster who was eating the corpse of the monster stopped eating and looked behind it with a face full of fear and placed its head on the ground like a loyal servant. Some distance away from the T-Rex type monster there was a large castle which was made from black stones. Even though there was no sun in this world and the area was completely dark for some reason the black castle was still visible. In the castle, a figure of beautiful female was sitting on a black throne with her eyes closed. Suddenly the female opened her eyes and her deep black eyeballs that were as deep as an abyss shined in black color. Strange did I sense it wrong? After a moment, a confused look appeared on the beautiful face of the female, and she stood up from her throne. When the female stood up, her figure was revealed in full glory. She was 190 centimeters tall and had long raven hair which matcha, es the long black dress that she was wearing. She had thin eyebrows, a small nose, and black lips which made her look like an alluring demoness. After standing up, the eyes of the female once again started to shine in deep black color, and she stood in the same place without moving. Time continued to pass and the female stood in the same place while her eyes shone in black color like searching for something. After more than 15 hours the eyes of the female returned to normal and she said while massaging her eyes I must have sensed it wrong I searched the entire world but didn't find any traces of shadow energy. Just as the female said this her face changed because she once again felt someone using shadow energy but when she tried to find who was using it she wasn't able to find anything. I am sure it was shadow energy then why I can't locate who is using it. The female said and a deep frown appeared on her face. But suddenly a shocked look appeared on her face and she muttered, there can only be one reason I wasn't able to find the person who used the shadow energy but that is impossible. 
The female shook her head and said, There is no way someone awakens shadow energy in a lower world where I can't see because of world restrictions. But her face changed once again and she looked at a high-level platform behind her throne where she was sitting earlier. On the high platform, there was another black throne, but this throne was at least two times bigger than the throne of the female. Even though there was no one sitting on that throne, it was releasing a pressure that made everyone kneel just by looking at it. When the female looked at the throne, her eyes started to turn watery, and she muttered, Could it be that Master is finally about to come back? Thank you guys for listening to Necromancer of the Shadows. Hope you enjoyed. Have a wonderful day and come again.